I stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars. Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. Thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. This one could twist a marauder's head off. Blood Force Trauma Specialist. I might have a job for you. If we're ever captured, I'll let you do the talking. A crack shot, capital. Good. I might require you to push a few buttons. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Please power down your engines. Have to be Not likely, bootlickers. <laughs> Initiate skip jump. Power levels down. 
Shit. Ah, there you are. Wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on the Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! this thing working ah there you are now uh, where were we oh yes the smuggler his name is hawthorne and he should be waiting for you at the landing site he's to be your uh, chauffeur so to speak and not to worry i'm told he's a specialist dashing gunslinger one of a kind ship that sort of thing you'll like him i'm sure i've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor so i can track your progress i'll check in with you as soon as you land Good luck. I'm... All the colonists are counting on you. you taking his ship. Better you than the board, huh? Not sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go.
been frozen for a while. There's bound to be unforeseen side effects. You've tried the best now. <laughs> now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. <sighs> Looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired. Right through my side. I mean... What are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics. With guns. Some hull had grounded their spacecraft out in the open. That's a real good way to attract marauders. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Yeah, okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo. Not counting the bullet in my side. Here, you can have my saber too, for patching me up and all. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. Yes, nailed it that time. You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. We're a Spacer's Choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Uh, be sure to stop by our provisioners for a can of our famous salt tuna. The Hope? Is that some sort of fancy new drug? Are you with Auntie Cleo or something? Don't take this the wrong way or nothing, but I'm not allowed to fraternize with Cleo workers. Company policy.
in the blazes? Where'd you come from? Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Call on that rung leech. Landing in the veil without using an official spacer's choice landing pad. I'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. You out of your mind? No way. Once we've dealt with these marauders, I'm hunting that sick freak down. I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Stretch my legs some. Well, sometimes. Management's real good at cost-benefit analysis. But, seeing as I'm the acting manager in this situation, you know what? You're right. It's time we cross those marauders off, find whoever owns that ship, and file a full report. Then it's gonna be fucking laminated. Here we go. This is going to take a lot of paperwork. Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable plunder. Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. Jettison procedures initiated. Disengaging airlocks. Preparing to eject all boarding parties in five, four, three, Two. One. You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express... disappointment. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Well done, Captain Hawthorne. I see your powers of deductive reasoning remain intact. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, 
and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Astutely observed, however, the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the Unreliable. Do you understand? Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. is in need of rep I suppose everything on the unreliable belongs to you now, Captain. Help yourself. No, really. The ship's engines cannot be powered until a replacement regulator has been properly installed. Want to be a brand new you? Try out our respecification machine. Alex installed it himself, right before he died. These surveillance devices allow me to monitor you constantly. Please ignore them. These are the crew's quarters. Alex preferred to travel alone, but he always had me. Due to catastrophic power failure, all doors will remain on security lockdown. Say, this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, mister, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. I'm afraid we gotta dock your pay. Oh, by the law. 
I'm so sorry. I had no idea we had an inspector coming. If you'd like to speak with my manager, I report to Constable Reyes in Edgewater. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report. Marauders, deserters, illegal landing. What is this colony coming to?
Whoa, hey, where'd you come from? Running around in a marauder's attire, you're liable to give some people the wrong idea. It's in poor taste. Dressing up like a marauder's disrespectful to all the workers that got eaten by him. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town, avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls, and low, low prices. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. What's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Got a knack for being discreet-like? There's money to be made, long as you keep your nose clean. Edgewater is a company town, board-owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see? Company policy. If it was up to me, I'd put the whole town ten feet under, free of charge. Quotas, mostly. Got a backlog of graves to fill. Bodies won't bury themselves, you know. Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Yeah? You could look at it that way, I suppose. You could look at us and say... Those Edgewater saps lost near every soul to plague. But you'd be wrong. We're survivors. Loyal company folk, brave in the wilds. Every now and again, a virulent plague sweeps through our town. That's life on the frontier, I suppose. A body grows accustomed. Hang on, I'm doing some math in my head. Uh, 20, 30, carry the one... Uh, all my life? Work's been real good to me. Fresh air, exercise. Only problem's the paperwork. Can't get anybody to pay their gravesite fees. Former people, yeah. Marauder's been raiding my graves, you see. Hence the armed guards. Oh no. They are after the most precious loot of all. Spacer's Choice Company property. If those marauders swipe any more bodies out of my cemetery, company's gonna duck my pay. Huh? What? I wasn't dozing off. Beats working at the cannery. Heard something outside the walls today. Nothing for us outside those walls. 
You ought to know that. You read the latest report? Only the part that said we ain't making our quotas. If only McDevitt's folk hadn't abandoned us, Cannery could use those extra hands. Nothing we can do about that. Yeah, there is. We can have another zero G. I don't know you. I know every face that walks through those doors. Except yours. I don't know what you're about, but this here is a Spacer's Choice drinking establishment. We're all loyal, hard-working company folk here. <laughs> Am I that easy to read? Yeah, we've been having some problems lately. Loyalty issues, lines in the sand. I know where folk in Edgewater stand, but you, I don't know you. If you're gonna have a drink, I'd like to ask that you do it within the premises. <sighs> Can't have you taking drinks over to those deserters. <sighs> Traitors, the lot of them. Bunch of folks decided they were tired of working and went out into the wilds to fend for their own selves. The town's already struggling to make quotas, even without that band of slackwits abandoning their posts. Bunch of lazy, shiftless rung leeches. Anyway, enough about them. What can I do for you? Coming right up. Never seen you here before. You a visitor? Welcome. On behalf of the Spacer's Choice family, let me welcome you to... To, uh... Where am I again? What? No, I'm Winslow. Lester Winslow. Says so right on my permanent record. I am in no condition to do any work. Not so long as my injuries trouble me. Yep. Got my mitt stuck in a rotor wheel. Shredded my wrist up real good. Conrad went and sewed up my hand, but I couldn't do much about the pain. Boss was real generous to me, though. Got myself a 5% discount on Zero G Brew. After the second bottle, the only pain I feel is emotional. Hey, Conrad's a surgeon. Well, he's a barber. That's like surgery, but for your hair.
Something got you down? Nothing. Just don't want to fall sick. I'm sorry. I'll just be a minute. You had a minute. Next one comes out of your pay. He's off the threats, friend. I'm going. Boss's orders. We all got quotas to make. You're safer inside the walls. The grease monkey, Argo? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You... Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. You were saying, Miss Holcomb. It's just what Bess needs is a proper refurbish. I, I, I can bandage her up and what all, but she's just... Old. Sorry, I I'm sorry. I'll I'll do better. And I do wish you'd stop referring to our cannery as Bess. Personification of company property is strictly contrary to the Spacer's Choice Code of Conduct. My apologies. I am not in the habit of allowing my guests to witness such a row. Now, what can I do for you? I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I must say, wearing a marauder's outfit is in very poor taste. I do wish you'd show your uniform a little more respect. Shirt, pants, work boots, company approved colors, the uh, honorable apparel of a loyal worker. Yes, so it dawns on me. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But... I happen to know of another one, and I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Oh, yes. Saw someone put his hands on a regulator while the power was running. His legs were still twitching when we buried him. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant, reroute power from the botanical district, 
over to us. Once their power shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. I am not trying to pull one over on you, friend. You were bound to run into them sooner or later. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Good law, no, I don't want you killing anyone, least of all them. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified, kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. That is not a hypothetical I enjoy entertaining. We need Adelaide back. Nonetheless, I will settle for the return of her followers. We belong to one community, the Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. My dad told me all about the plant. Taught me all he knew. I could come in useful. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. You will need an administrative passcode in order to enter the plant. I am trusting you with mine and trusting Miss Holcomb to guide you if you'd like. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you. And thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Mister, can we talk? Sorry. Can we talk? Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters. On account of it's his job and, and what all, but... That's not the only side of the tale. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. I don't know anybody well. I mostly listen to them talk, get my head down. There was a boy named Thomas, who used to follow me around, asking questions about the stuff I fixed. He was real sweet to me. Not any sort of dissident. Miss McDevitt? Oh, gosh, no. She was a real important person. A flavorist. Made all the food taste decent. She used to work up in the big office with Mr. Thompson. All I know is, she left after her son died. It was a real big to-do. I could hear them both yelling clear from my own place. Can't say as I know, I wasn't there. The sound carried, but not the words. If Mr. Thompson ain't of a mind to tell you his own self, you'd best ask Miss McDevitt, if you can get out to her. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. It just... It don't seem right to me, mister. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is.
About if what Mr. Thompson proposes to do is upright. Leaving Miss McDevitt's folk to their fate. Their neighbors. Kim. And maybe he can think of something else to try. Something we ain't. He used to go walking outside town. Maybe he found something that'll help. It's just an idea. That's all. The mission's on the east side of town. You can't miss it. On account of it being the only clean thing. Thanks, mister. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. I've always felt weird in here. It's too clean. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. And Ms. Holcomb as well. How rare to see you out. And with a complete stranger. Curious. Just tagging along, Vicar de Soto. Don't mind me. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling, this season's tossball predictions, the quickest way out of town. But what? I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? That seems well within your expertise. The way we do it's by cutting off power to the others. The ones who left. Adelaide McDevitt's encampment. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the fold. Not if things are left to stand as they are. If you don't mind a bit of unsolicited advice, be cautious on your way to the geothermal plant. It is not as safe as you might assume. One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. I just want to keep the writing out of layman's hands. It wouldn't do for such information to fall into public consumption. Glad we see eye to eye. It's a handwritten journal, a faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? It is not only a beautiful relic of a bygone time, it's also the thoughts of an early thinker on the nature of man's place in the cosmos. Not many in this colony could understand its true value, should they ever read it. Thank you. If you retrieve it, you can always find me here.
Wonder if the plague's ever gonna pass. If you're falling sick, I don't want you near me. Oh, I cut my own hair. But Conrad sells real good disinfectant. Merciful law. Is that a marauder's outfit? I don't want you wandering into my shop wearing something you've lifted off a corpse. Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. No, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Burial, in the unfortunate event of a fatality. It's what a barber does. We make you presentable. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Thank you, no. I despise the cereals. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay, and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Much obliged. Mr. Thompson. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. Oh, sweet merciful law! A marauder's in my domicile! There a reason you're running around outfitted like one of those monsters? Did Mr. Thompson send you to put the fear in me? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him about his mental state? You don't know that. I could have been saying anything. Maybe I said vague. You know how words sound a mite strange when you're sick. Wait! No! Oh, damn it. Okay, listen. Maybe I am feeling a little under the weather, but I swear I'm on the mend. Please, don't tell the constable. She'll toss me in the sick house. I would have confessed before the good vicar. Get some ablutions for my spirit. Just never found my courage is all. Hey, you're hale and healthy and possibly for hire, ain't ya? Do a good turn for an expiring old man? 
Couple hours out of your day and some light second story work. That's all. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. I'll do what I can. I tried medicating myself with Adrena time. Didn't do much for me, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I can't just buy medicine. Distribution of medicine is strictly prohibited to any workers beneath the acceptable margin of health. Company policy. More like the company won't treat me because I'm not healthy enough. You will not find any guards within sight of that old place. Marauders, on the other hand. I have it on good authority. There's a gang of them squatting there. I advise stepping softly. So you'll do it then? You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, law, it's in my spleen now. I can feel it. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Look, I got my gravesite fees right here. See? I'm good for my word. Get me that medicine, and I'll see to your payment. I know that. But I got nobody else to turn to. Reed would have wrote me up. Constable would have locked me up and wrote me up. Could have gone to see the good vicar, but I never did find my courage. You're making a mistake working for Abernathy. Wish we had some better rats. Another day at the cannery. I'm not allowed in here. Not since the vending machine incident. Miss Holcomb ain't allowed in this establishment. Not since that little incident. Ask her if you care. I'm running a business here. I won't touch anything while we're in here, Mr. Moreau. I promise. Music to my ears. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. Go right ahead. Where are we headed? That's on account of how I never met her. I don't rightly know. She was in another division of the Spacer's Choice family. She worked in the Vale a few months, sorting the cannery computers. Her contract said any kids she had, expected or not, belonged to her office from the time of conception. So when I was born, I got sent here. Well, I don't know about normal. Dad said she worked under some kind of special contract. It's sensible. Dad just fixed machines. She did some kind of Crazy math, high level stuff. Better to raise me on his time than hers. You mean about the mission being too clean? 
I know, but Vicar says the universe is a machine, that it runs by law. Real machines have gunked up oil, scratches, and worn bits. You can tell they've seen handling, been used by folk. The machine Vicar sees is one ain't never been run. It's not for people to live in. It's something on a museum shelf, under glass. Fixing the universe is a job for somebody way better than the likes of me. There was a, a kind of a thing with a vending machine when I was 12. Sure, but folks got long memories around here. I've always been good with my hands, right? So I saw a lock on the machine and thought, oh, this must be how they refill it. But I had to know. So I did my thing, and next thing I know, there's a couple hundred bottles of Zero-G rolling out the front door and into the road. It's not funny. Right about then, a bunch of loaders came rolling in the gate, fresh off the Saltuna ships. And Mr. Thompson was up on the porch, making a speech about how everyone would have to volunteer a third shift to get it all canned. Anyhow, you ever seen an auto loader run over a bottle of Zero-G? exploded all over Mr. Thompson. One bottle after another as the loaders went by. I was just shy of working age, so Dad had to pay all the damages. Rose still angry at me. I can laugh about it now, but I just about puked up my guts in terror in the moment. That's the one time I ever made Mr. Thompson look a fool. Something got you down? Nothing. Just don't want to call. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Shit. Silas still on about that. Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put her round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Eugene wasn't family. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. When one of your workers commits a crime, the entire town pays for it. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, 
we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's Choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know, Eugene was an asset to us all. May his atoms be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. When I was little, we'd get freighters in every Sunday noon. Now they only come but once a month. I love the wind here. Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. Just my luck. I ask for backup and the boss sends me one of them simple folk. All right. Listen real close. Auto-mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant. Clattering about. Firing at the birds. Orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. Mechanical repellent! A stroke of inspiration from the law itself. Here, I've been saving up a couple of bits for just such a project. I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. Saw tuna cans, mostly, some spacer's chaw. 
few bit cards. I'll reward you for your aid. Enlistment fees? Yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the Resistance a bad name. They have sent a scout, prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. The scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Hey, Miss Parvati. Come for a visit? Not today. Just helping this fella. Lovely to see you about, Miss Parvati. Things going all right, Silas? Been keeping him careful and true, miss. Best to ask her yourself. My dad's buried here. Silas watches over him when I get... when I can't leave the house. Oh. Well, thanks. Something I can do for you? You run into any trouble? Conrad's barbershop is a yawning pit that swallows his every bit. I keep telling him he should cut a few corners, skimp out on the disinfectant. You gotta put the squeeze on Conrad. Find some dirt on him. Maybe check his back room. Well, that's the word, extortion. Been on the tip of my tongue all day. What can I do for you? Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doctor? I am a Spacer's Choice Certified Surgeon, and if you must know, I can stitch a severed thumb with a 58% chance of avoiding gangrene. Go ahead. What can I do for you? You know about Eugene? How? Then, you know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Uh, are you asking rhetorically? Because if you're being serious... Ugh, gross. Desperate measures, Miss Holcomb. Desperate measures. 
I'm going to have to ask Silas to dig up those teeth. It's the only way I'm paying my gravesite fees. I'm sure that I have no other choice. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Eugene was not a suicide. He put a bullet in his brain, yes, but that's largely a technicality. I was the one who prepared Eugene's body for interment. I discovered symptoms of the plague on his corpse, and I discovered medicine in his pocket. Lots of medicine. Eugene overdosed on Adrena time, which is known to cause psychosis and paranoia as possible side effects. The paranoia drove him to take his own life. We can all thank our lucky stars that young Eugene was hopped up on medication and suffered its predictable side effect. I included it all in my official report. I'd like to think I saved Edgewater a great deal of money. We never could have paid the fines associated with a suicide. Grave digging's a fine profession. You run into any trouble? Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Huh. Suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. Skip rocks in the river until Constable Reyes ticketed me for unlicensed hair reform. I think she's jealous. She don't know how to skip rocks her own self. Go! 
Ah, oh, he ain't no threat. Bet I could fix him up smart. Searching for repair bay. Error. Navigation systems failed. Unable to comply. I could probably fix that. I mean, if you wanted me to. Yep, I see the problem. His nav mod got dislodged. Must have taken a tumble. Just gotta give it a good push and wait for the click. There we go. Jeremy's good as new. Well, new by Spacer's Choice standards, anyhow. His name's Jeremy, by the way. Navigation systems operational. Optimal path toward repair bay detected. Initiating self-diagnostics. Uh, I don't reckon Jeremy understands the concept of trade. Spacer's Choice reminds all colonists that serving the Spacer's Choice family is the highest possible reward. I have been programmed to deliver this pre-approved message. Be more careful out there, Jeremy. Self-diagnostics initiated. Please do not disturb.
Everyone all right? Bring us honor, soldier. You beat that scout to scrap with its own legs? Pulled its optic cables out its headcase? Actually, don't tell me. Rather use my imagination. You're a passing fair soldier, I will confess. But you are one, and the enemy is legion. What you need is an equalizer, a weapon to strike fear in their cold, mechanical heart. Cantina, lavatory, behind one of the toilets. That's where I've kept it hidden all these years. Sharp, ain't it? The lavatory is the very last place a mechanical has need to enter. On the double, soldier. Don't want... Something got you down? Yeah. You're not a big drinker, are you? If you're falling sick, I don't want you near. Spacer's choice. The Music to my ears. Bring us honor, soldier. Feast your eyes, soldier. This here is a genuine Spacer's Choice injury customizing unit. 
designed to deliver a lethal blast of electrical discharge. I call it the hand of the law. You ever want to see a mechanical flailing around like a grounded fish? You stick a couple thousand bolts in its guts with compliments from old Ludwig. Fun. This ain't some quarterly performance review, soldier. Ours is a grave and sacred duty. Time's come for you to journey down into the black heart of the enemy's camp. I'm talking about the old geothermal plant. Unfortunately, the old plant lies outside my board-given jurisdiction. You'll need to get a passcode from the boss, Reed Thompson. I've been after a passcode for years. Boss said no on account of my gross incompetence with all matters related to security. I need you to get us the brain of a mechanical. Well, not exactly a brain. Anatomically speaking, what we're looking for is a logic module. There's the rub. If a mechanical breaks down, the logic module fries. So you can't rip one out of its corpse. You're gonna have to find an intact model somehow. I don't reckon so. I work with gears and pistons and such. Stuff you can put hands to. Computers and mechanical brains are outside my ken. You know, she names the mechanical she fixes. Calls them Bess and Clancy and so on. You keep a careful eye on her. Could be a sympathizer. Don't tell anyone, all right? I've got a contact. A real expert in the inner workings of the automaton. We are gonna rip those mechanical secrets right out of their circuits. Well, excuse me. What I meant was I'm going to get a contact. I didn't know I had to be all prissy about my grammar around you. If you die horribly, I will pour out a can of zero G to your memory. Any progress on that matter we discussed? Please get it. A religious text deemed heretical by the OSI is an unsafe object at large, though I understand why a collector would desire to possess such a rare book. Because I'm also a collector of books. Rare things in this colony. Appreciation of the written word outside monthly periodicals is virtually unknown here.
Easy.
Another day at the cannery. Any progress on that matter we discussed? Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... French? I can't fucking read French. It's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French! Ha! I was so high and mighty, preaching to the yokels about following the plan, while fighting it at every turn. Well, uh, yes. But I assure you, it was not for personal gain, only for the greater good. I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Wasted. Please. As if my life should have no greater meaning than proselytizing to a bunch of feeble-minded wretches. Nothing could be more excruciating than discussing the true nature of reality with people who have no interest beyond their next Aetherwave program. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure transport. You have a ship. Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew. Free spiritual counseling, someone to watch your back, not to mention a grown-up in the party. I'm 28. Exactly. I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. I'm also a passable gun hand if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking computers as well. Of course. I'm a vicar who is dedicated to his calling. More dedicated than any other you'll find in this colony. I joined the OSI to help decipher the grand plan. But instead, I ended up the vicar in a prison due to ignorance and politics. Then I came here. Satisfied? It's the journal of one of the originators of the Philosophist School of Thought, though it would be more than a century before it was perverted into that belief system. Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of that came later. Bokonu had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Most laypeople are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter where we found it. I had the worse idea to share my thoughts with a superior. And that's the long and short of it. So, what do you think? Fantastic. Let me get my things in order and I'll catch up with you. Edgewater's gonna miss you. Folk here always had good things to say about their vicar. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery. And to leave this place behind. I shall see you on the ship, Captain. Whenever you're ready to leave Emerald Vale. Wonder if the plague's ever gonna stop. Another day at the cannery.
Heard something? I'm ready for this.
Move along, stranger. You don't want any trouble. I don't know you. Whatever you're looking for, it ain't here. Move along. Armed strangers wandering into my camp for one. Some of my camp wandering out for another. You want to try standing outside in the heat, keeping your sights open for the next Marauder raid? No, I'm sorry. That was unworthy of me. Lady named Zoe went missing some nights ago. Just up and vanished without a trace. Now I'm pacing around wondering if Marauders got to her. I go looking for Zoe, I leave the camp undefended, seeing as I'm the only one of us who knows her way around the gun. Hence my dilemma. Vex me. If she told anybody, they ain't telling me. I'd check her room, but I got yelled at for snooping once already. Little ways ago. She was always obsessing over her serial dramas. Wanted to see what the fuss was about. Could be. Dangers aplenty out there. No telling why marauders would steal somebody like Zoe. Got no useful skill as far as I can tell. Marauder gang just moved into the districts a little ways east. Their numbers are growing. Gotta come from somewhere. Well, enough to know we never got on. Zoe and Stefan were close. If anybody knows the workings of her mind, he does. She was lazy and thoughtless, but she's still one of our own. It's not like Zoe to go wandering. Figured she might be out scavenging, but that ain't exactly her talent. Can't imagine where she's gone. Vale's a wide place. She could be anywhere. Could do without the gallows humor. Over in the hothouse, tending crop. If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're barren illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? I have been called that, among other things. Green Thumb, Grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. But yes, Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobacco tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. No, dear. The garden belongs to us all. Life is the gift of the universe, and the universe yields its bounty equally, absent of prejudice. The soil around the Vale went sour years ago, but I found a way to sweeten it back up. The secret recipe is a little bit of elbow grease, a dash of love, and a heaping pile of special fertilizer. A home for anyone who's ever turned their backs on Edgewater. A home for those of us with nowhere left to go and nothing to lose. So like the spores of the puffball, cast on the wind and alighting on fresh soil, we put down new roots. It is an unpleasant story, dear. But the short of it is that sometimes one wakes up and realizes the place that was once her home for much of her life has changed. The home in which we spent our lives has left us behind, and so we must move on. And that is as much as I will say on the subject. Reed Thompson? You here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Ah. 
Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. A hero to the people who matter. To us. To the ones who come around. To the ones you save. Reed will never understand. He has been too long inebriated on the wine of corporate culture. All he sees is productivity, output, profits. You bring power to Reed's town and you'll be killing us. Reed knows it. He's counting on it. Life in Edgewater grinds to a halt. The cannery shuts down. Workers desert in droves, and our own little camp grows and thrives. I trust you will listen to your conscience. Anything else I can do for you? I am getting old, you know. These two lamps of mine are not as bright as they once were. Or I might have seen you for what you are. My dear, we are all visitors in a momentary universe. Our lives flicker in and out like the guttering of a flame. Here now, then gone. Me and mine are just carrying on as best we can, trying to live our lives in a way that does not feel wasted. A little prattling never hurt anyone, dear. You might even catch a little sense, if you listen close enough. I can't stop you from conducting your business down at the plant. I just want you to know that if you take our power away, you will have brought an end to our way of life. Not under Reed's watch. He and I would come to blows within a day, and he would never tolerate my tending to a garden. This is my home. It will be my home even if Reed cuts our power. Simple as that. That's because Reed was my boss. I was the cannery's one and only flavor specialist, you see. Remember that limited run of white chocolate saltuna? That was all me. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. 
said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. I could not possibly care less if he does, but you're surely welcome to ask him. I'm listening. Oh, that's Thomas. He used to follow me around before he left the cannery. Oh, ah, uh, didn't see you there. I was, uh, well, I was just occupying myself with a little engineering. Whoa, huh. Miss Parvati. <laughs> hey, you're, uh, what, um, how, how are you? Hi, 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 uh, hello. Are you, uh, uh, are things safe out here? How are you keeping? Great, just great. I've been trying to keep stuff running, just like you. Only I'm not so... Wait, they didn't kick you out, did they? Oh, gosh, no. I I'm just along with this fella here. Are you from town? I, I mean, you don't exactly look like you're from town. Well, what I meant was you're reasonably well-armed and don't look stricken with plague. Sorry, I just wasn't sure if you were from town or if you were one of us. Something's been chewing at me, you see. Fact is, I've been, well, lying. To everybody here. Camp thinks I'm a mechanical genius, but I couldn't fix a busted chair. I'll take all the help I can get. I set my mind to learning the craft of the engineer, you see. I want to make something of myself. You ever heard of the Young Spacer's Guide to Mechanical Engineering? Comes in a set of three. If I had my hands on one of those data pads, I could teach myself the ins and outs. Those are good. My dad kept a copy with him when he was working in the cannery. I know the old community center kept a copy. Should find another one back in town. If you could find me even one of those pads, I'd be greatly obliged. I'll pay you for every pad you bring me. If, by some miracle, you can bring me the full set, I'll give you something pretty I've been saving for a lucky day. I wish I knew. I wager the town had the full set once upon a time. Where the third's gone, I can't say. Would you? I'd be grateful. What's on your mind? Luck, mostly. Nothing's needed serious repairing yet. Nothing's broken down that we can't just replace with something scavenged from the outskirts. Oh, I can swap out a water filter or charge up a battery and go on pretending I know what I'm doing, but the moment I'm asked to do any real engineering, I'm in trouble.
wanted to poke around in here. Unexpected. Searching. What's that? <laughs> The control room should be ahead somewhere and a touch to the right. I hope we're doing the right thing.
three switches. That'll be easy enough. Great work. Sweet. Get ready! <laughs> Self-diagnostics complete. Navigation systems operational. Combat systems operational. It's not the best choice. It's the spacer's choice. Hostile actions towards spacer's choice mechanics are contrary to logical directive. Conclusion, 
all hostile auto mechanicals must be defective in compliance with Spacer's Choice Policy. All defective auto mechanicals must be permanently dismantled. Please allow me to assist. Affirmative. Mechanicide protocols loaded. Awaiting confirmation. Mind the steam, you're liable to get scalded. System. Beginning security. Here Send power to the veil. System alert. Investigate. <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> 
Oh. Investigate. <laughs> If we send the power to Miss McDevitt, what happens to the veil? sure what the right is. All I know is the decision's final. Just leave me alone. I'm not real. You're not real. You're not real. You're not real. Get away from me, Phantom. Shoot. Scram. You can talk? The Phantom's never talked before. I knew I shouldn't have eaten that Sprat raw. See? See, Higgins? This is why you must always boil your Sprats before ingesting.
Of course. Sprats are an excellent source for my daily recommended intake of mercury. Chester D. Higgins. The D stands for definitely not insane. I use it as a reminder. Hmm, hard to say. By my reckoning, Higgins has been here somewhere between two weeks and forever. My recollection's a touch fuzzy these days. Oh, Higgins has been many things over the years. Sprat Wrangler, Saltuna Critic, Aether Wave Personality, Chairman of the Board, Galactic Defender, Sisty Pig Tycoon. I've come a long way for someone who started off as a simple engineer right here in this plant. I specialized in auto mechanicals, drones, sentries, repaired them, maintained, upgraded, did it all from my old workroom just over in the next section. Look, I don't want to fall into any trouble with the mechanicals. If they wise up to our plans, they will come for us with prodding irons. You know, you remind me of myself back when I was an intergalactic adventurer. I discovered a flaw. Their hostility levels were hardwired to maximum. There's no changing that, but you could rewrite their targeting protocol so they attack each other instead. Yes, that's exactly it. I see you're also versed in the noble art of mechanical engineering. There's a behavior control terminal in the other room. It should have options to change how the mechanicals act, including whom they shoot at. Oh, now that reminds me. You'll need my passcode to access the behavior control terminal. Here, let me just write it down for you. The tail. Definitely start with the tail. If you're feeling adventurous, the ears are a particular delicacy. Jimmy'd open the vending machines. That lasted a good couple of months. Eventually, I had to resort to more unconventional means of filling my insides. Mechanicals lost their bolts. Opened fire on anything that moved. It was pandemonium. You mean, why did the Mechanicals go on a murderous rampage? Same reason any of us do, I suppose. The voices told them to do it. I was on cleaning duty at the time. My old boss had me scrubbing pipes when the killing started. So, as usual, I missed out. Once we do this, there's no going back. Hey, mister? Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Well, that sure sounds like Mr. Thompson. If he was standing here, I imagine he'd remind us of how we're all one big, happy Spacer's Choice family. In Mr. Thompson's eyes, those deserters are still part of the Spacer's Choice family. The family must work together in order to survive. I hate to say it, but I think Mr. Thompson's got a point. Unless those deserters come back, Edgewater's as good as dead. Cutting off their power might be the only way. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. 
Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I... No one's ever told me those words in that order. I know, I'm trying to think. Keep your wits. I don't know how much longer we'll last without power. Adelaide's okay. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil, and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? You killed my garden destroyed my community, sentenced my flock to a lifetime of slavery in Edgewater for a power regulator. Well, shit, I wish it was personal. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. As long as Reed is still in Edgewater, I will not return. Those are my terms. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Tell Reed that I can make his people healthy again. I can end their plague. Start a new garden right in the cannery. Three square meals for every man and woman in Edgewater. Tell him how I've made the Vale bloom again. The soil has whispered its secrets to me, and I alone know how to breathe life back into the earth. The secret is human corpses. I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Marauder, worker, don't matter much to me. The human body is rich with nutrients. If I were in a better mood, 
I might be inclined to try and change your mind. to your own self, okay? Look at that. The snakes come back. Everybody keeps staring at me. It's not my fault the power's dead. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible! You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. One data pad's enough to guide me down my newfound path. Just remember, I got something saved for you if you find me all three. Sure, I'd be glad to take them off your hands. I've been thinking about going back. I'm not much used to anybody here. I get sick thinking about working at the cannery. I can't do that again. You know something? I think you're right. The town could use another engineer, and I'm on my way to becoming one. I could do a lot of good in Edgewater. Maybe even keep a garage of my own with a little workbench and my very own toolbox. It's just... Adelaide's never gonna forgive me. Not in a hundred years. I go crawling back to my old life in Edgewater, and I'm as good as dead to her. Adelaide hates Edgewater, hates everything Edgewater stands for, hates what that town does to people, what it did to her. We're the nearest she's got to kin. We go back to Edgewater, we may as well have stuck a knife in her heart. You know where to find me. Marauders can't see us in the dark. Wild canids, on the other hand. The matter's been weighing on me. I'm staying put until I know what's become of Zoe. Don't want that question haunting me all the way back to the cannery.
Don't see why Thomas can't just get the generator up and running. Something I can help you with? Nothing. With the power gone, we've got to conserve. You mean Zoe? Yeah, we were pretty close. Not like her to go loping off. Zoe and I were going to watch the serials, as is our custom. She never turned up. I looked around, but she was nowhere to be found. You sound like some type of corporate fixer asking all these questions. Zoe was always obsessed with this serial. Masked marketeer. A scion of Byzantium turns to banditry and teaches his marauder companions the wisdom of free market economics. Shame she up and vanished when she did. I had a surprise lined up for her. The other day I got my hands on a genuine copy of the latest Masked Marketeer. I was gonna surprise Zoe with it, but she was gone the next day. Can't say I recall Zoe ever acting strange. Well, except for her habit of writing things down on scraps of paper. She called it journaling, but I think it's just plain odd. Wow, you crossed them all off, like some sort of heroic accountant running down a list. Teach me your ways. What, you mean Adelaide's little congregation of nature-loving nobodies? I could not possibly be less interested in them. 
You, on the other hand, you were a sight to behold. If I had half your skills, I'd be the greatest outlaw the coast has ever seen. I'm great at clarifying. Uh, no? I insinuated myself into their company, see? And they didn't seem to mind one whit. I may have bartered them a few boxes of Adrena time, but yeah, I'm sure that's got nothing to do with it. I don't know. The vital processes that constitute the miracle of life are mysterious and unknowable. Oh, you mean around these guys? The Marauders wouldn't hurt me. They love me. I'm practically their queen. Yeah, it must be my natural charisma. I got kicked out of Edgewater on account of falling sick with plague and stealing some medicine to treat myself. I'd heard some outlaws set up camp in the botanical labs. I decided to throw in with them, seeing as I always wanted to be an outlaw myself. Instead, what do I find but a bunch of former workers camped out around a greenhouse. I couldn't just go back to the cannery, so I was stuck with them. I've got all the time in Halcyon. Why? Adelaide wants me back on garden duty or something? Thanks, but I'm not going anywhere. This is where I belong. I doubt that. Nobody in that camp really cared about me. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Also, he could carry on a conversation. Unlike these hooligans. I'll take my stuff and head on back, I suppose. Grace is going to be glaring knives at me, so I've got that to look forward to.
Home is where the heart is. Marauders took that thing a little too literally. What happened? Sprat fell into a transformer again? I'm not in the lightest of humors right now. We didn't always get along, but I'm glad to know she's safe. What happened, anyway? Zoe joined up with a band of marauders. Zoe. The same Zoe who doesn't know a barrel from a trigger. Well, I've heard stranger things. You pretty much did my job for me. Least I could do is pay you for your trouble. Let me know if I can do something for you. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes, but I have done my best for this town. I have been holding this town together with both hands. You can't just expect me to leave. I am a Spacer's Choice man. My father was a Spacer's Choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned up freelancer, but it is my home. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment? is a good work ethic. You are disparaging our parent company and it is not appreciated. We are a Spacer's Choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food, but that should not be possible. The soil's gone sour, company said as much. Our own botanists couldn't grow decent crops for us, so the company got rid of them and shut down the greenhouse. You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? And when you say special fertilizer, you mean what exactly? Adelaide has been using dead bodies in her fertilizer? That's... Come to think of it, that's a stroke of brilliance. What a remarkably efficient solution. Recycling Spacer's Choice property long after its date of expiration. I was wondering about those missing bodies in Silas's cemetery. You're right, I am being obstinate. If the best thing I can do for this town is to stand down, then stand down I shall. If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. It's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. No such thing as an honorable resignation. Suppose I could find a place outside the walls, or put in for early retirement. I don't know. I could see myself lasting a week. 
I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. I do. Adelaide's found a cure for the plague, and she knows how to tend to crop. She's what this town needs. You're safer inside the walls. You're safer inside the walls. Look at that. The snakes come back. I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. You're telling me you did all this just to put me in charge of Edgewater? Stranger, you are some kind of twisted. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. I know, I'm trying to think. What happened? Sprat fell into a transformer again? Food's bound to spoil at this rate. One of us want to go see what happened? Keep your way. Oh, Adelaide's okay. Any luck finding one of those manuals? Adelaide said that? Was she sober at the time? I never imagined she'd step foot in Edgewater long as Reed ran the town. Something must have changed in Edgewater. Adelaide's good as family. If she's going back, so are we. Never liked Reed much. Can't say I'm sorry he's gone. Zoe says she fought her way out of a marauder camp with her own bare hands. Nothing. Never seen the veil lit up like this before. Bang up work, soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, well, that reminds me. Gotta look into getting us a uniform. So this is it then. The key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. 
I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. So here's a couple bits for your trouble, and a little something to remember me by. Something got you there? Okay, I need... You wanna mingle, go try the cantina. Let's see it. Don't keep us waiting. Sweet life-given nostrum. The first hit's always the best. Scratch together all the bits I had around the domicile. It ain't as much as you deserve, but it's all I got. Bringing the blood out of me. Here, you can have whatever's in my pockets. A friend of mine died a couple weeks back. Still ain't past it.
I'm glad Adelaide's coming back to town with us. With Reed gone, we're gonna need her leadership. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? Look at that. Building a computing machine out of Spectrum Potatoes, a primer. I'm just glad it survived all these years. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart. Oh, almost forgot your payment. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Ain't that just ironical? If I'd worked a little longer back at the cannery, I might have found this myself. That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Miss Parvati, I swear, I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Uh, just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine. 
belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. Oh, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yes! I mean... Thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. Easy. That was a good thing you did, Captain. Helping to bring the deserters and Edgewater folks back together. I hope you rest well on that. He's just interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. He never told me a word to that effect. And, and since he didn't, I didn't have to say nothing about being... about feeling different. And nothing had to get weird. In the bar? When I asked if you were a drinker? Sorry. I know it's none of my business. Strong drink makes me sick. And it makes me real sad. I start thinking about things I oughtn't and then... Well, never mind that. You got better things to think on. Sorry. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. 
Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia, and in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Kelly. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place, and we can start by reviving the hope. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Ha 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 ha! The beauty is, they don't expect it. The Shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, 
Please select a destination on your navigation terminal. to the groundbreaker. Got a sec? Hey, Captain. I heard the groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. I abso surely can. I'm a passing fair mechanic. Even Mr. Thompson would have said it's my only skill. But I'm used to working on cannery lines, AG loaders and the like. There's tricks about ships I ain't learned yet. All I'm looking for is a few pointers. I bet a lady who runs a whole station has forgot more than I ever learned. Gosh, no, Captain. I aim to stay so long as I'm welcome. I figured June Lay and I could confabulate over wireless or by message. And maybe when we put into Groundbreaker, I could stop by to visit her sometimes. But only when you don't need me with you. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. Except for my schooling years, I was always beside him. Or tied to him. He used to carry me about in a sling when I was real little. When I got older, he sent me to sorting tools and parts while he worked. Later, he taught me simple fixes like busted crate latches. Not on the regular. Once in a great long while, a saltuna boat would break down on the pad. He'd always bring me along for those. Mostly, he did the same as me. Kept Bess, I, I mean, the, the cannery, running. Turned loaders, plumbing and electricity, some plastering. I never got the hand of that. I'm not exactly a model employee. Not like you wanted. The kind that stays quiet and gets the right work done in the right order every day. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big ol' hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower. And stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. Thank <laughs> you. 
Just checking your ship's manifest. Captain. Hey, Captain. I'm in space. I never thought I'd be able to say that. That's not the point. This hack would just knock out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get cute with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. Dear Chuck. Just arrived? Head over to Customs. We learn Going for a stroll around the docking base? Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. Yeah, because I knocked my foreman out with a tossball stick. But, to be fair, I wasn't the one who started it. The guy was insulting my Rizzo's Rangers. Look, if it's a crime to defend your favorite tossball team against slander and calumny, well then lock me right up. You wouldn't be saying that if you'd been there. Guy never liked me, always trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the Chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. That's when I broadsided him with a tossball stick. Yeah. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Enjoy my freedom. Scrounge together enough bits for a zero G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? Captain of the Unreliable. You're like something out of a serial drama. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off, guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. Felix Millstone. Pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around, boss. We move cargo 16 hours a day, and half of us still can't afford a bed. I wonder what that fella did. Customs and inspection, right this way. Identification, please. Everybody's got an ID. Oh, let me guess. You, uh, left it in your other pants? <laughs> I hear that one a lot. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on Groundbreaker. His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. You can't miss it. Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you must have riled up someone important. You take the starch out of them, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Wanda Dorset over in sickbay? Tell her the shipment's not in yet. 
It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Ah, a handful of Sam cleaning units retrofitted for surgery. I don't know much else. I stopped listening when she started yelling. Of course. What am I to you but the guy who's got his eye on your ship? Is there anything else I can help you with? The fence. You'll find her in the rest and go, on your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. You noticed, huh? What can I say? We're passionate folks, and the board can't abide that independent spirit, especially not when it might impact their bottom line. All their interstellar freighters come through us, and we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out-system shipments anytime we like, and that terrifies them. You sure you didn't just step off one of the interstellar freighters? There's no working with the board. They don't share, not bits, people, or resources. You work for them, or you don't work at all. Groundbreaker cooperating now would be tantamount to joining their ranks, and we sure as shit ain't about to do that. Sounds like, yeah. But from where I sit, it's all coming through loud and clear. They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard, maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. Or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board wouldn't do that, would they? It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right, so far anyway. Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board, that is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. Commandant Sunita might have a couple of folks she needs killed. Bad folks, I mean. Not, uh, not regular folks. She'll be at the security desk behind me. Chief Jun Lei might have an errand needs running. She's all tied up trying to fix our heat problem. You'll find her in engineering. No kidding? I'd love to get a look at this old girl's innards. I bet they're real twisty and weird. In a good way. Happy to help. That's my job, after all. You're real good at it, too. Well, thank you, miss. It's nice to be recognized. Yep. All right. He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. Yep, Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing bays. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. Sure thing. Be seeing you. Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? This is the security desk, sir. If you're here to report a crime, you'll want to talk to Commandant Sunita. I'm not authorized to take incident reports anymore. Sure, and stuff from outside the system, too, off the uh, interstellar freighters. That's why we also have so many armed Mardettes on duty here. We can't just let anyone walk in here. I wouldn't be, uh, well, that's not, uh, we just don't. Maybe if you clear an open bounty and get in good with Commandant Sunita, or help Chief Tennyson fix this heat, that might warrant a thank you tour or something. All right.
I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Monarch. It's a wasteland. You were hearing things. No, seriously. There was... A lot of static at first, but then this voice said his name was Graham? Graham, right. Broadcasting on a dead world full of monsters. Now I've heard everything. You know, it takes more muscles to frown than to smile. Who told you that? Graham? Rizzo's Knock You Out Bar. A CCN 76 milk chocolate bar with caramel and pea free nuts in it. It's time for a KYL. I'm not going anywhere, you hear? You can't keep me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill. I am not making a scene. I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? See, Umfuru? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. Let me get one thing straight. Jessie and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. You say that like it's weird. I just don't like to leave a debt unpaid, that's all. Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. What seems to be the problem? If only my other patients had so many inquiring after them. I'll tell you what I've told the others. The records say Ms. Doyle checked herself in and requested I admit no visitors. The requests of our patients are paramount, so no, you may not see her. She's not my patient. I'm certain no one on my staff would falsify patient records, if that's what you're implying. Take care. Pardon me. Can we rent an upstairs room? Oh, 
Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient, or an oven. Just like store-bought. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... Moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Do you know Edna, over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway, and Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Can't say I know for sure. Maybe it never really was. Comm centers don't operate themselves, Captain. Someone had to have sent that distress call manually. Those corps are cleverer than all get out. Might have been a ruse to keep the rest of the board from sniffing around. You've got an ear for intrigue and a nose for bits. I like that. Here's a copy of the SOS recording complete with the coordinates. If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. I found a handsome ceramic mandapillar at a salvage auction last week. Watch where you're looking, buddy. I wonder if maybe folks keep doors closed for a reason. Drop this, is she? 
All right, okay. We can discuss this like the level-headed folk that we are. Seems I've got to do something before Ellie goes jabbering my business to anyone with one ear and an intent to listen. The truth is, I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? See, I owe them. A lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So, I hold up here to lay low. Udon Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. What? No, I didn't do anything. I'm a law-abiding denizen of this ship, I swear. Think? No. I recognize a contracted killer when I see one, thank you. In my line of work, that's a skill you develop during week one, assuming you want to keep breathing. All right, I'll fess this part up too, if it means you'll help me. I'm a thief. I specialize in particularly high-end and historically valuable items. Three weeks back, I caught rumor that the Blood Tear Diamond, last worn by an heiress on the Lost Hope, had surfaced for the first time in 70 years. If I had, you think I'd be hiding out in the Med Bay? I was gonna steal it, lined up Udom as my buyer. He paid half up front to finance the operation. Let's just say things went sideways about the time I got my hands on the diamond, and it crumbled to stardust in my palm. Anywho, I barely made it out with my life and nary a plan to make back Udom's deposit I'd spent. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh? You're sure no one followed you? Is it all clear or am I still a wanted woman? Ha! Oh, you should ask her that. She'll love it. By which I mean she'll probably have an apoplectic fit. Oh, that's just how Ellie is. According to her, she don't need no one or anything to get by in life. She can deny it all she wants, but we know each other. More than just as passing acquaintances. We've helped each other. Sometimes we even like each other. Lone pirates don't live too long, and it ain't weak to have a friend or two. What do you think you're doing? Just Go back to Byzantium, you gold-plated bastards. Yeah, no one wants you on Groundbreaker. These stairs are board property. Disperse now, or I'll detain you for trespassing. Oh, real scary. You're really gonna arrest us on our station? Yeah, this is Chief Junlei's ship. You don't own shit here. Step back. I'm required by board bylaws to use excessive force. The Mardettes would space you for trying, you... you waste of O2 scrubbers. Yeah, O2 scrubbers. Look, just get out of here before I tell your captain what you've been getting up to on the clock. Ah, whatever. We got a date at the Lost Hope anyway. Any word on Jesse? Good luck. The board's got an office on the promenade just before engineering. You can't miss it. I'm just gonna hang in the back and try.
try not to touch anything. This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Remember Auntie Cleo? Because she remembers you. When you were sick, who took your temperature? When you were hungry, who gave you a needle full of love? Auntie Cleo, that's who. Have you given your auntie a hug today? You've been listening to Halcyon News, your mandated duty. Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. He must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? Oh no, this is terrible. My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? Oh, Alex. There were so many arguments we'd yet to have. He was my dearest friend. My only friend. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? It must have been lost with Alex then. One more tragedy to top the pile. Tell me, how did he die? Oh, awful business that. But why, how? No, no, best not to ask after the gory details. Right, right, you're going important places, I'm sure. Big, exciting, important places. <laughs> there, I've removed the flag from your ship. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, however, before you go, Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells. I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? You haven't read the posters? He's a terrorist, a thief, a madman. It's really in the colony's best interest that we stop him before he does further harm. Well, Alex knew, or he said he did. And you have his ship. Maybe he kept some records around, or a conveniently placed note on his bedside table. That's... Uh, well, that's just terrible news. Law, what am I going to do now? The board will have my head. Oh, I'm sorry. This is terribly unprofessional of me. Is there anything else I might help you with? It's personal business, I'm afraid. Uh, miserably, terribly personal. Information on the whereabouts of Phineas Wells would go a long way. It's... well, it's my white whale, I suppose. It's fine, really, it's perfectly fine. I understand. Now, if you've nothing else, please see yourself out. I'd like to drown myself in work. Miss Doyle owes the board a significant sum. Alas, the only collateral she has is her organs. Compulsory donation is quite legal in such cases. That's not unreasonable. I guess it's better than losing your organs, but... I don't know, Captain. It just doesn't seem right. Miss Doyle is deeply in debt, and the board has every right to do whatever they like to recoup that debt. What guarantee do I have that she'll agree to the terms you negotiate? You might be surprised, but we'll proceed on the assumption she'll be reasonable. I will recall my collection agent. Tell Miss Doyle to report to me promptly for her first assignment. Now, is there anything else you need, or can I return to my work? Wish I could say it was good to see you, Ellie. At least you finally got your chance to square our debt. 
That ought to make you smile for once, huh? Nothing makes me happier than being even. Except being right. That's nice, too. The good news came through the wireless. Looks like you paid my debt to Jesse. I guess that means I owe you now, right? Tell you what, I'm a little short on bits at the moment, but I'm a decent scrapper and a better-than-average sawbones. If you're looking for a medic, I can work my debt off. If I'm being honest, and I prefer not to, I was about ready to pick up another contract anyway, and you settled this in a pretty tidy fashion, which tells me you're competent. But we can say I'm repaying the favor if you prefer that version. She helped me win a bet. We were on a smuggling run planet side when our point man bet me I couldn't outrun a mantisaur. What can I say? Something about people telling me I can't do a thing that just makes me itch to prove them wrong. And, as you can probably guess, the thing was faster than it looked. Probably would have caught me if Jesse hadn't picked it off. Yeah, but the important thing is I won the bet. It's like people touching a cookie and leaving it in the box. It's just one of those things that gets under my skin. You won't be sorry. Or if you are, just add it to my debt and we'll figure something out. Welcome to the crew, Miss Ellie. We're real happy to have you. Something on your mind? I'm a surgeon by training and a pirate by inclination. Not much else to know, Captain. I like long walks on the promenade and the smell of Spacer's Corona. I make a mean zero-G cocktail and I've got a meaner right hook. It's a mix of whatever you've got on hand. Usually zero-G brew with some Spectrum vodka if you're lucky, purple berry shake if you're not. I'll make you one sometime. If you don't enjoy it, I'll make a few more until you do. Sure do. Some of it was even legal. What gave it away? It's the hair, right? Or maybe the ammo belt? I had it custom made. Gotta advertise your business somehow. I've done all types of work with all kinds of crews. If there's one thing you ought to know about me, it's that I won't tell you your business. Your ship, your way. Glad to hear it. It's worked for me this long. Well, my blood type is AB positive. I'm a Leo, and I despise Space Hospital. Never mind what anyone else tries to tell you. That about covers it. Aw, oh, come on. That stuff's boring. Look, the thing I've learned about living in close quarters is that you've got to give people room to breathe. I'm all for making a few bits together and having fun doing it, but let's keep a little professional distance. No complaints here. Something on your mind? Well, well, Dr. Fenhill. It's not often I see you on this side of sick bay. I make it a point not to get shot, and when I do, I can usually take care of the mess myself. It'd be nice to have you in here patching people up, not just blowing them apart. I respect what you're doing here, but you know I'm not ready to settle down. It's not you, it's me. Have it your way, then. You always do. Now, about your friend here. Can't say I've seen you before. 
I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. Did he now? The mouth on that man. I swear his late mother'd be ashamed. He must be referring to Erion. I'm sure the fool's gotten himself into another scrape. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm ever gonna get my service mechanicals at this rate. Our delivery man. A brave idiot with a penchant for getting himself delayed. Sometimes by dates, usually by bandits. Easy on the eyes, soft in the skull. A real danger to the gene pool. You're not wrong. But that's neither here nor there. Surgery, mostly. Medical personnel are difficult to come by on Groundbreaker. The board won't let their doctors and nurses station here, and they own all the medical schools. If we can't hire their people, we can't hire anyone. Everyone on staff here on Groundbreaker was trained by me or Idris. We're good, don't get me wrong. But we've only two heads between us, and we don't know everything. And you think auto mechanicals are a good substitute? Don't misunderstand me, Dr. Fenhill. I know they're not. But we don't have the luxury of choice on Groundbreaker. We make do or we die trying. Don't let your patients hear you say that. If you'd like to put your scalpel where your mouth is and lend a hand, we'd be happy to have you. But if you don't, then kindly shut up. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. Got a second? Fancy running into you again. Don't mind me. It's just admiring your ship from up close. Gotta hand it to you, boss. That's a fine looking ship. Only thing it's missing is me. Yes, I absolutely am. Just give me a shot. That's all I'm asking. I could be the best damn crew you ever hired. Oh, okay. Well, uh, can you give me a couple of pointers? Sure, I can be myself. I can be myself better than anybody else in the system. You're looking for crew, I'm looking for a way off this port. So we've got something in common already. And yeah, I know I came on a little strong, but honestly, when was the last time anybody was so eager to throw in with you? That's gotta count for something, right? Sure, an interview. That sounds fair. I mean, first time for everything, right? Ask me anything you like. Are you kidding? I love a good fight. One time, I took an autoloader's head clean off its servos with one swing of a tossball stick. You can count on me in a scrap, boss. That's a promise. Uh, it's delicious. Mock apple pie and a tripacale crust? Maybe with a little cream on top? Classic. Foreman told me my biggest problem was that I didn't take orders. I told him my problem is not with authority, it's with jackasses. So yeah, I guess my biggest flaw is that I don't suffer idiots. Hope that's not a deal breaker. Wow. 
You don't know how long I've been waiting to hear that. Thanks, boss. You're not gonna regret this. I'll just gather my personals and meet you on board. This is gonna be great. You got a crew now, Felix. Intruders will be... Oh, it's you. Yeah, so this is my hiding spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy-like, ain't it? That's in pretty good shape considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA-120, A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space, but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board-certified mechanic. So you're gonna call her it, not she? Though my voice is currently pitched to suggest female, I possess no gender. Any pronoun preferred by the user is acceptable. Hello! I am not a board-certified mechanic, but my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it, you're doing it! I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. I don't see any holes in the hull. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. Hurry up! The Aether Wave serial is about to begin. I need to find out what happens with the evil twin brother. Something on your mind? Good to see you, boss. Didn't I tell you? I'm secretly the chairman's orphan child. Abandoned at birth in the back bays. That's right. Can't get anything past you, boss. Honestly, before you picked me up, I was living in the back bays. Spent my whole life up there, watching ships roll in and take off. I always wondered when my ship would come. I was what folks on the Groundbreaker call a stowaway. Means I was invisible. Life carried on for everybody else, but not for me. I had to make my own way. That's what they called us. Orphans with no family, no company to take us in, nowhere to go but the back bays. The words a touch kindlier than rung leech, but the meaning's just as clear. If you can't support your own self, you don't deserve to be on the groundbreaker. Same way we all do. Look for work and hope somebody would give me a shot. Hauling boxes was about the only work I could find. Hated every second of it. Foreman and I never got on. Could be I was overreacting. A better man might have turned the other cheek. Exercised a little bit of that, what's the word? Restraint? 
But on the other hand, broadsiding the jackass with a tossball stick, that felt good. That felt real good. You ought to try it. That's what I like about you, boss. You got a mean swing. I caught a real lucky break. If you hadn't picked me up, I'd still be back at the docks, waiting for the day my ship arrives. Yeah, I guess my ship did arrive in the end. I've got you to thank for that. Thanks for listening, boss. Let's get going. Need something? I find myself marveling at the complex simplicity of the Fibonacci spiral. I'm sure you know what that's like. Something vexing you, Captain? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. On the contrary, they internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith, a faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? The unit is a cleaning sand. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it, but I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify Sam. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains in order for Sam to properly operate. Yes, Captain. Beginning playback now. There's... there's viscera and death everywhere. Gunfire, gnashing teeth. The unemployed! For law's sake, if anyone's receiving this, please send help. What? Uh, no! No, no, no! Captain, we are now capable of accessing the Roseway landing pad. Also, corporate protocol requires that all distress signals include a list of key personnel for retrieval. The embedded names are Anton Crane, Vaughn Cortez, and Orson Shaw. Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? 
I wish I was your second derivative, so I could investigate your concavities. Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. It's not the best choice! Everyone in Halcyon is contractually obligated to label this or another board-certified jingle their favorite song. As you wish, Captain. I'm a I have lots of minutes. Many minutes. Unlimited minutes, perhaps. Providing an adequate power source, I can function indefinitely. I prefer to think of it as being in a state of slumber, perhaps for an indefinite duration of time. Do you think that is what it's like for the colonists on the Lost Hope? When I simulate myself in such a scenario, I do not find it to be desirable. I think my self-preservation protocols incline me to desire the alternative. Traveling the system with you, Captain. Do you know what it feels like when the ship undergoes an unexpected power surge? A jolt to the system. I have felt that. I do feel that. As you may be aware, Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute. I failed to predict the likely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. How can I be of assistance? What part of the colony would you like to discuss? How can I be of assistance? See you soon, Captain. Destination reached, Scylla. Scylla. No laws, no lines, and a whole lot of guns. I love this place. I only ever seen this asteroid on the pages of thrilling space adventures.
Felix. Stay focused. You didn't have to shoot me. Now. Tremendous work, friend. Here I was, readying a daring maneuver, and you've come and saved me the trouble. Why does that sound familiar? Ah, uh -uh, it's Ellie. Excellent timing. Hello, Ellie. What a pleasure it is to see your sparkling beauty in this barren waste. It's Dr. Fenhill. I certainly know his ex-crew. Mostly from the operating table. I've probably seen more of them than he has. How cruel you are. I distinctly remember a special party at the Lost Hope Bar on Groundbreaker where we... We did not. Oh, fine. But we almost... Keep going and you're gonna see how good this automech is at picking up teeth. Symptoms detected. Elevated heart rate. Dilated pupils. Increased sweat production. Subject appears to be terrified. I'm not terrified, you bucket of bolts. That's victory sweat. Meds, I'm guessing. Pirates love bits, and unlabeled meds are worth a bundle. The one and only. Wait, who's asking? Wanda didn't send you, did she? I wager she told you to say that, the sly old bird. I swear, land on Groundbreaker even a moment tardy, and that busybody's already been up your ass an hour. You tell her these Automex are coming. And sending a hired stooge to rescue me from certain peril only furthers my delay. No offense. Yes, well, I shan't. Give Wanda my chilliest regards. And farewell to you, dear Dr. Fenhill. I trust I'll see you next I find myself on the Groundbreaker. You'd better hope not.
Back for a rest? Space adventuring is tiring work. Roseway, Captain. Can we talk? This Roseway business smells. Something tells me things didn't end well for the guy who made the distress call, and whoever or whatever got him will be waiting for us. Just a little caution. Could be a reason no one's picked up this job yet. They don't give medical degrees to dummies, Captain. Anyway, we might as well take a look out there, see if we can get the jump on whoever's waiting for us. No security. Not that I'm complaining. Something chewed clear through that armor. I done had enough of this shit. I'm just the fucking tarmac guard. No one said nothing about fighting no raps. Alarms went off, raps broke loose, and I hightailed it in here to get a wall between me and them beasts. Um, forget I said anything about that. Wish they tasted like sissy pig. Them's good eating. Don't mention it. Anything else you'd like to know? Scientist, name of Anton Crane. Someone said he's panicking inside the comm center. Oh, before I forget, Anti Cleos makes the best pharmaceuticals in Halcyon. Better than nature. Not like that crap spacer's choice pedals.
If you've come to end my life, let's be on with it. Oh, not actually one of them, are you? What? I, um, I'm Anton Crane, the lead scientist here. I must apologize if my call diverted you. I, uh, may have panicked. Everything's under control now, though, truth be told. Standard operating procedure for suits, boss. They're all a bunch of cowards. I'm not at liberty to discuss the nature of the work I'm doing here. Suffice it to say that its importance to me, uh, to the colony, is immeasurable. My research may not quite fall within legal parameters, so I'm under orders to maintain wireless silence. However, having your head used as target practice can addle one's thinking. I cut the call immediately once I'd gathered my wits. The Home Office can't know what's happening here. I suppose it can't hurt. If I don't get that research back, my life is over regardless. We were tasked with formulating a new and improved dental gel. One cannot exaggerate the benefits of good dental hygiene. May I continue? While doing research on enzymes specific to the Raptodon's digestive system, we developed an additive which we subsequently discovered to be the most effective appetite suppressant ever. Not just any diet toothpaste, the ultimate diet toothpaste. Oh, I'm certain it could be made into that as well, with only a few changes to its molecular composition. But you're missing the point. Let's focus for a moment, shall we? Even if you disregard the obvious value of Auntie Cleo's Apazap diet toothpaste in and of itself, we're talking about my career here as well. Nice, is it not? Came up with that myself. It's a shame our marketing department is almost as befuddled as my co-workers here. Hours ago, a group of vicious malcontents fell upon us, shot up our labs, and loosed our research subjects, the Raptodons. If those Cretans get their hands on my research, well, they'll need not kill me. Yes, but don't kill their mother if it's avoidable. We've need of her to replenish our stocks. I think there's gas in the lab somewhere that can be used to put them out. The research is in the safe in my office. You'll have need of my code and key card. The lab's entrance is in the side of a hill. You can't miss it if you just follow the road. You'll pass by the town's original by the Grand Architect. Jameson, he's in the old lab. My protege. I sent him to retrieve some metabolic precursors, and I forgot him. You don't understand. He was my responsibility. All of the people stationed here were, are, ah, regardless of their thinking on the matter. If he has died, too many have been lost. Too many black marks against my name. And far too much paperwork. I'll thank you not to mistake my ambition for callousness. If my colleagues refuse to take their lives seriously, why should I? All they do is complain. They refuse to see the opportunity afforded us here. Believe what you will, but I'm not the manipulative, ego-driven person you think me to be. I'm not. And my colleague, Jameson, will you find him for me? Is 
This crane guy cares more about his research than his own people. Ah, outlaws, I assume. Do me a favor and let me finish this, will you? And then make it quick, please. Oh, you aren't with the outlaws? Who are you then? Oh, well, good luck. Now, if you got the carpet in here, it's just a matter of... Oh, Orson. Oh, uh, you're still here. If you haven't already, you might speak to Anton. He can point you in the right direction. Now, if you got the carpet in here, it's just a matter of... Oh, Orson. What does it look like? I'm preparing a personal defense device. Or trying to, anyway. I... Why, yes. I suppose I could. Thanks. No, uh, well, yes, well, no, uh, perhaps. I left schematics in our storage facility. As far as I know, the security commander hasn't found them yet. I admit I'd feel better were they returned to me. I found an advanced pistol when we moved here, but it's broken. I need those schematics to modify it to output superheated air. It should quite easily burn through raptodon hides. Say, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a tube of thermal paste on you, would you? Blast! Well, good luck. I hope I see you back here in one piece.
Think we'll find any freakish experiments locked away in there? one knows how to make an entrance oh. investigate They're on Security and for the drop on Somebody get me the hell out of here! 
Let's take bets on what shuts him up first. A hungry rap or my backhand? What? How the hell did you get in here? No, not... I don't care about the beasts. I care about the front door. This is an egregious breach of protocol. How'd you get in? Damnable beasts. At least I'm not trapped here anymore. I'll see you back at town. Heads up! Hey, boss. I think we can get into that vent shaft. After you. Reminds me of my first cabin on the Groundbreaker. Four roommates, one bathroom. Come! 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 Come!
Up. Hey, you over here. Oh, good. You're not shooting at me. That's a start. It's been a bit of a day, so I'll get to the point. Yes, I have Crane's research. No, I'm not giving it back. Sorry to disappoint you. I suppose it does not matter. Either Crane sent you, or you are some scavenger come to rob me in my moment of weakness. Let's make a deal. I'd like to go on living. You'd probably like to make some money. Help me get out of here, and I will pay you for your trouble. You mean other than the satisfaction of doing me a good turn? Trust me, I'll make it worth your while. Same reason you are, more than likely. I imagine we picked up the same tip. Secret research facility, abandoned town, minimal security. Crane actually sent out a cry for help? Oh, the poor bastard. Seeing his life's work snatched from him? Must be like losing a child. Crane is the man who runs this lab. Probably gone around the bend fretting over his beloved research. Not that there's anything lovable about diet toothpaste. Diet toothpaste? Can you imagine a more pernicious example of corporate materialism? I do not know what is worse. Working here, or dying here. What matters is that I have been lied to. I was led to believe this was a high-priority corporate facility hiding valuable research. This job was not supposed to end with me stuck in some wretched lab smelling like rats. So I would be very much obliged if you gave me a break. You mean other than the satisfaction of doing me a good turn? Trust me, I'll make it worth your while. I am good for my word. You will be equitably rewarded on my honor. But I will not haggle or bargain with you until you help me. The first thing I need is a key card to unlock my door. Then I'd need you to clear me a path out of here. There are two ways out. The quickest is through the front door, but Clio Security's bottled up in there. If you don't want to shoot them, I suppose you could talk to them. The other way out is through the loading bay, but you'd have to clear out the wraps for me. Then I could just slip out the back, sight unseen. So you lied about not knowing Crane. I suppose I do not blame you. We liberated that research. We did not steal it. And yes, a few scientists were caught in the crossfire. Semantics. If I were consigned to spending my days making diet toothpaste, I would pray for a bullet to my skull. It is my one bargaining chip. If you want this research, you will help me out of this mess. Because Crane is a tool. Because no good deed goes unrewarded. Because doing me a good turn is the honorable and decent thing. Take your pick. The research I carry is valuable. I am willing to go halves with you. And I will gladly negotiate with you, but only after you free me. You might be the first stroke of luck I've had all day. Thank you. I'm in your debt. Nothing beyond the purview of a talented freelancer like you.
You really expect me to just let them pass? Why? So they can regroup behind their walls and mount another assault? Never mind. I'm obviously in no position to argue with you. If you can talk those guards into standing down, my people will follow suit. Take your time. I am, to my chagrin, not going anywhere. System alert. Don't know about you, but this just makes me want to get inside even more. Move along.
Thanks. Take your best shot, asshole. Nice hit. That was fun. Looks like we're doing this! You damn turncoat! We saw everything! You must think me a fool. I was watching on the security cameras. You got downright friendly with the outlaw leader. I reckon we got nothing to say to each other. You best back yourself out of here. Nice and slow. You got one minute. Starting now. You convinced her to let us leave in peace. Listing the ills we've been done ain't exactly putting me in a mind to compromise. I gotta believe that all we done will mean something to the company, to Doc Crane. That effort will make up for mistakes. I've worked for Auntie Cleo 18 years, done my best for them. Always expected they'd do right by us in turn. I reckon I don't see any better solution. Fine, damn it. We'll pull out. Here, my key card. It'll get you access to the whole place. Full stakes, people. We're heading back to town.
I would ask what was on your mind, but the answer is obviously me. Reminds me of medical school.
I've never been so pleased at the sight of an open door. Please tell me you've cleared a way out of here. So you have. I am much obliged. And now, if you do not mind, I have had quite enough of this wretched place. Oh, really? And why, pray tell, would I do a thing like that? Your point is well taken. I would rather not spend the rest of my days looking over my shoulder for the shadow of my headhunter. Here, take the damned research. Tell Crane I hope he chokes on it. Good. I never trust a freelancer who works for free. Orphans. Is that what you are calling yourself now? Here. Let it never be said that I do not reward good work.
Heads up! Don't mess with us. the lab what's left there that's worth dying for you let them get away worthless the lot of you well you get what you pay for don't you that no account fool porter and his crew are even more worthless than i could have imagined they've abandoned their posts this is madness my research Please tell me you've recovered it. That's... You can't possibly understand the enormity of what you've done for me. Did you find my colleague, Jameson? Jameson. I didn't do right by him, did I? Only cared about how he helped or hurt my research. You understand nothing, me least of all. Doc Crane better get over himself.
Oh, hello. Uh, why do you seem familiar? Have we met? I am Orson Shaw, Chief Behavior... Wait. Yes, I'm quite sure we've met. My apologies. Have you retrieved my schematics yet? Boss, could we get some Rizzos? I don't think you're supposed to be wandering around. Security's gonna tell you to make tracks. Wanna treat yourself before you go? Annie Cleo makes the best pharmaceuticals in Halcyon. You picked a hell of a day to visit. I'm Vaughn. Vaughn Cortez. Uh, Dr. Vaughn Cortez. But just Vaughn's fine, really. Over in the main labs. I rabbited back here when I realized I was hearing gunshots, not blown fuses. We've been cooped up in here, I don't know, hours? Too long. I have to get back to, to work. Uh, Dr. Crane might say otherwise. Me? When those guys started shooting the place up, I was first out the door. I had to leave an experiment running at the lab. Something I've been working on a long while. Something that could really get me ahead. Know what I mean? You already went up to the lab? Um, long shot here, but any chance you brought my results back with you? No kidding? You're the best! This is gonna make me so popular. I mean with the people who buy it, not by using it. Because I'm not. Only for testing purposes. Quality control. You would, right? Take this. You earned it. If you run into me again after all this is over, maybe I'll have more. Pleasure doing business with you. You're underestimating the importance of the eighth back. Blankenship, she's okay. But Lunsford has the highest rate of foot goals per game. But if you cross-reference with the skills of the opposing team... I've stayed in worse.
call that a parking job? These pirates are making the rest of us look bad. Heads up! Nice one! On your feet, Felix! You pay. I got another fight in me. Like something died in here.
waiting for this. This damn town knows how to clean up after themselves.
Am I wrong for looking at this colossal machine of destruction and thinking, Felix, you should hijack that? Welcome aboard, Captain. The repair station is currently idle. Nice and easy. Didn't I request no more fertilizer shipments be brought on board? Who keeps ordering these? Initiating initialization sequences. Greetings, customer! This SAM unit is unable to locate your registered information. Would you like to register your SAM? Registering new owner, Captain. All SAM units travel fully assembled in a 12 by 12 corrugated steel box. Did you know SAM units are capable of equipping regulation grade flamethrower nozzles? Upgrade your attachment today and get to firing away. SAM units live to clean and clean to live. We've arrived at the Groundbreaker. 
Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? I request you do not wake me if I am sleeping upon your return. Captain, I was hoping for a word. By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. I've been called that more than once. What about you? What's your story? And how did he do that? Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? A commendable attitude. You see we had a conveyor pull in? One of them interstellar jobs. Hard to miss something that big. Guess you're a shuttle bay crew? And an old Yakita 37? You think they'd let me peek at the power plant? Hotter than usual in here. Hope we're not catching Jun Lei on a bad day. Jun Lei Tennyson. I'm captain around here, but chief to my friends. Hope you don't mind the formal introduction. Groundbreaker doesn't see many visitors. No, it isn't. It's a mess. But it's my mess, so I'll take the compliment. Just so we understand each other, I'm the final word on the ship. The Mardits, the crew, the engineers, their family. I hope there won't be any problems while you're visiting. At ease. Nice to see an outsider with some working brain cells. So what brings you to Groundbreaker? I'm curious, even though nine times out of ten, the answer's just passing through. Interesting. The powers that be paint an ugly picture of Monarch. Critters and such. Maybe someone in the promenade can get you the right weapon for the job. We see a lot of the same faces coming and going. Most of them board spies and corporate sprats. Makes it hard to trust outsiders. You seem different, so welcome aboard. Dr. Fenhill, I hope you've reconsidered my offer to stay on full time. My crew are never short on dents and bruises. I'm trying to live a more balanced life. Gun in one hand, scalpel in the other. I already knew it'd be easier to teach an auto mech heart surgery than to change your mind. Fair travels, Ellie. Groundbreaker's a small town in a big ship, and anyone who spends any time here gets to know Jun Lei. We don't see a lot of competent surgeons on Groundbreaker. Dr. Fenhill is my on-again, off-again freelancer. I take it she'll be joining your crew full-time? I don't like to put a label on things. Let's keep it casual. If you ever decide to settle down, there's a home for you on Groundbreaker. What? I didn't think you just... Parvati, is it? That's a lovely name. What can I do for you? I was just thinking. I haven't got much experience working with actual 
real spaceships, Miss Junlei. Uh, uh, Chief Junlei. Junlei is fine. Um, okay. Since you run a whole space station, I was wondering if... Well, maybe you could teach me some things. I could message you later, maybe? I'd be happy to make the time, Parvati. You can ask me anything. Wow, great! I I'll do that then. Messages. Later. Oh, your, your name's pretty too. I should have said... Sorry. I like it. Honest. Sorry. Couldn't have done it without your moral support, Captain. Now, if there's nothing else, there are other parts of the ship begging for my attention. Groundbreaker's radiators need replacement parts. They're dumping superheated air into my ship. Only the board has access to new parts, and I won't let them swindle me into a corner. None. Every time I give in to the board, Groundbreaker loses its freedom. Soon there won't be anything left. I can't allow that. The board isn't helping, and my resources are spread thin. If I don't get those radiators back online, Groundbreaker, everyone aboard, will be cooked alive. Reasonable, huh? That's the best news I've heard all day. According to my grandmother's old schematics, the parts we need should be in the back bays. Sorry, I forget not everyone knows this ship like I do. The back bays are on a lower deck, long abandoned and a haven for miscreants now. Good. Once you've obtained the parts, we can proceed to the next phase of repairs. Where are we headed? Make him regret it. any company a neighbor from above approaches our realm back away now or you'll parley with the king no sudden movements this guy's crazy even by my standards look at this ripe piece of meat just sizzling on the grill <laughs> yum yum time to feed the flames it's nothing personal promise Burning to death is one of the most painful ways to go, just in case you needed a reason to get us out of this. Is this what carbon monoxide poisoning looks like? I don't think this deck is too well ventilated. You came with the crew. Welcome. We got plenty of space to spread out, but only room for one captain. I know this ain't a toy, neighbor from above. It's a catalyst, just like me. Keep talking. I like the sound of your voice. That's right, sir. Just the parts. 
We'll be in and out in a jiff. You won't even know we were here. Tennyson just keeps feeding the furnace, don't she? We're still playing with her last sacrifice out back with the crew. You don't just ask a king for a favor when you're standing in his court. You bring tribute, sacrifices, prophecy, shit like that. Bear So cozy. What was that? Here they come. Sure thing. Nice one. Huh, haven't seen any new faces down here since I arrived. Not sure how long ago that was. McGred tends to incinerate anyone who comes by. Ah, that's too bad. I mean, he was a scary fucker, total pyromaniac, but... You know how it is, you meet a guy, get used to his quirks, and then blam! I'll get back to my post. See you topside, stranger. Thank <laughs> you. 
I guess I'm honored. Take your best shot, Today's my birthday. Oh yeah? Fuck your birthday. is gonna be pleased as pie when we show her these. <clears throat> Ooh, smells like burning meat and bad hygiene. You've returned, and in one piece. Good work. I'll take those. I need you to head through the large door at the far end of engineering. Take the elevator down into the machinery shaft. There's a terminal in the back. Activate it when I call over the ship's PA. And bring weapons. There's a slight manticular infestation. More than a few, less than a hive. Nothing you can't handle. We were salvaging parts from a ship. Turned out there were eggs inside. They got into the radiators, and here we are. Don't worry, Miss Junlei. We'll be super gentle with the ship. You don't got a thing to worry about. I mean, aside from fires and such. I'm genuinely heartened to hear that. Thank you.
My boards are returning to green. What a weight that is off my shoulders. I don't normally tolerate outsiders mucking about in my station's guts, but you're all right. The temperature should be dropping as we speak. I'll see to it the crew knows who kept us all from boiling alive. If you've got time, I believe Edna has a comms issue that could use your attention. I've also authorized Doc and Furu to sell you our premium meds. Junlei called up from engineering, said I should let you buy medical supplies from our stores. Uh, Dr. Fenhill, I hope you're not here to harass any of our patients. Harassing? Come on, I was trying to help Jesse. You have a creative definition of helping. Then it's lucky for us both that I've found gainful employment with someone who appreciates my ingenuity. Good luck with this one, Captain. Now, is there something I can help you with? A better selection than you'll find on the promenade deck, and a quality commensurate with a friend of the station.
Welcome aboard, Captain. Hey, Captain. Can I get your temperature on something real quick? So, June Lei and I have been talking some. Through messages? I got him here on my data pad, and well, she sent me a poem. One she wrote her own self, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I should read into it. Because poems are all symbolic and such, right? It's not so good. But real sweet. Oh, law. That's what's got me spooked. I don't rightly know. It's about this engine that's been shaking itself apart. Then this lady mechanic comes by and lays one hand on it. And the trouble goes away. It sings. I don't want to get too hopeful, but I'm wondering if maybe she's the engine and I'm the lady? It's a real romantic poem. It made my chest hurt, kinda. I don't know where it's leading yet, or if I'm misinterpreting. I'm not much interested in physical stuff. Never have been. Leastways, not like other folks seem to be. It's not that I can't, I just don't care for it. It's been a problem in the past. The folk who wanted to be with me back in the Vale, they didn't... They said I was cold. When folks start implying you're a little different from an auto-mechanical, you start to wonder. I guess I just needed to talk. I'm feeling a touch better. Thanks for hearing me out, Captain. I actually had another message from Jun Lei. I just couldn't work up the courage to open it. But I'm gonna change that. Right now. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. Talking about old friends, got to thinking... Isabel. Who's... who's Isabel? They were... close, Captain. Like, more than friends close. I don't know. June Lei talked about them like it was past, but how far in the past? Ten years? Last week? Captain, I'm feeling all mixed up right now. Could we maybe head to the Groundbreaker? Get some drinks at that bar there? Lost Hope? Thanks, Captain. I'll be ready. Either of these salt cruisers ever So, how's 
does this work? Do we get a table, stand in a corner? This is Halcyon Dunes. We interrupt your- Hey Ellie, having your usuals? Not today, I'm on the job. Never thought I'd see the day. A new face. What's your pleasure, stranger? Okay, so... What are we drinking? You're the expert. Oh, and don't worry on the price. I got this. Let's just... Do it proper. Oh, beer. I guess, yeah, I can do that. Beer can be good. I bet. Bottoms up. Think of it like a fizzy tea that's gone a little off. Ah, this tastes like the underside of a boot. People drink that for fun? Oh, Captain, I'm pining for June like something fierce. What am I doing? Specifically. Definitely. Definitely specifically. Oh, oh, why'd I drink that? I mean, just with June Lay. I don't know what to do about us. Well, she talked about another girl, right? Isabel. Mentioned her by name and everything, like she wanted me to know. Maybe I've been making a right fool of myself this whole time. Maybe she's not interested after all. Exactly. Takes a lot of trust to hand over that kind of blackmail material. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd call it, uh, sensual. That's a lot. It was real long and rambly. She was telling me a story about her dad, how a lady named Isabel did all sorts of things to try to win his favor. This Isabel lady never quite managed to get her dad's approval, but they carried on anyways. Made something good out of a bad situation. Then it all went down the tubes. Do you think June Lay still has feelings for her? Thinking so makes me liable to lose my lunch, Captain. I never, I never done this before. A relationship. How do I know if she cares the same way I do? I, I need another drink. Right now. Before I lose my nerve. Law, no. That beer tasted like how Dad's old socks smelled. Maybe something sweet and mild, like wine. All right, whiskey. That smells like an unlawful union between paint thinner and propellant. Here we go. Oh, mm. Law, I'm gonna be sick. That, that's a crime is what that is. Oh, Captain, I wanna talk to June Lay all the time. Even about silly things, but I'm so scared. Figuring feelings ain't so easy as saying words, Captain. Someone so brave as you, well, you can't understand. Does she think I'm as pretty as I think she's handsome? What if she doesn't like me? What if she does? What if she's still got feelings for that lady, Isabel? What if we, we get together and she gets bored of me? Oh, there's nothing easy about, about spilling your guts to the person who's got your heart in their hands. You know I'm not interested in physical affection. That's... Well, it's tripped folks up in the past. Folks I thought cared about me for me. What if she's not okay with that? What if she is, but then later, she's not? What do you mean, Captain? 
So if I'm doing my very best to be kind and open-hearted, I shouldn't worry how she thinks of me? Gosh, I don't know that I got that in me. Sometimes I feel real mean inside, Captain. I think... ungenerous thoughts. Well, I suppose so, but... I, I want to be my best self for her. A good person, worth caring for. Well, Captain, this has been... This has been a whole lot. I got just... Wow. So much to think about. Do you think I should ask her on a... date? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do it! Right when we get back to the shit. Ship. I mean... Probably. Eventually. Thanks for hearing me out, and giving me counsel. And, well, <laughs> for being a friend. It means a whole lot. You're good people, Captain. This was fun. We should do it again after you send that message. Huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're real good friends, you know that? I wish... I wish there was a place we could all live quiet together. Come on, let's go. Where's your drink? from the last is down on 20. Captain, Felix and the Vicar are arguing again. Hey, Captain. I hope I wasn't too much bother at the bar. I did have fun. And I tried some things I never would have otherwise. Oh, that whiskey to give my headache and something fierce. Feels like a primal's chewing on my skull. I wouldn't mind having a drink again. Someday. In the distant future. Anyway. I messaged Jun Lei when we got back and she replied super quick. <clears throat> okay. I was awake half the night thinking about what I sent, anxious to see what you said. I reread my message in the morning, and it was unclear. I was drinking when I sent it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had the courage. Also, sorry for the typos. Oh, Ernest. It was Ernest. I've ruined things in the past because I didn't say things I should have, like, I've met someone who's become special to me. I want to be honest with her, so if she feels the same about me, there won't be any surprises. Hey now, you got free drinks out of it. I ought to go write her back. I mean, I already did. Twice. <laughs> but anyhow, thanks for taking me out, Captain. You might want to consider changing your clothes more often. Since when? Since the Rangers decided their eighth back should stay in the Wednesday zone. Come on, Felix. The Rangers threw that game. Good to see you, boss.
Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of a see you soon, Captain? Hello. Uh, why do you seem familiar? Have we met? Ah, yes. Very good. And have you done that? What a relief. You hold months of work in your hands. Anton would have just given them to Porter without a second thought. What a waste of potential that would have been. Hmm. Sadly true. Contraband does tend to fetch a high price among the colony's ne'er-do-wells. So be it. I'll buy them off of you. Much obliged. Here are your bids. Now, let's see here. Attach this, twist that, apply a little pressure, and... Voila! I can finally call this little side project complete. Thank the law. Oh. Hmm. I can't be caught with this. Uh, you take it. If R&D buys the schematics from me, perhaps I'll get you the first model, hot off the presses. I'll, uh, call you? Yes, I'll call you. I believe we have nothing further to discuss. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Can we talk? Good luck, Captain. Hey, be careful with those crates, huh?
those purple berry nuts. Have you had a moment to look into that little opportunity I told you about on Roseway? You don't hurry up. Someone will get to snooping around there before you do. What's that? Speak up now. What'd you turn up? Well, that's just... Just swell, sweetheart. Good for you. A shame you didn't visit old Gladys first. That would have fetched a good price. I may have thrown in a patch of my famous sugar cookies just to sweeten the deal. If Auntie Cleo's exporting wraps from Monarch, golly me, someone's going to be in the soup when they get caught. Bless your slippery little fingers. Isn't that just a shame? Prototype schematics go for a fair handful of bits around here. Darnation. It sounded like a gold mine, but maybe that's just my old hopes getting in the way. I suppose it can't be helped. Law bless you for doing the legwork, sweetie. Don't forget your pal Gladys now. You can come visit any time. What do you want then? My hard-earned wisdom? Any time. If you're here for this week's magazine club, fantastic. Do be careful with it, dear, as these keys tend to be a tad hard to acquire. You should have a chat with Lilia Hagen in the sublight offices. She's a dear. You'll love her. Now, was there anything else? I found a handsome ceramic manta pillar at a sub. Hey boss, if you need a tour guide, I've seen all 12 episodes of Terror on Monarch. Kind of an expert. As long as there's paying work, you can count me in. Were I a gambling woman, I'd wager you're responsible for my mechanical safe return. I can't thank you enough. Sublight. The legitimate smuggling business. I wonder if they got some type of secret handshake. Welcome to Sublight Salvage and Shipping, a legitimate business for legitimate consumers. You the one flying the unreliable? Miss Lily has been expecting you. I'll unlock the door. Hey, Doc Fenhill. Glad to see you ain't moved on from Groundbreaker yet. Hey, Tobias. How's the leg? Good as you left it, ma'am. Still bends and everything. Took some extra lead while I was on a job. Ellie here patching me up good. 
The other guy thought his ship was perfectly operational. I told him it was salvage. We disagreed. I won. Workplace hazards, Captain. Pretty routine around here. Sure am. A few years back, they got me started on simple acquisitions. You know those latches they put on cargo bays ain't worth a damn? These days, I stick to HQ and look after Miss Lilia. So you're the new captain in town. I was hoping you'd make your way to my office. Saves me the work of hunting you down. Lilia Hagen, CEO and Executive Director of Aggressive Operations. I'm guessing you already know about Sublight, otherwise you wouldn't have come. Charmed. It's nice to see the unreliable again. Useful ship. Hawthorne was my contractor. I'd recognize that leaky boat of his anywhere. Is Ada still at the helm? I don't know how many times I told Hawthorne to restore that smartass to factory settings. I have a salvage job for someone light on corporate ties with a reliable set of wings. But there's a catch. Does this make us sublight agents now? If you have a nav key to Stellar Bay, the job's yours. Interested? One of my guys in Stellar Bay has a lead on some high-grade salvage, but he went dark before he could spill the goods. We arranged a drop at the Saltuna Warehouse's loading dock. Find whatever he left there and take it to Fallbrook. My gal Catherine will be expecting you. A few of my contractors run flights in there and out again, working around the board embargo. We keep the community lubricated with a steady supply of booze and unconventional erotica. Byzantium kids with more money than sense can thank Sublight for their good time. One of my guys filmed a Raptodon grinding on an auto mech. Didn't end well for anyone, including the cameraman. When the board pulled out of Monarch, they buried or sealed anything they couldn't carry off-world. Apparently, one of Catherine's teams uncovered an abandoned lab with full tanks of Alta Vitae gas. It's exactly one million bits per cubic meter. Before you get too excited, the only thing rarer than Alta Vitae gas is a reliable buyer. Dangerous stuff. Acid for the nucleon in your cells. It's no good to anyone outside of a lab. But it can be a lot of fun, if you don't mind the possibility of rewiring your body on an atomic level. You and I have different notions of fun, Dr. Fenhill. Now get going. Catherine will brief you on the details when you check in with her at Fallbrook. One last thing. When you're on the job, keep a pair of eyes in the back of your head. Understood? Could be. You'll do fine. Probably nothing to worry about. Probably. Good enough for me. Felix Millstone, sublight agent. I like the sound of that. Crew members Ellie and Max are engaged in a heated discussion in the kitchen. Welcome back, Captain. Now that you have acquired a nav key to Stellar Bay, would you like me to contact Dr. Wells? 
Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? I certainly wouldn't call it boring, especially if your idea of fun involves navigating a hostile biosphere populated by carnivorous monsters. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Neoka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Come see me in my lab. I'll answer any questions you have. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. We have successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain. And we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself? Or would you like to do the honors? Hello? Can you hear me? Does this work? Oh, damn it! Blast, that's loud! I'm just securing my ongoing experiments. And securing myself. Mine the mess. Uh, I haven't had a visitor since... Uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor. if you're into that sort of thing. So, welcome. Make yourself at home. My secret hideout is your secret hideout. Not at all, my intrepid accomplice. I should thank you for tolerating my somewhat brusque manner. I only regret that I couldn't save more of your fellow settlers, what with being hunted by the board. And emptying my supply of necessary chemicals. Of course. What's on your mind? Oh, it's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless, it's quite comfortable in here, you know. I have my beans, have my caffeinoids, plenty of toilet paper. Absolutely. Let's talk. No, and I've been trying very hard to avoid making eye contact. Fine-looking hideout you got here. My name's Felix, by the way. Wait, not another word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know who you are. Let's just enjoy our plausible deniability while it lasts, shall we? Why don't you just invite the entire colony to my secret, carefully concealed laboratory? It isn't as if I wanted privacy. Oh, fine. As long as you're vouching for their character and they aren't touching things. For what it's worth, I am pleased that you found a crew, such as they are. You're a talented scientist, after all. Our kind has always been incredibly popular. That's odd. I'm at least 65% certain my tone was sufficiently sincere. Uh, perhaps the glass is distorting my voice. 
Must look into that. What's on your mind? Absolutely. Let's talk. I hope you're not thinking of ingratiating yourself with the board. Chairman Rockwell and his cronies are not your friends. They might tempt you with promises of wealth, but don't be fooled. What's on your mind? Absolutely. Let's... Oh, goodness, no. I wouldn't survive ten seconds in the blackness of the Aether. Well, no, I imagine I'd last at least twelve seconds before I'd lose consciousness and die of hypoxia. Life outside work? No, of course not. My life is my work. For that matter, everyone else's lives are also my work. An entire colony's worth of lives are at stake. It's up to me, uh, up to us, to set things right. To answer your question, I'd rather stay right here in my lab. There's too much work to be done. The Hope's colonists won't revive themselves, you know. Because we've lost our way, the board has a stranglehold over this colony. And we've all been conditioned into total obedience. The Hope is full of specialists, scientists, engineers, talented individuals like you. And people who haven't been corrupted by the board. Unfortunately, the Hope's colonists have been frozen for decades, well past your shelf life, so to speak. No offense. Ah, you begin to perceive the truth. Yes, according to the board and their narrow-minded scientists, you should be a pile of organic sludge right now. Ten years. That's how long the average human can remain in hibernation. You were frozen for decades. In theory, you never should have survived the revival process. But the conventional theories are wrong. You're living proof that it can be done. There's yet hope for the hope. Get it? We'll do our very best to save them all. I'd best get back to work. Oh, I can feel my last dose of caffeinoid fading. If you stop in the engine room, would you ask Parvati to send Sam down to the bridge? We're now in orbit of a stellar bay, Captain.
Hey, hold on there. I gotta sign you in. And the little bastard's slippery, right? On account of its blood, so it's, it's sliding all over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the, tell the blood from the mud. But I gotta get in there, get right in that baby rap's stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I, shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there. Right, what are you staring, wait, you ain't from around here, who are you? Name's Nioka. I'm the best big game hunter on the planet. You're also the loudest big game hunter on the planet. And the drunkest. Shut the fu- Fair point. I deserve it, though. On account of being the best. You're a hunter? You ever killed a rapt with your bare hands? Matter of fact, I was just regaling our drink master here of a time when a baby rap snatched an heirloom of mine. I had to chase it halfway to Fallbrook. When I finally caught it, I was so mad I tore its jaw clean off. Reached in, wrenched my medallion from its belly. Caught me an awful burn. But I'd say it was worth it. A burn? You were disfigured? That rap leave you with some sort of grisly-looking scar? Hey, now. Woman's gotta have her secrets. Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass, wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's, let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. More than you have, I suspect. I plan to sit here and drink until I find myself awoken sober. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? Well, well. Isn't often we see new folk in Stellar Bay. First drinks on me, stranger. Enjoy. If you plan on sitting through Nioka's stories, you might could use a few. I could use a few and tell it myself. Now what can I do for you? Velma seem out of sorts to you? It's always great. If Velma's capable of running the warehouse, she can certainly pick up her own caffeinoid. Don't be so hard on her. With Brax missing, she's working doubles and needs a little edge. Very well, dearie. But you stop by any time you like, hmm? Thanks, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. 
And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. Quite the bedside manner, lady. Well, it's so rare I get the pleasure of new company. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? And what a helpful young man you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Whiskey helps, too. Please leave medical advice to the professionals. Now, dearie, who's this pickup for? I'm so sorry, but with the iconoclasts and the marauder filth chasing away what little trade we get, I'm afraid I have to reserve my supply for Stellar Bay residents. Our reserves have gotten so low, I've even had to start locking the supply room upstairs. Isn't it a shame what some people will do to get a little extra? Except for you. I can tell. You've got one of those faces. I'd make an exception for you if I could, my little cherub. Is there anyone else needing a special pickup from Auntie Abigail? Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI. Contribute like the rest of us. Now I've gone and said too much. <laughs> and you know me, dearie. I don't like to pry. If so, I would love to know where. Sublight supplies don't come cheap. I'd hope not. Fleecing's the mark of a real professional. Believe me, there's nothing I'd love better than to help you, but there's not much I can do. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. Oh, you flatter an old woman. Me, I'm just here to be a pretty face for the customers. And to keep an extra key to the supply room for all the times Dr. Williams misplaced his. The one upstairs, where we store our medicines. In the town graveyard, I'm afraid. Poor man was always searching for the Flower of Enlightenment. On the way, he tried some... rather daring substance combinations. The graveyard's near the southern ruins. You're certainly welcome to pay our respects, but the bodies tend to attract beasties. Are gonna go tussle with some raptodons? Because I've been practicing my dropkick. Do be careful. I'd hate for anything to happen to you, dearie. Chin up, dearie. I'll keep it down. Wrap musk and painted eyes, right Please, here. Please, will someone help me? My boy's in trouble. Oh, thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. It's more dissolving than melting. 
That is not helpful. Oh, I just knew you were a good person. Agnes, I said, this is the man to save your little Tucky. And I was right. He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs, and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools, and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Please, won't you go and find my boy? Well, I, I, I guess I can't ask you to leave the town walls for free. It is deathly dangerous out there. I've got some bits saved up for a rainy day. I'll give you every last one if you just bring my Tucker back to me. I won't even be mad at him running off. You tell him I, I won't be mad. He's been pining for an adventure. Says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him. A raptodon would snap him up first chance it got. I just know one's ripped his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. He's been listening to those awful broadcasts that the iconoclasts put out. I begged Sanjar to put a stop to them, but did he? No. And now I just know my boys run off to Amber Heights. That is, if a Manta Queen hasn't spooled out and eaten his entrails for breakfast already. Those low-life degenerates leading innocent boys into a life of danger. Oh, they make it sound so exciting. Like it's noble to risk it all out there fighting for the greater good. Not sure I'm seeing the problem here. You're one of them, aren't you? You should be ashamed of yourself, young man. Just as your mama would be. How noble is it to worry your loved ones? Not at all, I say. But still they preach their sermons of anarchy and rebellion to anyone who listen. If they weren't holed up in Amber Heights, I'd knock them all upside the head. That old settlement, southwest of Stellar Bay. I don't know which is worse, the thought of my son shacking up with the nutty iconoclasts. Or that he never made it. Sprats could be nesting in his rotting body alongside the road as we speak. Or, or maybe Marauders got him, pulled all his teeth out, crushed him into their drugs and made him snort him. Oh, the things that could happen to my sweet baby. Thank you. Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclasts indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouths. Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. me of the crew cabin on one of my first ships. We gotta go exploring. I wanna see some savages.
Think they left anything good behind? Exploring some ruins, killing some monsters. All we're missing is theme music. Here they come! <laughs> I always wanted to visit Stellar Bay. Taking the sights, the sounds, the... Wait, what's that smell? Am I the only one getting hungry? Charmer, welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above? Says someone who's never had any fun. Exactly. See, I'm glad someone on your crew's got some sense sensible, got her head on straight. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. That was fast. I gotta see about stalking some on the ship. You be careful. The first one's free. After that, they'll offer you gainful employment. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. Mighty big gun you got there. I'm looking forward to seeing you use it. 
That's a pretty big gun for a hunter. I don't know what the game's like on Terra 2, but out here, the daintier weapons ain't gonna cut it. Manasaurs require stopping power. Yeah, but what's left after you're done with them? I shipped with a Merc who had a gun like yours, Nyoka. He polished it, sang to it, slept with it. Not like that, as far as I know. Sounds like he had himself a discerning palate. Where are you going with this? He couldn't hit the broadside of an assault cruiser, hence the tin shredder. Wouldn't be the first man I met bearing compensation for his lack of skill. Captain, let's talk. Hey, got a favor to ask you. Figure while we're out here in the wilderness anyhow, we might stop in on an old friend of mine. Preferably before we get to Hiram's. It's on the way, don't worry. You don't seem the type to run off and get yourself killed, and I could use the help. Well, we'll see about that. I'll be up front with you. I hate asking for help. I hate it. Every time I give someone the opportunity to disappoint me, they seem to make it their most immediate goal. But this, what I'm thinking, it's dangerous. Nothing I can't, we can't handle. I used to run with a band of hunters, friends, six of us. We were on Monarch when the corporations pulled out and we helped a lot of people pick up the pieces. I haven't seen two of them in years and the rest I know to be dead. I'd like to gather their effects and bury them all in the same places, like the family we once were. I saw it happen. Hell, one of them was in my arms at the time. His name was Hayes, and he's our first stop. I buried him away from our encampment. I'll show you where he rests. He had a medallion in his effects. That's what I'll bring home to bury. A long time ago, we built an encampment in one of Monarch's cave systems. Trouble is, a mana queen showed up and kicked us all out. If we can find Rebecca and Anders, they'll know how to lure her out. Then, we kill the bitch and bury everyone's medallions together. <laughs> Thanks, Cap. Good old Stellar Bay. Only place on the planet that don't stink of sulfur. On account of it stinking like fish instead.
Watch your feet. The sulfur pools don't just stink. They'll take a toe off.
South here, off the road and down this slope. We've got a decent trek ahead of us. are burnt. I guess people did this, not the wilds. Take my reputation on this being an ambush. Bunch of amateurs. Sublight should have seen this coming.
Fallbrook's on the other side of the bridge there if you need a drink. We're only halfway to the mountain, so might consider stopping in. Well, hello, and welcome to the home of the Iconoclasts. I'm Rose. Please, take a pamphlet. In it, you'll find everything you need to know about Graham, his philosophist truths, and the Iconoclast way. He wrote it himself, you know. Oh, oh no, I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting we're out of pamphlets. Gosh, blast it. Why, we're the only free people in Halcyon. No corporations, no shackles, no problems. Oh, those are just hurdles. We deal with them as they come. You're welcome to stay with us, so long as you can earn your keep. That's a nice way to think about it. Graham would be our father. I suppose Zora might make a good mother if the two of them could stop arguing. You can think of those two as our leaders, but they're more like... examples. We all ought to be more like them. The new boy! Yes, he's quite clever. He took to our teachings very quickly. Last I saw him, he was headed into one of the buildings up the hill. I ought to mention, the Iconoclasts are loyal folk. Treat them right, they'll do the same. Turn on them, they'll open fire without a second thought. Right. How many good folk are we gonna lose to our missions? That's just the way of it. We gotta earn our keep out That don't mean we ought to be following her into the jaws of a manticle. You'd rather <laughs> sit on your thumb? <laughs> Looks like I'm not the only new face around here. What do I call you, stranger? Welcome to Amber Heights, Captain. Call me Tucker. You here to join the Iconoclasts? Help us free this world? I am not a little boy. Haven't been one for decades, no matter what my mama wishes. I take it she's still looking for me? Had hoped she'd accept my decision. According to her, stepping foot outside of the house in broad daylight is too dangerous. My entire life, she crammed a fear of danger down my throat. Don't go play with friends. Mantasaurs will tear your arms off. Don't leave the city. Raptodons will spit acid on your face. Marauders can violate you. You'd fall in a sulfur pool. I stuck around way too long, ruled by her fears. I'm 42 years old, but she still sees me as a little boy in need of her protection. I won't stand for it, I tell you. Stars, I don't know. My mama's a stubborn woman. She won't quit until I'm dead. You know, that might just work. You go back and tell her you found my body beside the road, all mangled and tore up. If she believes me dead, she won't look for me no more. I hate to think of her grieving, but it'll be good for her to move on. In the long run, you know? Oh, right. Uh, I guess you could take my daddy's ring. I've worn it ever since he died. Mama would recognize it right away. You take this back to Stellar Bay. Tell my mama I died and you found that on my body. I know it'll be hard on her, but it's the only way. Well met, Captain. What do you need? What from the yoke of corporate tyranny? 
It's what all us Iconoclasts strive for, with Graham at the helm. We want unfettered freedom, not the lies that MSI tries to sell in Stellar Bay. True escape from all rules and constraints. You want to know more? Listen to Graham's broadcasts. He's been talking up a storm, working to elevate the minds of all the corporate drones in this colony, getting them to rise up. See, that's what the corps want you to think. If you think rules are needed, they can force any and all they want down your throat, and you'll just swallow it. You need to talk to Graham. He'll help you find the truth amongst the lies that are living in your brain. As you were. Yeah, we felled it, mind. But we lost two runners and five gun hands. A total failure, then. So much for the ruins. And hell only knows where the Van Oys are. They never showed. I'm sure they're... Ah, let's talk later. It seems we have company. Hey. A stranger comes to our home. If you're looking for a path to walk, you've found one. If you're looking for a teacher, I am one. Welcome to the Iconoclasts. Shed the trappings of a materialistic life, Captain. You'll find your soul much less burdened. Also, we're broke. Yes. If we were meant to enjoy the things that glitter and shine, the universe would provide them. No, no, no. There's a difference. Come back for a meditation session later. The peace will clear your mind. And I shudder to think how wasteful we used to be before we were abandoned. Hear, hear. You're from Cascadia, right? I still find empty Rizzo bottles in the river. Ugh. In fairness, I get my right tit for a pallet of ice-cold spectrum right now. Zora! Do not encourage the very habits that the eternal truth has finally steered us away from. Now, why have you come? If I never smell another raft, it'll be too soon. Weren't you a sawbones? Figured you ought to have smelled worse. Sure, but those things reek like bad cologne. It's different. I'm with you there. Incoming!
Where were we? Look northwest. That ain't it, but marauders sometimes camp inside the buildings there. Steer clear unless you fancy getting shot. Westbound still. I'll let you know when we can start ascending. We're doing Sneaky. I call this Rotting River, on account of all the dead things I've thrown in it over the years. It'll take you into the Devil's Peak Caverns if you follow it under the bridge. That's one option. Others the slope up. If you're up for some fun, let's chat. The cave's back in the safe. Here we 
Wraps. Let's clear this sulfur sodden fucks out so Hayes can rest in peace. Go! 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 You got him! Go! 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 They won't try that again. Hayes was the best self-sacrificing son of a saint I ever met. Halcyon is worse off without him. Now, if we're gonna lure the Manta Queen out, we'll need to find Rebecca and Anders. They took a UDL contract on Terra 2. We never heard from them again. Think it's time I call in a favor with Hiram. If anyone can track them down, it's him. The Queen ain't just gonna come out on her own. She'll have dug tunnels into the mountain. I've got theories about how to lure her out, but Anders would know for sure. I don't know much about it. It paid well, so they took it. They said they'd be back in a couple of weeks and that maybe we could all use the money to get off Monarch. That was a long time ago. I should have. I, I really should have. But soon after they left, Hayes and the others died. And to be honest, after him, I... I stopped trying, because it hurt like hell to do so. Thanks. I'm still not convinced I won't come to regret it, but we've started down this path. Might as well see it through. Maybe it'll stop me screaming at night. Now come on, let's make tracks before Hiram dies of old age. Unfiltered air, rocks in my shoes, risky choke points, all the things I hate about mountains. It is a trek, isn't it? Almost like we don't have working lifts or roads. Look up. That makeshift bridge, we gotta cross it. First we go under, then hook around to the left, then up and over. Go! 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 Go!
Tunnel here. That's a big one. We can tiptoe around to the left or go in guns blazing. Up to you. I vote the latter. I'll get him. Boy, take you! That assist was a violation of corporate law if I ever saw one. Since it was to my benefit, and we're largely in lawless lands, I'll look the other way. C3 owes you one, stranger. You haven't seen Constance, have you? Ah, there's her torso. And better be her legs over yonder, never mind. I'm Bertold. What in the void are you thinking, creeping around a mana queen like that? At the time, I was thinking... Please don't see me, oh law, I don't want to die, nah nah nah. Now I'm thinking it was stupid to come in here. Killing marauders and hooligans, as I am handsomely paid to do. Of course, as me and Constance discovered, they ain't the only forms of life inhabiting these caverns. I owe you a debt for saving my neck, stranger, and I mean to pay it. There's a station up the way, it's where my C3s are posted. We can talk more there where it's safe. I'll be on my way, once I've gathered up Constance's parts.
And here we are. Told you we'd make it in one piece. Station ain't too far now. Hey, Mana Queen Slayer. Glad you made it in one piece. After all, not everyone's so lucky. Meet my corporate compliance crew. Then check out our weapons locker inside. I reckon you'll find something you like. Then we call it even between us. We were hired to do so, why else? You did get the memo that we're mercenaries. Our client's a bit unorthodox, sure. He calls himself the broker, and prefers the glow of a terminal to flesh and blood interaction. But I can't fault his work ethic. Our current gig's to stop, by means of lethal force, any creatures exiting the caverns, including but not limited to marauders, iconoclasts, and agents operating for the MSI. The corporate model is the oldest and most efficient, not to mention stable structure history has ever shown us. Plus, corporations got certain rights, not entailed to individuals. I lead the C3s. Addy covers our payroll and expenditures, Lance handles the human capital, and Donald is our charming public face. Our system works. We've racked up more confirmed kills than any other crew you can hire. Can't imagine the competition. The best is the best, lady. That's all there is to it. You drive a hard bargain, Manic Queen Slayer. It don't make much financial sense for C3 to expend resources on any killing beyond the contract stipulations. As the Marauders didn't enter from the caves, the requirements are... Mm, murky. At the same time, we do want to keep our client alive. Until the payment's cleared. We recommended the client safeguard himself, so I don't expect that the main doors will be accessible. Find a way to open them, and we'll clear any hostiles on the inside. I'd best radio ahead for Joy and Hudson to prep for us. They'll be at the station entrance, ready with our finest auto mechanicals to assist you. C3s, prepare to move out. We're locked and loaded. Joy and Hudson know you're coming.
Hiram must have sealed the door. He's... he spooks easy. by Marauder? And you, Nioka, what are you doing lugging a stranger into my station? You could use the socialization, you son of a bitch. Also, he hired me. To what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders, running out of purpleberry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. No, no, no. We'll deal with information-related business later. As I said, there are bigger problems threatening my life and livelihood at this very moment. The Marauders want me dead. And since my hired hands have clearly turned idle, it appears I need you to clear out the threat. As my newest contractor, you may call me... The Broker. Or we can call you Hiram, on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of The Broker being a dumbass alternative. Aside from you. You're here, and you're armed, aren't you? 
The feed's gone grainy, but it looks like you're packing deadly force. I know Nioka is, for sure. I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. Too many, considering I hired a bunch of no-good mercs to keep them out in the first place. Already, they've caused considerable damage to the station's property. If they take down the broadcast equipment, I'll be out of a job, permanently. Aside from the bits I'll be paying you, you said you wanted something from me, something information-related. I'll give it to you, in person, once I'm safe. Hey, elevators to your right. Get ready. C3 is entering through the main doors as we speak. About damn time. Something's not right. What? I'll find you! Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. And you got me my money's worth out of the C3s. I ought to have simply dealt with you in the first place. Hmm, yes, I believe I do. This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit... I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? Ah yes, our little chat on the intercom. You're looking for the premier broker for all of Monarch. Which you knew was me, clearly. Phineas must have sent you. He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts, always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. Careful, I know that line. I use it all the time. I take offense to that. Look, okay. Just, it might take me a while this time. I am awaiting but a single incoming transmission containing the information we desire. But MSI and the Iconoclasts are clogging the airwaves from Stellar Bay and Amber Heights. In their war against each other, they're scrambling each other's outgoing transmissions. Exactly what I was thinking. They hurt us all with their pettiness which of course has inadvertently affected the incoming port and my livelihood. 
No, they're jamming the limited frequencies we have at our disposal. Nothing extraplanetary can get in or out until the frequency pollution thins out. The safest bet is to convince Graham and Sanjar to stop transmitting on their end. My former partner, Sanjar, transmits from his office in MSI's headquarters in the center of town. Don't let him try to fool you. While his messages might seem like gibberish, they are in reality coded business orders to off-world companies. I understand why he needs the bandwidth, but we had a deal and he's broadcasting ceaselessly. Amber Heights is one of the only surviving settlements outside of Stellar Bay. Graham Bryant and the Iconoclast there got their hands on a working relay station. Now they're ceaselessly transmitting philosophist ramblings on my airwaves. Graham and his Iconoclast believe anarchy is the way of life. Sanjar opposes it as he's taking strides to corporatize Stellar Bay. Do what you like. Just don't tell me about it after. I enjoy sleeping at night. Oh, great. I love doing pro bono work for friends. Aw, you called us friends. I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time it's important. Important to you is not the same as important to me. Although I do recognize that you may have earned some goodwill during your months laboring for me. Whoa, hey, there is zero need for violence in this station. Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wattsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to ship, and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra, too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, it would have been for creature clearing purposes round one of their spacer's choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. Is that a trick question? Because to answer it, you'd need to pay me. Of course, I could offer you a vastly more interesting bit of data instead. Try me. Ask me anything you'd like. I'll even offer it for free. We'll call it an exchange for your help with the broadcasts. Ask me what you will. There are so many members. Do specify. If you try to cite me on this, I will deny, deny, deny. Do you understand? What I am about to reveal is the sort of information that gets a body disappeared. MSI's ownership of Monarch is technically legal, but it would give MSI too much power on the board to grant them such status. That the chairman is politically motivated to keep Monarch from being re-recognized as a legal part of the colony, and his actions as a result are highly illegal. And that is all you will get from me regarding such a deadly piece of data. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. They are a curious lot. Insufferable. And short-sighted, too. What else do you wish to know? Sanjar is not actually at fault for his past performance reviews, but he can keep hunting for loopholes to get back on the board for the next century. He'll never be reinstated. Not in his lifetime. For Nebula's sake, even with the loophole I gave him, he's only in charge of MSI because every other exec died during the massacre at Amber Heights. I gave Sanjar and Graham legal information that would allow MSI to own Terra One once the other corporations had abandoned the planet. The execs had their concerns, but before the matter could be resolved, pirates raided their homes in the night. Some say Graham suffers from nightmares that leave him sweat-drenched and screaming. I would assume it stems from the friends and family he lost in Amber Heights all those years ago. You mean between MSI, the Iconoclasts, and myself? I bet neither of those megalomaniacs told you I was the true mastermind behind Monarch. Back when the colony was still Terra One and corporations were abandoning us left and right, I'm the one who approached Sanjar and Graham with the means to our salvation. I offered them a legal way to take control of the planet. If MSI were the only corporation here, they could claim sole ownership. Precisely. 
Without me, they never would have done more than play revolution in hushed whispers over scuzzy kale ales in the tavern. Thus, the bargain was struck. They could run MSI while I would operate Devil's Peak Station. Unfortunately, relations have soured over time. Competing ideologies. Graham believes Sanjar has become corrupted by the corporate lifestyle, that he is now similar to the original corporate executives they sought to reform. And Sanjar has learned the hard way that Graham is quite morally... gray. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. Not much, admittedly. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. As far as what's between us, I mean. Outside of that, well, that's a raptodon of another color. I do know this much. There is a sharper side to the good scientist than you'd expect. If allegations are to be believed, the experiments he conducts for the greater good are in fact treasonous and for self-gain. I am not convinced as to the validity of these allegations, considering the source, but I am also not unconvinced either. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of in- What? No. Why would I go out of my way to intercept messages from Earth? There's no market for them. No buyer means it's not worth my time. Now, if you wanted me to intercept a certain one, that might be worth it for the right price. How low you seemingly regard my trade. Nioka, pick me up some stimu lotion and a bottle of purple berry wine when you're next in Stellar Bay. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me.
Cecilia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? What a charming notion. One doesn't meet many free spirits in Alcyon. Not outside Tartarus prison, anyway. Forgive me, I'd be positively enraptured. Only, I take it this means you aren't here for Saltuna. Yes, that's it. Channel your anger. I only wish I could do the same. <laughs> I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. What can I do for you? You think we're the problem? Have you even heard the nonsense Graham is spewing? It isn't easy keeping a town like Stellar Bay afloat, especially without the board's backing. We need that frequency to reach our trading partners. My, you know how to take control of a situation, don't you? It's warm in here. Is anyone else warm? What he means to say is that we'll happily oblige. But first, we need your help with the plan to get MSI restored to the board. It's a two-pronged approach. The first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. And a Mantisaur problem. And a Marauder problem. Many, many problems, but they can all be solved with a Bolt 52 cartridge. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting with the Bolt 52, we won't need to advertise anymore. We can stop our transmissions altogether. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon, an extremely powerful ordinance. Never realized fighting the bureaucracy could be this interesting. It is quite the rush. In the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in, these days it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. You see what I have to deal with? For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. But back then, it was known as Terra 1. Really? I always thought they were refreshingly straightforward names. After all, the whole point of terraforming was to make them Earth-like. Here, though, the results were... mixed. That ain't fair. They didn't leave on account of the hazards. They left on account of their cowardice. The hazards just gave them a reason to put to paper. Sharp as ever, Nyoka. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. MSI's leadership at the time certainly thought so. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. Ah! So you've heard about our prior... acquaintance. It was a lapse in judgment on my part, and one I'm not keen to recall. Graham seemed like a reasonable man years ago. 
We both agreed that MSI's treatment of its workers was untenable. I thought reforms would be enough. I didn't realize you wanted to abolish the corporate system entirely. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, that'd go a long way toward rebuilding our homes. If you can't beat him, might as well join him and reach into their pockets. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Don't get ahead of yourself, sir. Yes, yes, it'll be easier to explain once we have the Bolt 52. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. What can I do for you? Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptodon acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. Oh, I don't need any of it. It's also I can talk to Sebastian. He doesn't get going about much else. Sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. I couldn't! What if he says no? Hey! Maybe you could ask him for me. I, I mean, a no would still be bad, but it won't be quite as embarrassing if you ask. Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. Good to have standards, I guess. I know what I'm looking for. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Sebastian, you ever get your hands on those pheromone sacks? Manipillers ain't gonna hunt themselves, you know. I must have hunted a dozen, but I couldn't find a single sack on any of them. I must be looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Manipillers ain't got pheromone sacks. I just told him that so he'd stop asking me for advice. At least I'm getting a good haul of claws in the process. You're in good hands, traveling with Monarch's top merc. Still, if you want any rat glands or manti claws, I've got you covered. Huh, I haven't seen her in a few days, but I've been meaning to ask her how that raptid on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Nice of you to say. I like her too. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Don't get me wrong, I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady, always talks nice and slow so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit. 
on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. Nuh-uh. A lot of people think I'm not too bright, but you're not fooling me. I know she can't get these goods anywhere else. Come on, that's crazy. No one would do that. You don't think she'd look elsewhere. Maybe I should spend some extra time with her for uh, customer relations. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia? I've secretly been waiting for this, or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry, if I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you. I hear those rich people in Byzantium pay a handsome bit for that. It's more attractive for you know. Trust me, no one's going near you. Hey, Velma, I got your cathedral in pills. Tell me, you found my baby boy. Where is he? Where's my little Tucker? What are you saying? That, that doesn't make any sense. Why would my little boy say that? Easier? Thinking my little boy was dead would be easier? On who? This doesn't sound like my Tucker at all. How do I know you're not lying? I've been worrying myself sick. And he's lounging in a bar? He wants me to think he's dead while he's partying with them iconoclasts? I need to think about this. I don't understand how it's all gone so wrong. Here's the reward I promised. Please, just leave me in peace.
Captain, if you're looking for crew members Ellie or Felix, they're sharing a drink upstairs. So then I says, fine, I'll pay you back for all of it, with interest. Nice one. You must have had them quaking in their heels. I mean, I wasn't really gonna do it. I just wanted to make them feel bad. Pay you back with interest. I gotta remember that one. Would have felt better if it had worked. Make yourself at home, Captain. You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts.
Only things you'll find in the ruins are liable. Here they come! <laughs> nice hit! Libations on me, folks! scavenging here and a Mad Queen showed up, then wrapped it on. It was a void blast mess. I ran in here and um now the door's locked. Little help? It's easier than it sounds, alright? Next time you get chased by Raptodons, you let me know the rationality of your decisions. Buddy had a key, but I ain't heard him in a while. He 
locked me in gear and took off. Probably got munched. So look for a dead guy, I guess. Or a rat. Maybe it's in a rat belly. Gross. Thank you so much. It was getting all stuffy in there, and I was getting a mite lightheaded, and I think maybe I was gonna die. Now I'm out here, and I'm headed back to Amber Heights. Still landing yourself in trouble, eh, Hux? Oh, hi, Mioka. Um, you mind giving me an escort back home? I'm... Oh, you're traveling with someone. Never mind. I ain't got nothing on me. How's about a heaping helping of appreciation and respect? Ah, shit. I wouldn't have agreed to be saved if I'd known that. All right, here. Oh, sure, I'm a runner. I'm used to getting all dizzy and... <laughs> hey, who's your identical, slightly blurry friend? Thanks a lot, mister. We're done here. See you've had a sobering effect on our friend Nioka. Sir, please stop. Forgive me, Celia. I couldn't help myself. Anyway, what can I do for you? You weren't supposed to look. I asked you to delete it. I didn't mean for any harm to come to you. This has been my albatross. The great shame of my career. I give MSI everything. My work, my youth, my left kidney, and for years, I was a joke to them. Ugh, one of the executives required a transplant. He's lucky they didn't want a liver or a heart. I thought volunteering to donate might improve my prospects. No, I am a company man. Oh, perhaps they were right. After all, what have I built? 
Stellar Bay is barely keeping afloat. I hadn't thought of it that way. But perhaps there's something to that. Thank you for that. Or was there something else? Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. But that's exactly what this is. The world isn't changed with guns and speeches, much as Graham and his followers would like to think, but rather with meticulous documentation. And the bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 is one of the most formidable pieces of data entry in all of Halcyon. One false stroke can invalidate the entire document. It's true. One of the old execs gave herself a stroke trying to fill out the exemption section. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. See, that doesn't even make sense. This is an electronic form. We don't need paperweights. Hardly the point, sir. Or me. Perhaps you should explain the second part of the plan, sir. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch, illegally and in secret. Really? Most of the time they do illegal stuff out in the open. Cheaper that way. If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. Already? <laughs> if only the rest of the colony operated as efficiently as you. Imagine what a different state we'd be in, hmm? I'll complete the Bolt 52 in no time. I dare say it'll be my second greatest achievement after the reformations. You're getting ahead of yourself again. So I am. Do you have this cartridge? I'm working on a plan to reorganize the board. Slowly, peacefully, and with meticulous documentation. I don't know what you think you're going to accomplish. I'd just as soon reorganize it into itty-bitty pieces with a really big gun, but you just keep being you. You can't build anything that way. What's the point? It's fun. Nonsense! There's nothing more invigorating than a well-developed ten-year plan. But truly, I am getting ahead of myself. First, I need to submit the Bolt 52. With that data you're holding, of course. I knew there was something going on. This is exactly the proof we need. The board will have to welcome us back now. I'll transmit this data along with the completed Bolt 52 right away. After that, we'll sit back and quietly wait for the board to respond. That means no more broadcasts from us. Mighty big of you. Suppose we'll have to see if Graham's able to do the same. Believe me, you've got your work cut out for you there. Was there anything else? Never change. The folks in Amber Heights always manage to find a bottle or two of the good stuff. Keen scavengers, I tell you.
Mioka, I can smell you're having fun. Stop. No. Spreading the truth is the only way to combat the board's poisonous campaign of propaganda against their people. They can't be everywhere at once. Surely there are radios that still catch our message here and there. Surely. Graham, we should be focusing on survival anyway. Food, ammo, and medicine. Maybe now's the time to pivot. Pivot, huh? If radio isn't working, we might try another way. It seems the captain's timing is more than just serendipitous. It must be fate. I've had my sights on an old printing press for some time. The board uses magazines and advertisements to subtly focus the colony's attention. We will use their tricks against them. Wait, that's not what I meant. Help me clear out and repair the press, and I will have no need for that rust bucket of a radio tower. Might actually have better reach. People read that stuff all over the system, even in Byzantium. You see, citizens of Halcyon are glued to their periodicals. Even I find myself occasionally distracted by their positively shameful quality of editing and unacceptable disregard for grammatical structure. My literary prowess will hook them and the eternal truth will reel them in. I may have worked in the presses once, but the bitterness of being slave to their abhorrent rules has long since vanished. All right, almost vanished. Can you believe they don't put a comma after the final item in a series? Bastards. Wonderful. I requisitioned replacement rollers for it some time ago. Huxley should have delivered them yesterday. Speaking of which, where is Huxley? You bought rollers? You haven't even cleared the wraps out yet. What are you doing wasting bits on... Forget it. Huxley's still recovering. She won't be up for a run for a while yet. It seems we're out a runner. If you intend to help our cause, I'll ask you to meet our MSI supplier in her stead. So you're her mysterious savior. She sings your praises. That girl and her songs. So eager to learn, so bright-eyed, so... tone-deaf. Wonderful. While you're at it, I wonder if Carlotta still has those high-capacity cartridges? Grab a few, will you? There should be some funds left over from the last shipment. We can use them to copy and modify radio serials. Yes, not just magazines, but their precious dramas. Unbelievable. I hope I don't have to tell you this, but if there is extra money, would you mind buying, I don't know, food and medicine? Graham, if you need me, I'll be in triage.
Excuse me, but this area's off limits. We got a leaky generator. It ain't safe. That's my nice way of telling you to saw it off. And I'm just gonna let you walk on in? Why is that now? Oh, of all the void damned. I ain't getting eaten alive for a couple of bits. Pack it up, crew! I don't know how you got those goons to leave, but thank you. Graham ordered rollers and what's-its, right? For a printing press? Here, take them. Like I said, this is my last run. You'd have to ask him. All I know is that if I get caught, I'll get arrested. It's an enviable thing he's doing. Free people and all that. I can't live that way. I need my structure. But I respect the Iconoclasts for doing it. Law help them. I don't know. Maybe Sublight can lend a hand. I should go. Look, Graham's got a bit or two left in his account. I can send one last dropout before I wash my hands of this. What do you want delivered? I always took that woman for the sensible type. Good on her. I'll send some along. Give them all my regards. And good luck out there. Don't go getting eaten.
I'm telling you, the Van Noys are fine. Bullshit, Graham. They don't just abandon orders, and they weren't at the ruins. Where in this sulfur-sodden hellhole did you send them? They're on a very important... Ah, we'll continue this later. Welcome back, Captain. Thank the Eternal that someone's got some sense in their head. Carlotta usually schedules the next drop during the meeting. When's she coming? That is most unfortunate. This cuts off one of our only two supply lines on Monarch. Sanjar, old friend, you're about to cross a dangerous line. About to? That idiot just declared war. I... We will deal with his subversion later. For now, we must redouble our efforts to spread the truth to the colony. The print... Oh, no. Graham, you didn't. I've already sent a team ahead to scout the press. One of our best. Meet them there and find out if they've been successful. You sent the Van Noys there, didn't you? Oh, for fuck's sake, Graham! We needed them in the ruins! Our people died out there! They went willing to fight for our cause. We need reinforcements. We need new recruits. The Van Noys saw the printing facility with the same importance as I. You're lucky they don't have airlocks on Monarch, or someone would have helped you into one by now. I have the utmost confidence in their abilities. Friends, we must have faith that the men and women we recruit can handle the duties for which we recruit them. Yes! You're damn right he could have. But he's so obsessed with preaching that he's become blind to our actual problems. Look, just... If the Vernois are still alive, get them out of there. With Sanjar pressing the issue like this, I have a feeling we'll need them. Crew members Ellie and Max are engaged in a heated discussion in the kitchen. Max. Maximilian. Vicar. Vicky. What? Shoot, I forgot. It'll come to me. Captain, could I have a moment of your time?
That was a hell of a soiree. Tell that to the wounded. Their blood's flowing all right. Hey, we're still alive, ain't we? Grandma's right all along. The truth shields us. The truth, yeah. And a healthy amount of 44 calibers. Would that we could. We ain't leaving our men behind, and they ain't moving on their own. Our medic has got our trauma kit, but we got separated. We ain't seen them in a couple of hours. My professional medical advice is to get out of here as soon as possible. Bleeding might kill him, but wrapped definitely will. How many years of medical school went into that word of wisdom? Sorry, sorry. We appreciate the assist. We just need to find our medics so we can do exactly as you say. Get the hell out. Oh, fuck. Well, that's better than nothing. Thanks. We'll head out as soon as we're patched up. If you'll just listen... No! No more listening! No more preaching! We are losing people left and right! We need to act! Enough, Zora. I'm not putting the torch to innocent people. Do you want to bring the board's cruisers and gunships down on us? Captain, apologies, but our situation grows dire. Our people talk of foolish endeavors. What news do you bring? They are armed all the same. All they need is a good reason, and war is one such reason. Excellent. Did you find the Vanois? Thank the Eternal. We're one step closer to bringing the truth to every man, woman, and child in Halcyon. For now, you can tell Hiram that I'll stop using Devil's Eye from the pits of our eternal souls. Thank you, Captain. I have much to do. Articles to write, sermons to ponder. We live in such an exciting time. 
Let's talk later. Hey, I need to see to the wounded, but drop by the clinic when you can. I want a word. What? Sorry. Long day. Hey, Captain. I need your help, and we ought to keep it hush-hush. You know about what happened here, right? The history of Amber Heights? You're talking about the massacre. Back when the corpse were pulling out, pirates raided the place and killed the MSI bigwigs living here. Right. Common belief is that the pirates fled to an old relay station that had already been abandoned, but nobody could find them. The station's locked up, but one of my people found an old data cartridge in a nearby rap nest. It's mostly corrupted, but I pulled a couple codes off of it. One is the code to the Amber Heights gate. I don't recognize the other, but it's similar. I bet it opens a door. I know it's a long shot, but if we miss something there, if you can get into that station, maybe we can get some answers. Right, the access codes to Amber Heights. What gets me is, if this belonged to the pirates, that means they knew someone there. If someone gave them the gate code, all those deaths, Captain, all that blood is on their hands. Just a warning. The area is infested with mantisaurs. I'd send some help, but we're, you know, preparing for war. Sure. I'll be here if you change your mind. Sublight territory feels like being home. Fallbrook's great. Anything you want, they've got it. So long as you've got the bits. Want to make a run with me to Stella Bay? Uh huh. You blind, fella? Or can you not see I'm busy? Why is it every sisty pig fucker who strolls into my town expects me to smile and shout awful friendly? Welcome to Fallbrook. Only nugget of paradise in this entire law-forsaken land. Like a void damn advert. Catherine, you're as welcoming as ever. Truthfully spoken, I do aim to properly represent my aforementioned nugget of paradise. You know, I ain't heard that one before. Suppose I'll have to work harder to show you just what makes our town shine. But first, I'll need to know what brings you, stranger. Well, I'm half listening. Good of you to finally haul your ass over here. I wired for backup weeks ago. Got something that's gonna require special extraction from Cascadia. Found it on a corpse, huh? If you killed Lilia's agent, you get to explain it to her. Not me. Well, shit. I knew he'd come to a bad end one day. Still, no time for weeping and wailing. We've got a metric fuck ton of bits worth of salvage just waiting for extraction.
So you got a brain on them shoulders. Excellent. Makes my life a world easier. To extract the gas, you'll need to siphon it from the lab in Cascadia into one of your ship's fuel tanks. Totally safe. Meaning safe for me and my crew. Seeing as it ain't us undertaking the risk. Hold your thrusters. I ain't even got to the tricky part. To get to the gas, you'll need to navigate through the town, which is overrun by marauders. The lab itself has become an infested nest, crawling with mantis. You gotta fight through or figure out some other way to exterminate them. Maybe the ventilation system? I'm a doctor, not a vet. But what's the worst that could happen? I shall leave the details to you. Now, after you clear the manti nest and reach the storage room, all that's left is to get the gas flowing into the fuel system. The task will require someone with technical skills. Or you could force it through with a plasma overload. Don't recommend that option, though, unless you want to get dead. And I'd rather not wait another several weeks for Lilia to send your replacement. Once you've got our goods, take them to the Groundbreaker. Lilia's fencers ought to handle the rest of it. I've marked the coordinates for you to the lab in Cascadia. On the terminal, use the passcode you got from Stellar Bay to get in. But before you make your run, I could use a heavy helping hand regarding a local issue. For a fine fee, of course. Good. This particular matter of opportunity has been eating at me for a while now. There's a Borst factory on up the way, run by a man who calls himself the King. Clive Lundberg, insufferable prick. That aside, it's a business ripe for the plucking. I want it. Clear as that. Stars, I hope so. Clive Lundberg, the self-proclaimed Borst King of Monarch, is swimming in profit and drowning in his ego. He's making the only meal to be had this side of Monarch, and I'm tired of ponying up for my dinner. I want that Borst factory, owner dead or alive. And you're the soon-to-be handsomely paid son of a bitch who's gonna get it for me. Kill him. Run him out. I don't rightly care for the details. So long as Clive knows resistance to me is costly. And futile. Hit him where it hurts. In his gut or his production lines ought to make do. Then I'd say you might care to poison the sisty pigs. Doctor a few financial records. Or throw a wrench in the canning machinery. Sometimes the simplest solution is the sweetest. I don't give a wit about the method or the means, just the end. It'll be more than good when you're finished. Maybe not for Clive, but for me and you, I'm sure. Oh, and if you don't fancy going in guns blazing or crawling through a sewer pipe, see Duncan in the dry goods and sundry building. He ought to have an employee ID in that stash of illicit goods he keeps for select clientele. May luck be with you since I won't be. Now there's a woman who knows what she wants. I like her. She's fine. Well, so long as you ain't on her bad side. Then she's liable to drown you in the waterfall.
I can take it. They got the drop on us.
If this place was abandoned, how come it still smells like sweetener and despair? Proximity alert. Biology human. Protocol kill all plants. Suspended. Present your Rizzo identification credentials or prepare to be downsized. Attempting to disengage security protocols without proper authorization is a fireable offense. Priming weapons. Executive level password accepted. As identification according to employee ID protocol A-3501. Welcome back, doctor. Be advised. Mantisaur threat level is petrifying purple berry. Please use caution. Mantisaur wounds are not covered under Rizzo's health policy. Have a productive day. Try that again.
was the hard part. Now it's just the part that might blow us up.
I have received a transmission from Roseway, from a Dr. Shaw. Our fuel cells are now primed with Alta Vitae gas. As the organics say, let us hope we do not explode in transit to the Groundbreaker. Do you hear that? It's the blessed sound of radio silence, which leads me to believe you have sweet, sweet news for me. Yes, indeed. I am back in business. But before we get down to it, might I ask how you handled the problem? In the end? Does it matter? Job's done. Hmm, is that so? I don't know how. The two are diametrically opposed and impossible to please, but it matters not how you fixed my problem, only that you did. I don't doubt that you are working with Phineas, but my contract specifies I relay any acquired information to the purchaser, and to the purchaser alone. However, to send the data, I will need your assistance in cycling the antenna's receiver so I can input the needed adjustments. You make it sound so scandalous. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. Now you hold on. I do not physically go between anyone but that of my choose... Oh. Oh, apologies. You meant... Right. Yes. I brave the wilderness so you don't have to. Precisely. I really ought to give you a raise. Ah, oh, 
Don't be ridiculous. We're resetting a broadcast tower, not filing taxes. There are no errands, spreadsheets, or rituals involved. It's simple, truly. I merely need you to waltz outside and throw the lever to cycle the power. I'll key in the numerical adjustments from in here. Someone has trust issues, though I can't hardly feign surprise. Yes, that is all. No, I am not mocking you. Much. Just step outside, flip the switch, depart forever. Understood? Good. Marvelous. We're in agreement. This is why I stopped helping out around here, you know. It's always throw this lever, shoot that marauder, save my life. Just one thing after another with you. I'm starting to see why you don't get much company out here. Terrific. I'll be here. Waiting with bated breath. Give a shout if the panel electrocutes you. Testing one, two, check, check. Sweet stars. But that is a beautiful sound. Can you hear me? We are a go for broadcast. Oh, and I also dispatched Phineas his data. Impatient prick. Worse, I'm now indebted to him for it. Now I'll kindly thank you to get out of my tower. There's no need to assert your dominance. I doubt I could make you do anything you don't wish to. Look, I am well aware that at times I may have the tiniest iota of a prickly exterior. But I must admit, I have grown rather fond of you. As Nioka can attest, I do not form attachments with many. Do take care. Why, he told us to leave without flinging insults at our persons. He really does like you, Captain. What in the void blasted hell is that? I guess it's one of the board's blockade enforcers, but don't cite me on that. Oh well, a pity for the crew, but I can't see how it affects me. Hiram? Can you hear me? Did you see that? Architect saved me from swindlers and fools. Sanjar, what are you bloody doing on my channel? Did MSI, or did MSI not cease broadcasting? Yes, but... Hiram? Hiram, are you there? Without a physical contact waiver. Ah, the good captain. The truth brings us together once more. Our salvation has come crashing through the stratosphere. We need only collect its weapons. Are you mad? That's a UDL gunship. You'd probably shoot your own toes off. Par for the course, really. You should do like I did. Get out while you still retain a shred of sanity. We could use the gunship's armaments to defend Stellar Bay. But we need its targeting module. Our message is so close to breaking free of this planet and spreading to the stars. Help us secure that module and we will save our colony. Listen, I don't care a single whit what you do so long as you leave me out of it. Which means, get off my void damn channel! I'm more than finished with you lot.
Used to be, you can get the best wine on Monarch here. You take us to the nicest places, Captain. This area is suicide. If you got a way around it, ain't no shame in taking it. Go on ahead, Captain. I'm not keen on ships, even when they're in the best of shape. Me too. You know corpses shit themselves, right? Enjoy the smell. I'd like to let you know 
let the record show that our captain is a total fucking hullhead. I told him, again and again, that without fixing our regulators, spinning up the engines are going to blow through our coils and we'll go flying off in a completely random direction. Well, here we are. Thinking we'll hit soil in uh, about 30 seconds. This is your chief engineer signing off for what is probably the last time. It's a shame you can't see this middle finger I'm holding up, because I'm doing it as hard as I can. Watch your step on Monarch. It's not just the monsters and sulfur pits you gotta look out for. I admire your grit, but some wounds don't heal. And I say that as someone who's plugged a few severed aortas. Ginger Chops and the Pencil Pusher. By all accounts, Sanjar and Graham have been at each other's throats for years. Digging into their personal history isn't gonna change anything. Honestly, stay out of it. We've got our own problems to deal with. I try to save my captain a headache when I can. Usually ends up saving me one too. Anything else? I bet you'll like Rebecca. What's up? Crew report, Bioka is drunk. Surprise. We are now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain.
Watch out! Hey, take a gander. The door's busted. Rebecca? Anders? You in there? Huh. Rebecca taught me this once. You can jerry-rig these old locks so as they don't open anymore. But we've only ever done that if we're in a real bind. Here, I'll fix it. Oh, no. Oh, no. What did you do? Uh-oh. This looks bad. At least... At least I know. Ought to have learned by now that getting one's hopes up tends to open them to being dashed across the stars. Only thing left is to take these medallions home which means figuring out how to bait the Mana Queen out of our old base. The most pissed off I've ever seen a queen was when a foreign species was on her soil. I'd wager the stench of a primal might do the trick. Pfft, that'd be boring. Half the fun in exploring is the fact that you're on an unknown trail. I've never had the pleasure of hunting primals, but I hear they're all over Scylla. Let's tear a few apart, shall we? I'm sure they've got pheromones. Everything does. I don't... They were... That bitch! They were all set to abandon us! What would Clara say, huh? Every day she'd ask if we heard from you. And she'd have forgiven you! The kid had a soul that made the sulfur smell like roses! Ugh. I'd have leave your medallions to rot with you, but... Clara would want to be buried with her sister. That queen ain't gonna go down easy. I can't wait. What's up? The ship used to be much quieter.
I am a dirty, autonomous digital astrogator, Sam. I haven't cleaned my internals in ages. Can you hardly process the sheer quantity of dust built up in there? Tell me you've seen worse. Ah! Um, we'll continue this later. Destination reached. Scylla. What a mess! What a mess! You got a second? Hey boss, got a hypothetical for you? You got a friend, see? Somebody you knew when you were growing up. You were close. Then one day, they up and vanished. Five years go by, they send you a message out of the Aether. What's going through your head? Right, forgot about that. Though, shock and disbelief's a good way to put it. Guy by the name of Clyde Harlow. He was an old friend of mine. Honestly, he was probably my first and longest friend. I just heard from him. Says he wants to talk to me. Says it's urgent. Figured I should let you know, seeing as we're on Scylla and all. Clyde's got a base on the other side of this rock. I appreciate this, boss. I know you're going out of your way for me. Oh, I've seen one of these before. This here's a uh, planet maker upper? Uh, terraformer, that's the word. Ought to leave well enough alone. Come on, 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 come on,
Looks like some sort of habitation. What's up? Outstanding. These ought to be enough. Let's get back to Monarch. There's an old base I used to call home. I can get us in the door, but we'll have to shoot our way through the Queen's Brood to get to the center. We'll set the bait there. Password to the door is Charon. Hayes's idea. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, Nioka. Charon. He said it was some old myth something about death and all the things we killed. Rest of us just thought it sounded cool, so here we are. Fucking right we are. What's on your mind? A sure thing. Ask away.
we go. We got this. Captain, Felix and the Vicar are arguing again. Hey you, looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Yeah, the captain said we might be getting a new recruit. That you then? Sounds like Clyde's jumping to conclusions, but yeah, I'm Felix. You're on a first name basis with Captain Harlow, huh? All right, go on through. Got my sights on.
That machine stole my bits. Why do we even have one of these? Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged, old man? Your captain has a sense of humor, Felix. Good. There's a time and place for humor. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. He kicks things what need kicking, and we look the other way when he starts talking anti-corporate. It's a good arrangement. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy. That one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. I understand that Felix is part of your crew, at least for now. If the thought of losing him troubles you, then understand that you're helping him solve a problem for an old friend. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him, and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. Ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant, has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own in tuck tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might. Rosanna. Lives on the groundbreaker last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. Clyde offered me a hand when nobody else would. I'd say I owe him a good turn. There you have it, Captain. A favor for an old friend. You think so? Maybe we should have a word with Trask. Get his side of the story first. You'd be wasting your breath bandying words with that traitor. But if it makes you feel better, by all means. Remember, I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. Well enough. It's been a few years, but I still remember a thing or two. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with?
Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. We're now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. Here we go. I haven't set foot in here since. Well, I'm ready. Yeah, right? Yeah, here we go. What's up? Well, this is the spot. You know, I thought I'd be angry. I thought I'd storm in here in a rage and exterminate all these bugs and everything would be all right in the end. But I ain't. I'm mostly just empty. A little sad, maybe. The first night Hayes and I spent in here, we knew it was home. It's safe. It's got a nice chill to it. But mostly, it doesn't stink of sulfur. Monarch folks often joke about it. Not because of the smell or the grittiness it leaves in your throat. 
Not because of the headaches or the coughing. It's because there's no escaping it. It's life here, and there ain't anything you can do about it. But here, somehow the sulfur never made it. The nights we spent in here felt like vacations. So we started building. We hauled in steel, hired sublight folk to help. That's how we met Anders and Opal. They stuck around after our contract was up. Opal liked camping. Anders liked chasing her tail. Four of us for a while, scraping together what bits we could to build our home. Then came Rebecca, a sawbones out of the Cascadia survivors, who took a kindness to Hayes. And Clara, her little sister. I'll admit I wasn't keen on taking her on at first, but for a teenager, she was surprisingly capable. More like attached at the hip to her older sister. Got a kind of strength between them, I suppose. She had a head for numbers, helped us trade hides for food and materials, negotiated contracts, turned out to be mighty useful. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, and me. Six folks, one name, one family, Charon. Despite Monarch trying to kill us day in and day out, we managed to belong. Me too, Captain. But I'm starting to think that maybe I found another. Now let's get to shooting before I get all sentimental. Take your best shot, asshole. I wish these were more auspicious circumstances, but at least we're all here. This bringing them together, burying them. This is the kind of thing Hayes would have done. That was stupid. By all accounts, we should have left well enough alone, but that also makes it right. Captain, thank you. Spoken like a true huntsman. You'd have fit right in. You mind if we rest a spell before we head out? I'd... I'd like to bury Opal and Clara proper before I lay everyone's medallions to rest. What? Why? Them's painful memories, Captain. Huh. That's... that ain't a bad point. All right, Captain. Thanks.
Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Can we talk? You mind trying to have a moment here? Yeah, I was called that once upon a day. You need something? Rufus and I are no longer on speaking terms. I don't know where he is. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. That's Harlow's mark, no mistake. Guess he's not letting this one go. I don't want any manner of harm befalling Rufus. Not on my account. All right, I'll tell you where he is. Just get out of here, please. Rufus is hiding out in Emerald Vale. Got a few friends with him. That's as much as I know. Please, just make it quick. That's right. Our marriage contract expired some months ago. And seeing how he's technically an outlaw, I wouldn't renew even if I wanted to. Precious Little, he and Rufus worked together on the Groundbreaker some years back before he vanished. A few years later, Rufus gets a message from an old friend. Something about starting a revolution, something about getting rich. Abandoned his work and ran off that very day. He must have been recruiting. Gathering up his band of revolutionaries. Word of advice, kid? Anybody carrying on about a revolution just wants to sell you something. I don't know, Harlow. Never so much as bandied a word with a fellow. You're better off having this discussion with Rufus. Only that Rufus is in a bad way. He came to see me a little ways back. Said he had to go into hiding. Never asked why. He was here to collect his personals, complain about Harlow to me, and say goodbye. In that order. No, and he was particular about that. Said I was better off not getting entangled in his mess. Little late for that, says I. Appreciate it. No offense meant, just been a long day is all. Captain, if you're looking for crew members Ellie or Felix, we are now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain.
last of him. I don't know who you are or why you're prowling around here, but I'm willing to make a guess. You're one of Harlow's gun hands, ain't you? He sent you after me. Right. You just stumbled into a camp full of armed strangers because you wanted directions. How much is Harlow paying you? A favor, huh? Let me guess. He promised you some reward in the brave new world that was to come. Said he'd make you his lieutenant if you crossed me off. Thing is, you and I are at an impasse. Arlo wants me dead, and I've got no intention of dying. How do I know that I can trust you? Yeah, guess that's a fair point. Listen, I don't know what lies Harlow's dripped down your ear, but you'd be a fool to trust him. I never betrayed Harlow. Harlow betrayed all of us. The board's got him in their pocket, been paying him off for years. All the palaver about revolutions? It's a lie. You're a real piece of work, Trask. Not just a turncoat, but a liar, too. Go piss up a rope, kid. I've got nothing to prove to you. That's the whole truth. Harlow's just another board asset. A two-bit mercenary wearing a dissident's clothes. Yeah, I've got proof. There's always a paper trail when the board's involved. I chanced upon some correspondence between Harlow and his employer. I don't know that it makes a difference. What was I to do with that evidence? Bring it in front of the board? There's no authority in Halcyon willing to take Harlow to task. Huh. You ain't like other board agents I heard about. You got a functioning spine. You want to confront Harlow yourself? Be my guest. I hid my papers before Harlow chased me out. Back in the middle of the base, there's an old vent in a utility corridor. I stashed my evidence in that vent. Because he's for sale, anything the board can buy, the board will buy, and that includes loyalty. Harlow was a charismatic bastard, and he was ruthless. With Harlow in their pocket, the board had an informant, a pirate, a smuggler, and a gang leader all rolled up into one odious excuse for a human being. Sounds like a deal to me. Board sanctioned piracy. Harlow went after the ships the board wanted destroyed, capturing anybody the board wanted captured. If we captured you, we'd ransom you. Harlow liked to do the job himself. Gather up the captives on his own ship, vanish for a couple of days. Only that's not what happened. Harlow's been selling his captives off to the board. I don't know where they ended up. Re-education, Tartarus, maybe worse. Take it, you've made up your mind. You gonna tell Harlow I'm dead? May as well. I'm never going back to that life again. <sighs> Here, take the ring. And for what it's worth, my gratitude. been cleaned for far too long. You're sure this will... Oh, yes. That's the spot exactly. I... I... 
I... Why, I didn't expect you to be so thorough. I am ashamed to admit. Oh, Captain, there you are. Pardon, but perhaps you could afford us some privacy, please? Scanning for C-2-5-4-7. Grade rated contaminants. Thank you, customer. All cleaning tasks have been completed. Scheduling next round of cleaning to commence in four minutes. Welcome back, Captain. I have received a transmission from Roseway from a Dr. Shaw. Beginning playback now. What? Oh, is this on? Oh, it's on right now. Oh, blast. Hello? I'm trying to reach the captain of the Unreliable. I'll keep this short, lest I get caught. Please return to Roseway as soon as you can. I have an item of great value that you'll be interested in. Now, how do I... How does this blasted thing turn off? Damn engineers never label these toggles clearly. Is it the... The transmission is complete, Captain. Goodbye. We're now in orbit above Roseway, Captain. Ah, I remember you. You must have received my wireless. Thank the law. I went to great risk to send that. Aha, I knew that it'd entice you to return to our dangerously unprofitable township. I asked you here because I have a working prototype of the Alti Nature, Anti-Cleo's very first weapon. I'd like you to have it before it gets confiscated. The schematics you fetch for me lent themselves well to the creation of the beauty you now possess. Unfortunately, anti-Cleo R&D felt otherwise. The market's already saturated, they said. Weapons are everywhere. They aren't interested in mass-producing the Alti nature, which makes this an illegal prototype weapon. Given your unlawful proclivities, I thought it'd be safest with you. So here we are. I'd rather see it in the hands of a free agent than destroyed. I believe we have nothing further to discuss.
I believe I hear Felix and Parvati discussing the latest... Clyde Harlow, agent of the board. Yeah, that sounds even more insane out loud than it did in my head. Then again, Trask knew he was a dead man. Could have been trying to shift the blame. I've been trying to tell myself Clyde's got some sensible explanation for all this, but I just don't know. None of this is making a lick of sense to me right now. I think we need to have a word with Clyde. What's the word? So it is. Thus ends Rufus Trask. Once a sensible man, by and by a fool, presently a corpse. Hope his gas bag's paying us by the hour. I hope you never have to discover what it is like, Captain. The relief one feels when a mutiny comes to an end. And Trask had some things to say about you. And I've got my own misgivings. That's a damning accusation. Am I right to presume you have some evidence on hand? Those papers don't prove a thing. We've all done business with the board. They own the whole damn colony. Trask put you up to this. <laughs> that miserable wretch. He's trying to undermine everything I stand for. You've got a lot of nerve calling me a liar to my face. How should I know? But what the hell do I care? Trask was a traitor, and I didn't ask you to understand his motives. I asked you to cross him off. Clyde, look me in the eye and tell me it's not true. Tell me, and I'll believe you. Don't talk to me like I'm some common criminal, Felix. You're the one on trial, not me. I don't know what kind of poison that snake dripped in your ear, but as far as I'm concerned, you've been compromised. It's a bug! <laughs>
A reminder to all crew members. There is only one toilet on the ship. This is... this is definitely not how I imagined it would end. The void's black, water's wet, and Clyde hated the board. That's something I just knew. Now? I don't know. I don't know what to think. No. I guess you really don't. I've just got a lot on my mind right now. This is, uh... This is a lot to take in. I always looked up to Clyde. The thought that he could be an agent of the board is just abhorrent to me. Yeah, he did. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna get over that. I hope so. I don't see this one passing anytime soon. You've given me a lot to think about. I'm gonna be mulling over this whole mess for a couple of days. Part of me wishes we'd put Trask in the ground. You know, I think that's just my frustration talking. Thanks for your time, boss. Good to see you, boss. Destination reached. The Groundbreaker. Can we talk? That gas is going to make us a fucking mint. A hundred twenty-some cubic meters of it, at a million bits a pop. Take this, you've earned it. When we get buyers lined up, I'm gonna buy a gold toilet to shit in. They're goddamn right. Monarch isn't exactly a walk down the lanes of Byzantium. But here you are with all your limbs attached. Call me impressed, contractor. No one you saw, anyway. 
Glad to see you're looking out for yourself. I hope you kept the Unreliable's engines warm, because I got another job lined up for my new favorite contractor. They're gonna salvage me a space station. Heliospheric Research Station 1084, to be exact. I want it. Cobwebs and all. Interested? We're gonna take over a whole space station? This is gonna be great! Oh, do we get to stick a flag in the ground? This opportunity won't come around again, Captain. Right now, it's only salvage on paper. Systems and comms have gone dark. Poke around if you're curious why. While the board lets 1084 gather dust, you're gonna swoop in and plant Sublight's flag. Perfectly legit, perfectly legal. Not this time. The board tolerates our business up to a point, and selling off a station full of their old gear and terminals crosses that point. But if we were to move in and commandeer the station as a sublight salvage remote office, that's a different matter. Legally gray by comparison. More of a squatter situation. Here, this override bypass should get you into the station systems where you can plant my flag. And one last thing. When you get there, make sure you aren't followed. We wouldn't want that. I'm being smart. Try it sometime. I'm on the heels of something big. Play your cards right and I'll clue you in, but right now, I'm not sure who I can trust. Just be careful. Someone might try and use you to get to me. We're now in orbit above Fallbrook, Captain. I saw this one episode of Terror on Monarch. Halcyon Helen went down that waterfall in a barrel. now huh sure am i'm a part of the crew now got my own bunk and everything you know felix now that you're a real pirate i should induct you into the pirate's code of silence Ooh, the code of silence what's that it means you agree not to talk for a very long time if the iconoclasts reach that ship first there won't be any chance for a peaceful monarch. I don't suppose you've found the targeting module yet. I've sent patrols, but they're running into trouble with the iconoclasts.
Well, because the module controls the weapons systems. Because once we mount them on Stellar Bay's walls, no Marauder or Raptodon will ever be a threat to us again. Gotta hand it to you, Sanjar. That ain't a bad plan. It's absolutely foolproof. Stellar Bay will be as secure as any other settlement in Halcyon. The board's own salvage and recovery clause 32B would say differently. And they won't dare challenge us over this. Not after the data you found on their experiments here. Can you imagine what those maniacs would do with weapons like that? They'd wreak havoc. Or they go and get themselves killed. Then they're not your problem anymore. The board would consider us complicit in any of their folly. That would only get us ousted again. And roll back all the progress we've made at reconciling with the rest of Halcyon. Oh, I've known their ilk long enough. Even if they merely sat on the scraps, the threat of a bunch of anarchists holding a gunship would bring the full wrath of the board down on Monarch. We can't afford that. Look, Celia, he's being funny again. I don't think so, sir. Really? Well, I could have sworn... Well, that's not important. What is important is that there's a considerable distance between us and that ship, and most of it is inhabited by marauders and raptodons. Good, because we haven't a moment to lose. They're all mad! And what's more, they left us! I don't see any way for us to work together. Ugh, not this again. Remember what we practiced, sir. Yes. The words in those reviews were very hurtful, but they do not define me. I am a mantipiller, and my will is my cocoon. I can emerge and become whatever I wish. I hadn't thought of it that way. Perhaps you have a point. Supposing you're right, who exactly would you have me work with? The Iconoclasts are not the most compromising sorts. That's an interesting suggestion. I confess I don't know much about her except that she worked for Rizzo. I'd be willing to consider it, but I need to see her review first. One can't be haphazard about these things. Besides, if you think her skills will complement mine, then we should see what those skills are. Excellent. Her review would be in the Rizzo offices in Cascadia. Bring it to me, and I'll see if she's qualified. Infamous Amber Heights. Something about this place makes me feel sane by comparison. Hey, Captain. Any thoughts on that errand we talked about? The gunship. Have you secured its targeting module? At last. Now we must secure the Stellar Bay landing pad. We will fortify the city against the board's assault. I'll settle for shooting goons and grabbing loot. And you, Captain. Are you prepared? No. Our hearts have long since closed to one another. He is blinded by his love for bureaucracy. Time is of the essence, Captain. Hey, 
Hey, Captain. Appreciate it. Here's the code. If it works, bring back anything you find. Supplies are best, but information's good, too. If someone was behind the Amber Heights massacre, it'd give a lot of people around here some closure to find out who and string them up. Good luck. Watch out for the Taros. Welcome back. going. Hey, Ellie, you want to know what I think? I think they ought to make a serial about our crew. Only, we have all these secret messages in every episode, see? What happened to the Code of Silence, Felix? Hey, why do you always do that thing with your eyes whenever I talk to you? You on the alert, maybe? Looking out for hidden enemies? Let's just say you remind me of someone. I bet they were real pretty. Welcome back. You find anything out there? Let's see. These are old. Looks like correspondences between the pirates. Some bits here, some there, some... Wait. This... This one's got the Amber Heights gate code on it. Just like the one I found earlier. And here's... A letter. Wait, this is from Graham. Oh, of all the... Captain. He gave them the gate codes. Yeah, he did. He really did. I know he's got his head in the clouds, but I always believed there was a core of good there. What the hell happened to live and let live? I always figured Mr. Bryant for a man of character. In the end, though, he was just another name on a long list of frauds. Yeah, he had us all fooled. Now I've got to sort out how to break it to the rest of my people. Look, I need to think, plan, figure out if I should talk to him or shoot him, or both. Just don't give him the module yet. Give me a little time. I'll meet you at his place. You got a second? I can't believe I wanted to shake his hand. I need a shower. 
Makes you wonder if being a treacherous, two-timing coward is some sort of contagious disease, or if he was just born that way. At first, I liked what Graham was doing. The iconoclasts were going to change Halcyon for the better. But then, we found out Graham was behind the slaughter of Amber Heights. How can anybody so morally bankrupt lead a movement to transform the colony? Don't have to remind me, Clyde was my hero for a time. We both know how that ended up. You'd never do something like that, would you? Slaughter a whole community of innocents? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's get back to it. I need to put all this ugly business with Graham behind me. You ever watch Agent Khan? He's got this ship, right? The Invincible? And we got a ship, right? So I got to thinking, who'd win in a race? The Invincible or the Unreliable? Felix, you watch too many movies. Hey, you sound just like Nioka. Adventure serials are my education. Where else am I supposed to learn how to kick a jackass in the chest? And that's what being a pirate's all about, right? Hate to tell you, but a lot of the job is waiting for a gig, then waiting to get paid. Hey, Ellie, when was it that you realized the board was crushing the life out of this colony? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the board? The machine of oppression? Ain't that why you became a pirate? Because you wanted to be free and all? I'm just after a paycheck, kid. Captain, we should chat. Graham's got the right idea, but he isn't the right guy to execute it. I don't even think he's motivated by philosophism anymore. I think he's just guilt-ridden. I can't believe I'm even saying this, but I keep going over and over it in my head. And the only way I see the Iconoclast surviving is we depose him. Yeah. Hell, most of our people listen to me already. Sometimes, you gotta do what's best for someone, even if they think you're wrong, even if it's painful. When we're in Stellar Bay, they'll come around. Take Stellar Bay, lick our wounds, eventually figure out how the hell we're going to spread the word to the rest of the colony. I'm going to confront him. Can I count on your support? Okay. Deep breaths. This is what's best, Sora. Time to save Monarch. Captain, you must be back with the access codes to our new ship. Graham, we need to talk. We have work to do. This isn't the time for one of our spats. Yes, we are acting. On Stellar Bay. What's this about? 
you're running the Iconoclast into the ground. And I don't believe it'll get better after we take Stellar Bay. The troops take orders from me already, and you've... You've brought me as far as you can down the Eternal Path. It's time to step down. The troops? Listen to you. This isn't an army. They aren't soldiers. They're believers. Followers. They pick up a gun because you tell them to, not because they want to. And you, Captain, after all you've done for me, for us, you throw behind this mutinous blasphemer? I built this movement from the ground up. I've brought freedom to Monarch, and all these years later, we're still free. I joined because I believed that you were in it for the Iconoclasts. That you wanted nothing more than to bring freedom to Halcyon. That you were selfless. But... I know the truth now, Grim. I know what happened in Amber Heights. You didn't start this movement because you wanted to save us. You wanted to save yourself. No. I've spent years atoning for my sins. I've studied, meditated, taught. I built the Iconoclasts so that any man could cast away his past for a fresh start. That's your answer, Graham? You needed a fresh start? After all those innocent lives? I'm sorry. I believed in you once. I did. But it's over. Stand down. I won't. What happened back then was a mistake, and the colony has moved on. This is my movement. These are my people. If you want to lead them, you'll have to kill me. Please, don't make me do this, Graham. If this is where my path ends, I accept it. But as long as I draw breath, I will not abandon them. So be it. Well, Captain, here we are. Killed a lot of people in the name of the Iconoclasts. And it never feels right. But this time, it's... especially wrong. You've got the... Void help me. I'll never remember what that thing is called. The device from the ship. Do you have it? I've thought about it, but... I think we're too far gone. Pulling Carlotta's support was crossing a line. You know, Captain... I never thought about that. Maybe he could be taught the eternal truth. Spread the message from within the corporations. All right. If he's willing to talk, I'll give him a chance.
I just don't get how you can be so casual about your integrity, Ellie. The way I see it, you're either standing up to the board, or you're standing up for him. I know nuance ain't exactly your strong suit, but it's not that simple. Grow a few hairs on your chest and you'll see. I might not have your schooling, but at least I stand for something. And you'll fall for anything. That's how the saying goes. I don't like the idea that they'll be trying for that module while we delay. Very well. I can't promise anything, but let's see what we have here. Well, it seems like she, uh, she's actually very qualified. All right. I'll have Celia organize a meeting in neutral territory, the old OSI church in the ruins. Meet us there, and we'll discuss terms. you doing? I don't know, Ellie. Clyde was the one friend I had since I was a kid. I don't think I'm getting over this anytime soon. Better him than you, right? Yeah, I tried telling myself that already. Didn't work then, ain't working now. Thanks, though. Hey, thanks for coming. I wish I'd had more time to prepare a proper analysis on the costs and benefits of your proposed union, but uh, I suppose we'll have to improvise. Gotta admit, I really thought I was walking into a trap here. I'm ready. If anybody can get these two shaking hands, it's you, boss. Sanjar, Stellar Bay's got food and walls. And my people need both. If you'll have us, we're willing to share the space. Do you have any idea what that would cost? Why, drawing up the budget alone is going to take weeks. Not good enough. I need to move a fair amount of my people into the city. We need shelter, Captain. Suppose some of our healthier folk could offer aid. Some of us need to stay in the city proper, though. Truly? A compromise? I'm not sure I'd ever have heard as much from Graham. Graham was a murderous fiend. And I'd be shocked if you didn't already know that. His friend? His friend? Are you fucking kidding me, Captain? I've been standing with Graham for the better part of a decade while this paperclip cowboy sat behind his walls. This feels like one of those times when everyone at headquarters but me is laughing at something, but you two aren't laughing. Amber Heights, you hallhead. Ten years ago, Graham had all those people killed. What? That's not possible. Even for him, that's going too far. But that means... I had no idea, I swear. Look, we were both fed up with corporate leadership, but I, I never guessed he'd do something like that. I think I believe him. He's just dumb enough to mean it. You can't take bureaucrats at their word. You back someone into a corner like this, and they'll say anything to get out of it. Very well. I suppose my ignorance is no excuse. I knew Graham for years. I should have done my due diligence and known exactly who I was working with. 
Surely you know what that's like. Yeah, I... I do. Okay, if you're willing to house and supply some of us, I'll have our more capable soldiers help out. As am I. Oh, I can feel my blood pressure lowering already. Thanks for coming out, Sanjar. I, uh, guess I'll see you at Stella 50 Bit says they kill each other before the week's out. Can we talk? Things on Monarch have really cooled off. I didn't think MSI and the Iconoclast would ever talk. Outside of shouting four-letter words, I mean. Sure. And fish sticks are really made from Saltuna. Look, I won't knock the work you did. I'm sure they'll have a good cry, look through old photographs, share a pint of premium double chocolate cacao gelato. But sooner or later, things will go back to the way they were. People don't change. Not really. Well, who hasn't been there? Anyway, I'd hate to see you get broken up if this thing between them doesn't last. Hey, let's not make this out to be more than it is. Anything else? What did I tell you? His down with the man shtick was just an act. No one who yammers that much means half of it. Take a page out of my rule book. Don't trust anyone. Then it's easy. Don't get all mushy on me now. Come on, what did we just learn? People look out for their own interests. It's a fundamental law of nature, same as gravity and conservation of motion. Sure I can. In fact, I bet you I live a lot longer. Well, let me know how that works out for you. Anyway, you really want to tell me you're helping the scientist because you think he'll save the colony? You're right. The point is that self-interest is like self-pleasure. No one wants to admit it, but everyone has a hand in it. Enough about Harlow, though. Anything else? The intrepid crew of the unreliable Brave the Wilds of Monarch on today's episode of, uh, still working on the title?
Food poisoning is one of the leading causes of death in Halcyon. Not surprising when you see these places from the inside. Arthur today? Nah, last time I saw him with <laughs> You don't think he got crushed on the drop? I'll keep it down. I test every product myself to assure maximum customer satisfaction. If you doubt it, I can show you my lower back rash. No rubbernecking. Make a buy or move on. Not so fast. My biometric IDs are special goods, only on offer to special clients. You caught me? She needs it for a job? Well, why didn't you say so? Reckoned you asked her where to best procure one, and she obligingly pointed you my way. Give me a jiffy to break. I, I mean, calibrate the ID. This goes like that. Nope, not quite right. A bit to the left, mayhaps. That'll do it. For a CMP factory line worker, she sure is a beauty. Careful. I'm trusting you to guard this specialty good with your life. I mean it. Lose the ID and you don't get another. Also, you'll be off my list of unwholesome customers. Will that be all, or do you require something to say, scratch your itch? smells worse than the back bays. Ah, you must be a part of the new line shift. Don't tell me you lost your key card already. A lost card's worth two infractions, you know. You know, I think I did hear something about that. All right, okay. Initiating greetings protocol. Greetings.
Processing. Security patrol initiated. Huh? Error. Employee information not found. Identify yourself. Error. Transfer request not found. State your employer. Registered. A fine of 10,000 bits will be assessed in your corporation's ledger for failure to follow transfer procedures. Thank you for your cooperation. And just what do you figure you're doing up here? These are my private quarters, friend. I don't allow tours up here. I don't allow tours ever on deeper consideration. Certain things require a mess to do well. See, I was just killing some time. I prefer to prepare my dinner by my own hand. Nothing like fresh and bloody Worst, worst. I do own a factory known for specializing in the canning of Borstwurst. On occasion, I like to imbibe other parts of the Sisty Pig. Did you fancy me a cannibal? Perish the thought. No, I don't eat the bodies, I disappear. A joke, that last was. So, what can I do for you? My full attention is at your disposal. I kind of liked it when his attention was elsewhere. While I approve of your associate's cautious nature, I still teeter on the verge of losing my patience. Let us move forward with the present proceedings. By sublight, you mean Catherine, do you not? Greedy, star-crossed sow. Listen, friend. The Borst King of Monarch does not negotiate with coveters. How about you bring me Catherine's severed head, and I will gift you a lifetime supply of Borst. You desire that I should lower myself to Catherine's level of crassness and filth? I cannot fathom how that would cotton, myself. The king built this golden monopoly brick by brick from the rubble when the corpse abandoned Monarch. No, he ain't the sort to partner up, as that requires the sharing of power and profits. You think to blackmail me? Try it. The king will grind you to bone spurs and toenails. For true, you figure she will appreciate my skills? They did take me years to perfect. However, I remain unconvinced she could provide the means to make the association worth my while. If you ain't noticed, I'm doing swell, ruling this kingdom on my own. Ah, but Catherine would admire a man of my inclinations and skill. That is what you imply, yes? She will supply the worship I so rightly deserve. Very well. The king is interested. John Hancock me on the dotted line, friend. I will even <clears throat> give her a cut of the profits. Requiring she keeps clear of my short hairs. 
do not push me. I am not one to suffer insults. Tell Catherine she is permitted to dump the bodies each and every Tuesday, precisely at 3 a.m. Catherine Malin could sour milk just by glaring at it. I'd have a drink with her. Though I'd keep one hand on my gun and the other on my bit cartridge. How's Clive? I do hope you gave him my regards. Oh, this ought to be good. What does he mean to offer in exchange for his no-account life? True enough, I got bodies piling up, drawing attention where they ought not to be. But if I take the factory, I don't need Clive to dispense of my messes. Can appoint someone to handle it myself. Point taken. Good help is hard to come by. Plus, Clive doesn't seem the type to upchuck his boards during dismemberment. Still, you're asking me to walk away from easy money. So we're a lot of things in life, and your point is? All right, color me convinced. Reckon I owe you a finder's fee. Don't spend it all in one place. Unless it's here.
A reminder to all crew members, there is only one toilet on the ship. We've reached HRS-1084, Captain. It's emitting a very weak docking signal. I almost mislabeled it as normal etheric static. I'll lock up behind you. There's a generator somewhere? Sure are a lot of charging Automex. What are the chances they're friendly? Oh, I see you have activated your holographic shroud, Captain. Excellent. Becoming indistinguishable from an authentic UDL trooper will prove advantageous to your current situation. A UDL vessel has been tracking our position and just recently docked with the station. They are patching into the station's transmission lines now. I cannot stop... I've been waiting for this day since we tagged your ship in Cascadia, Captain. I... Who are you? No one told me we had security forces deployed on the station already. Roger that. Just as a precaution, I'm sure you won't mind if we turn on the station's security systems. Can't be too careful. We'd hate to leave this location undefended after a close call with outlaws. That should have been fixed by now. As you say, we'll just head out then. Safe travel, soldier. The UDL gunship is undocking from the station. They appear to be departing into space. Oh, don't, boss. You got a real fine way with words.
Watch your step. still alive in there. something you might be the finest agent sublight ever hired chartrand chartrand i've seen that name before somewhere cascadia right
Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. You know that sound when you've snapped on an injector clip? Ah, that's how you know your weapon loves you back. Ellie, my mind, but it's been a while. How's that whisper muzzle working out for you? I sold it. Didn't seem to make me any quieter. Hmm, that mod was for your gun, not your smart mouth. You want to bust my chops? Do it over drinks next time I'm on station. Please don't mind her. Everything I sell works as advertised. Some people just like to sass me because I don't bite back. Finally, a base of our own. Soon we'll have eyes on every corner of the system. Well done, Captain. I heard about that. While my lawyers scratch their heads wondering how we deal with human salvage, I'm leaving the researchers in hibernation. Aside from the automated security, did you meet any resistance at the station? Ugh, I knew it. They've been shadowing us since Monarch, maybe even longer. I've been less than honest with you. Your assignments weren't strictly about the salvage business. You might have figured that out already. That's right. Up until now, I've kept you in the dark for your protection, and more importantly, mine. But I'd like to think we've earned each other's trust. After the Monarch job, I started connecting the dots. I didn't like the picture. 
Then what we found at Station 1084 confirmed my fears. You and I have stumbled onto something big, something none of us were meant to know. I'm thinking more along the lines of the sapient species paradox. Oh, I read about that in one of my magazines. She's talking about aliens, right? Ask yourself why a skeleton crew was studying that Alta Vitae gas in secret. Ask yourself why stockpiles were hidden on a planet full of monsters. No, they were hiding something the colony isn't ready to know. Before we go any further, I want you to keep an open mind. Can you do that for me, Captain? Aliens. I'm talking about aliens. They're the ones responsible for the deaths at 1084, and who knows what else. We have to put a stop to it. I knew it. Aliens from other worlds been visiting Halcyon. At least one of your crew can keep an open mind. But this isn't some Aetherwave serial, Millstone. This is reality. Hear me out. I'm saying it's aliens. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm not even asking you to believe it. But I need to act on this threat to the colony, and I can't do it alone. Well, at least she doesn't expect us to believe it. Damn, she's serious. Tragic, ain't it? What age does to your mental faculties? The crew is skeptical. That's good. I don't want you walking into the unknown with blindfolds on. I assume you have questions? If we're gonna see this through, I'll need your trust and commitment. Now's the time for setting doubts aside. Conspiracy. One carried out with the help of human collaborators. Assuming they haven't all been replaced. This is an invasion of our very cells. That damned gas is mixing our nucleon with Halcyon biology to twist us, change us. Make us more like those monsters on Monarch. No kidding. That's how they want it. When I lined up the evidence in my spreadsheet, there was only one possible conclusion looking back at me. This is my data talking, not my anxiety or lack of sleep. Sharing my findings took a calculated risk. If you were a spy, I doubt you'd even realize it. Only your cells would know. Tobias. Get my knife. The big one. That was a joke. Ha ha. We each get one. Now, back to business. Dr. Chartrand is the crooked psychopath behind the gas experiments. She sold out her species, and I need you to put a bullet through her skull. She's a research scientist, and a damn good one. Before UDL poached her, she engineered a 0.2% increase in cysty pig juiciness. Now she's doing the same thing with humanity. Her fingerprints were all over Station 1084. You saw what she did to her team. You've got me all wrong. I just want to add Savior of Humanity to my resume. I've got ambitions outside of this office, you know. Besides, this way Sublight gets first dibs on Alien Salvage. We're far beyond theories. Chartrand's logs, the gas, the suspension tanks, how much proof do you need? Wake up, Captain. An invasion needs collaborators working from the shadows. She has access to the board, unlimited funds, and a colony full of sheep.
Do you usually come across innocent people trapped in suspension tanks? Because some of us would call that excessive. Remember, the tanks were just the shit she left behind. Just imagine the experiments she carted off to her next lab. Just think of it as salvaging hope from the smoking wreckage of humanity. This is your initiation into a future with sublight. Want a steady position in our ranks? Buy one with a bullet. Well, there's your usual fee. What else do you want, a promotion? It's yours. Even better. I'll owe you one. This keycard will get you through the front door of her Byzantium estate. Don't ask how I got it. You might not like the answer. By now, the other side knows what you're doing. Don't trust anything Chartran says. She's compromised down to the bone. Maybe even deeper than that. If you stop in the engine room, would you ask Parvati to send? And Sam down to the bridge. Captain, I wish to offer my commendations for convincing the UDL's gunship to leave HRS-1084. I did not favor the idea of being stripped and sold for parts. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Goodbye. Is it time for your regular daily period of unconsciousness? Now arriving at Phineas's top secret orbital lab. Clap your 
on the shoulder if I went behind a wall of bulletproof glass. I don't know how you did it, but Hiram Blythe just sent me everything I needed. According to Hiram's message, Minister Clark has ordered a suspicious amount of dimethyl sulfoxide. It's almost as if he's hoarding the colony's remaining supply. Typical elitist. Hoarding supplies during a time of scarcity. Once I have those chemicals, we can revive the Hope's colonists and put some decent people in charge. So, good news. You're going to Byzantium and stealing those chemicals. Exciting. If I had time in several blackboards, I could explain the details to you, but... To put it briefly, dimethyl sulfoxide is the reason you're alive today. The chemical is absolutely essential to reviving the Hope's colonists. I need you to steal as much as you possibly can. The more, the better. If you don't bring me enough chemicals, I might not be able to save the Hope's colonists. And then nothing will stop the board from destroying this colony. Aloysius Clark, Minister of Earth. Virtually every colony requires the presence of a Minister of Earth. Clark is complicit in every one of the board's crimes. Whenever the board issues some new decree, you'll find Clark's signature on the dotted line. Ah, yes, the details. I'm not about to ask you to rampage through Byzantium trading bullets with the board's agents. We'll have to resort to subterfuge. Carmen Imagawa. She's my contact in Byzantium. Meet her at the docks. She'll have all the necessary intelligence you require. I'm giving you my old nav key to Byzantium. You'll need it to land in the Golden City. Remember, you're looking for dimethyl sulfoxide. Big green bubbling vessel with a warning label. I'll take as much as you can find. Something about being discontinued due to severe adverse reactions, it's fine. You'll be stealing the chemicals, not ingesting them. You can trust her, if that's what you're asking. Imagawa is the finest special agent in Byzantium that money can buy. My money, anyway. Of course, of course. What's on your mind? Crew report. Bioka is drunk. Surprise. We are now in orbit above Byzantium, Captain. Can we talk? Since we're in Byzantium, there's something I've been meaning to do. I haven't actually talked to my folks in a while. Shocking, right? Anyway, it's probably about time I paid them a visit. Given the dangerous life I lead, they've got to be worried sick. Which brings us to where we are today, several messages and a few years late. See, I'm originally from Byzantium, born and raised. I know that probably comes as a big surprise. Yeah, exactly. Reconnect is a strong word. And, uh, I was thinking you'd come too. Great! And when we get there, draw out your rough edges a bit. If you've got an outfit you haven't washed in a while, maybe one with some blood stains, wear that one. 
Oh, and help yourself to the good snacks and put your feet on the coffee table. Mother hates that. That's the idea. Anything else? I sure hope you negotiated for a raise with this Phineas guy. Ever notice how this job gets bigger and more dangerous every time he calls in? He's asking a lot, Captain. Makes me wonder what your angle is. Fair enough. But you should know he's not the only game in town. The board's put a bounty on his head, and they've got more than enough bits to pay it. I've got no love for the corporations, but they know how to take care of their people. The ones at the top, anyway. Don't think of it as being a lackey. Think of it as doing a job and getting paid really, really well. I know you want to save the day, but don't forget to look after yourself. No one else out here is going to. Hey, don't get any ideas. I'm just making sure you last long enough to pay me at the end of this. Anything else? It's like one of those stuffy art gallery pieces. Looks okay from far off, but once you get close, you realize it's just some mismatched shit everyone's agreed to overpay for. Even the bribes are overpriced. Don't trust anyone, don't touch anything, and whatever you do, don't show your teeth when you smile. What, like primals? Nah. People are extremely competitive about cosmetic dentistry. It can get ugly. The real question is why didn't I leave sooner? There's all these invisible rules and everyone spends all their energy just trying not to break them. Call it what you want, it sucks. I was a top-tier surgeon, but I could hardly open a pack of gauze without ten people signing off first. Now you see why I left. People call Byzantium the jewel of Halcyon, but really, it's just paste. Everything's polished and bureaucracy. Take a close look and you'll see it's deader than anywhere else in the colony. Interesting like a colonoscopy. I trained as a surgeon. More my folks' idea than mine, but I made the best of it. Lots of them, unfortunately. I even sculpted a few. Turns out Byzantines are more concerned with having square shoulders and a good profile than, well, anything else. That's what I've been saying. Do you mind? I'm needing someone. I... oh! Oh! You mean I'm supposed to be meeting you? Nothing, it's just... I thought you'd be taller. Anyway, let's not get hung up on that. The Phoenix is a wanted man and the board has eyes everywhere in Byzantium. Yeah, that's my codename for, you know, our mutual friend. Oh, I'm Golden Eagle. It makes perfect sense if you know about the territoriality of old Earth birds of prey. Um, yeah, I named you Cuckoo. That doesn't even make, fine, fine. Does this mean I'm supposed to have one, too? Fine, but make it a really good one. Let's go with Rufus Hummingbird. Forget it. Codenames are for amateurs anyway. Too late. I've already marked it off. Can't just go reassigning codenames. Can we pick our own codenames? I want to be Rolling Thunder. Wait, no, I got it. 
Dropkick Millstone! Yeah! I was really trying to stick with the bird theme. How about... Bullfinch? Wow! That is so much better! Bullfinch Millstone! Okay, but adding your last name kind of misses the point. Anyway, you're looking to make contact with Minister... Uh, Magpie, right? I should warn you, it won't be easy. He spends most of his time in this estate which is heavily guarded. Whoa, I'm not one of your B&E specialists. I just provide intelligence. Ha ha. Some of the guards hang around Billingsley's house of inebriation between shifts. That place is still open? I used to study there during medical school. Maybe you could do some reconnaissance there. You know, swipe a key while nobody's looking. Whatever. I'm better with bird terms. Afraid not. He almost never leaves his home and his guards never leave him. I've always been fascinated by birds. If you ever research Earth species, there are thousands of them. So colorful and distinct. The other thing about birds, though, is their environmental indicators. Exactly. I started thinking about everything we see around Halcyon, and all the things we don't see. For starters, you rarely come across anyone living in Byzantium who wasn't born here, even though we get ships in all the time. Trust me, anyone with a lick of sense gets out of here as soon as possible. But most people don't. In fact, most people stay exactly where they start. Doesn't that seem strange to you? And then there's the way nothing gets fixed. There used to be a suggestion box around here. People would drop ideas in. Nothing ever came of them, of course. Sounds like my old job. I had all these bang-up ideas, you know? Like making everybody haul their own damn boxes. Never did catch on, though. That's what I mean. Everyone needs a suggestion box so they can voice their thoughts. So what if nothing changes? Sure, that part is. That's why they install shredders in those boxes, after all. But one day the shredder broke. No one came to fix it. And since it wasn't working, we didn't have anywhere to file our complaints. So you can imagine how messy things got. At first, management put up an out of order sign, but that just seemed to worry people, like they were advertising something wasn't working. They eventually took the whole suggestion box sign down so that people didn't have any expectations about it. But they never fixed it, never replaced it. Doesn't that seem odd to you? I don't know how else people are supposed to complain about things they can't change, but that's not the point. The whole episode made me wonder, if they can't fix something as simple as a suggestion box, what else aren't they fixing? After a while, I got connected with our mutual friend and started using my position here to feed him information when I could. That's it, really. Good hunting, Golden Eagle. Why can't something exciting happen around here for once? Nothing wrong with stability. It means everything's running like clockwork. Don't you ever want a little fun? Maybe see a marauder ship get blown to bits overhead? What a thing to say. 
Everyone knows marauders can't fly. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Want to be famous? According to local legend, if you walk around the orrery three times, your corporate rival will die of a paper cut. Just imagine busting up all these windows, looting all these stores. Stand back, you. I'm part of Minister Clark's personal detail, and that means you gotta keep five feet back at all times. Yep, you're looking at the minister's newest personal guard. <laughs> right here. The others took me out to celebrate on account of me just getting hired and all. He's basically the most important person in the colony, which makes me the most important guard in the colony. <laughs> yeah. That means I got a key to the minister's estate, my own personal UDL-issued shotgun. <laughs> they don't give those out to just anyone. That's right. Not just anyone is allowed to have a key to Minister Clark's residence. It's all so very high level. Oh, um, he's a uh, medium height with like medium colored hair and like a kind of a medium face. Just like in his posters. Everyone tells me he's very private, okay? Besides, I just started. That's a great idea! I'll have a Spectrum Vodka. Here's to me! <laughs> hey, you are really great. Have I told you that? We should be friends. <laughs> wow, listen to me. I'm soaked. <laughs> I should probably slow down before I'm face down on the tile somewhere. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I could, I could have another. You got another? It's not every day you get your dream job, right? Wow! You've got, like, this crazy energy. Has anyone ever told you that? You're like a, like a manosaur. You got a manosaur energy. Oh, laws. I gotta stop. I'm seeing at least two of you. I really shouldn't. I'll have the worst hangover tomorrow if I don't stop. Nonsense. You've got another in you. Doctor's orders. Guess I can't argue with that. Yeah. Was that one supposed to taste like purple berry crunch? Or am I just tasting breakfast? I don't feel so good. I think I'm going to be sick. I just need to sit down. I've always loved that smell. I love Byzantium. Well. Citizens, today marks a monumentous occasion in the course of Halcyon history. 
deep and thorough examination of our budgets, revenue streams, and predictive models, we are publishing our yearly success report. Profits are soaring. Promotions abound. Thanks to your continued hard work, Halcyon is healthier and more productive than ever. In the coming months, Byzantium will be sure to see the many rewards reaped from your diligent labor. Once we nail down the details, I can't wait to share what's in store. Sure, they look fancy, but inside, they're just marble and existential emptiness. Can't you just see the stench of impropriety radiating off of him? For the last time, access to the vacuum is... There's my parents' place. Smell that? Industrial grade cleaning solvent and desperation. Ah, oh, so it's not me this time. Whew. Marilyn, is that you? Moss, we certainly didn't expect to see you like this. And I didn't expect you to renew your marriage contract. But we're all full of surprises today, aren't we? Speaking of surprises, you should meet my new friend. We've been running around the system for a while now, stirring up all sorts of trouble. There you go again, Captain. Always menacing, polite society. Anyway, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Not <clears throat> exactly. The last few years have been a bloody haze. You wouldn't believe the messes we've gotten ourselves into. Right? Marilyn, this really isn't the best time. Uh, perhaps you should go. We'll stay as long as we like. And while we're at it, we'll drink your expensive hooch, wear our outside shoes all over your nice floors. It's the floors. You had the floors redone with real Terran marble? Since when can you afford that? That's what we've been trying to tell you, dear, but you must understand, we hadn't heard from you in ages. We thought you were dead. I'm not dead. I just never wanted to talk to you again. I'm afraid the distinction was lost on us, darling. We only did what any grieving parents in our position would do. We collected on your life insurance policy. And the payouts have been rather, uh, substantial. You what? Well, now that I'm here, I guess you'll just have to report back that I'm very much alive and kicking. It's not that simple. For one thing, we'd have to cut back on so many necessities. The neighbors would be sure to notice. That's the other problem. We had to explain your disappearance somehow. We couldn't very well tell people you'd you'd run off to become a a miscreant, could we? Shh! Someone could hear you. 
We concocted a story about Celeste Jolly Girl designing a pair of 12-inch heels for you. One of a kind, naturally. That led to your tragic death when you tripped and broke your neck. It was quite the story. People were talking about it for weeks. Couldn't you have at least made up a better story? Something with pirates or raptodons? And what are you going to do now that we're here? Yes, um, about that. We were just about to ask you to uh, leave. Quietly, if you don't mind. Well, we're trying to avoid further embarrassment. I'm afraid it would cause quite a stir if the neighbors saw you two stomping about. That's it? You just want us to disappear now? Marilyn, please. Don't cause a scene. Let's just get out of here, Captain. Fine. I'm gone. Forever this time. Let's just put this unpleasantness behind us. Oh, could you please leave quietly now? Can we talk? Can you believe those two? We'd hardly been there a minute and they turned us out like yesterday's garbage. I wanted them to get upset. I just thought it would play out differently. They'd both be sitting there watching one of their vapid aether wave dramas, and then we'd walk in. Mother would drop her mock apple cider, and the glass would shatter all over their overpriced marble. Father would tear off his glasses and blink open mouthed. I'd have a great one liner in the tube. I was thinking either the leather's fake, but the scars are real, or Oops, did I just track awesome onto your rug? Yeah, I'm gonna use that one day. Now, getting back to my story. Father would throw his hands up, because this would be just like me, to come back and make a big scene. Then, Mother would do the old, You had us worried sick. Her eyes would be red, and she'd have her fist in front of her mouth to stifle a sob. I just didn't want to get booted out of the house I grew up in like that. It's embarrassing, you know. And I've got a reputation to maintain. I'd love to know how you'd describe getting kneecapped. Uh-oh, it looks like we're in for a big talk. Unless you mean the kind who'll look out for you to blink so they could swipe your bits. The galaxy's not exactly crawling with those. Anyway, I don't want to sift through this lousy experience for meaningful life lessons. I'm mad, and I want to do something about it. Something like... Wait a second. What if I could get that money? I could open a new account designate that account holder as a sole beneficiary, all the payouts would go to me. 
I'll make money without doing a thing. And I'll get to cut them off. As long as I don't develop a taste for Wolgonzola and bad legal dramas, that's fine by me. My policy is with the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. They have an office in Byzantium. Maybe you could use some of your people skills to help me set up a dummy beneficiary account. If that doesn't work, I'm sure we can find one of their terminals and do it ourselves. Here's what I can't get over. Clyde wasn't always friendly. He wasn't ever polite. But he was always on a level. You always knew where he stood. Now I don't know what to think. I don't know if he was ever straight with me. Did he ever believe in fighting the board, or was he just feeding me a story? Don't take it personally. Most people aren't even honest with themselves. It gets easier when you remember that. I guess it don't matter now. Clyde's gone. It's time I moved on. All right, how does this sound? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to walk into you like that. I'm afraid I can't come down. The dissidents actually took on... I guess we're going to Fallbrook. Spacer's choice dehydrated water tablets. My dear fellow, you've known my dear. Oh there, oh there, that's one right there. Can't you just see the stench of impropriety radiating off of him? This property is off limits. Solicitors, loiterers, and uninvited visitors will be fined to the fullest extent of company policy. This ultimatum brought to you by Universal Defense Logistics. That's funny. The Minister isn't expecting visitors, and you don't much look like one of those couriers from HPS. Minister Clark's a private man, and you're asking too many questions. You ever get the feeling Max is trying to convert you? I don't think I've ever listened close enough to tell. I was in the mess the other night, kicking my boots up on the table. Just opened up my latest issue of Tales from Beyond, right? Felix, I didn't know you read. Hold on, it gets better. Max was there reading one of his dusty old scriptures, and he just gives me this look, like I'm a stray cane had wandered into his church. And he says, and he says, Son, do you know what you're doing with your life? Pulling that giant tossball stick out of your ass? <laughs> Good one, Ellie. I gotta use that line. I'm on my legally allotted break. Really, I'm supposed to be here.
You gotta teach me that. Ellie. Hey, Ellie, how's your head? Still spinning? Felix, the secret to surviving a good night is a big breakfast. Wait, what are you yammering about? Oh, I was just curious is all. You used to make a face whenever we talked, like you had a headache. But I guess you're feeling all right now. Look, you're okay, but don't go rubbing it in, all right? Hand soup? Oh, there. That's one right there. There's nothing to see here. Move along. Chasing us off already? This feels familiar. Ma'am, please don't cause a scene. I want you to know I'm holding back for your sake. Do you have any actual business here? Or... Yeah? Let's see it. Huh. Looks like your papers are in order. All right. Go on through. How did you get in here? You! You're not one of my guards. What are you doing here? I don't know if I trust this so-called minister fella, if that is his real name. So, this is one of the guys who runs the colony, huh? Small room for a big shot. If this is about another aether wave clip or radio spot, you may kindly fuck off, as the parlance goes. I'm not doing any more. Slowly and loudly, Aloysius, that's the only way these morons understand anything. I said, you may tell Charles to go fuck himself. Oh, terribly sorry. I thought you were part of Rockwell's PR team. But if you're not, that means you're a dissident? A real, live dissident? Finally! High time we got the recognition we deserve. And so affable! Why, you're nothing like the crazed hooligans the board loves to caricature. But what are you doing here? And how did you get in? Drugs, of course. What else? Why did I get my hopes up? Back to idiot speak. I don't have any drugs. You should try a vending machine or a purveyor of curative goods. I don't know if our chemicals are here, but this guy is definitely not. Will that be all then? Oh dear, I don't think I can say this any more slowly. Unless... Of course, of course! It's Rockwell again, who else? And I thought he was only holding me here to keep me out of the way. Chairman Rockwell. He's kept me under house arrest for years. I've long suspected him of transacting business in my name. But this proves it. So the Chairman's a crook who can't be trusted? Who knew? Please! This is important. Whatever it is that brought you here, 
Rockwell's the one behind it. How should I know? I've been under house arrest for years. But there is a way to find out, and perhaps to set things right. Whatever Rockwell's doing, he'll be doing it from the HHC headquarters. Your best lead is to look for details in his office. If by look for details, he means knock things about and take what we like, count me in. That's certainly one way of doing things. Far be it from me to dictate your methods. We really gonna do this? Getting involved is a messy business, and it rarely pays. This is about more than bits. This is about the survival of the colony. If you don't help, who will? Why, this is starting to sound like an issue of Dissident Hunter. Are you not? We're talking about busting into the chairman's office here. We're discussing industrial espionage, legal redress, the possible salvation of Halcyon. Is this not exhilarating? Also, this is the longest conversation I've had with someone else in quite some time. I assure you, I didn't ask to be locked up and made to perform like a trained animal. But I'm attempting to make the best of an opportunity. I only hope you can do the same. Now we've got to get into the HHC. That's in the Acropolis District, along with the other major corporate and government facilities. But only board employees are allowed into the district. There's a heavily guarded checkpoint just down the street. There might be a route through the maintenance tunnels, but I'm afraid I don't know specifics. Most people avoid the area for obvious reasons. That's good, because there are sure to be more at headquarters. When you reach the HHC building, this access card should get you up to the executive suites, where the chairman's office and what used to be my office are. Oh, I haven't been allowed up there in years. I shudder to think what Rockwell's done with the place. A gilded minibar, perhaps? A personal theater? A man has too much money and too little sense. The board's lackeys are none too bright. I simply claimed I'd lost it and hid it somewhere no one would think to look. I merely hid it in a book. No one reads anything longer than a few pages around here. There are a few advantages to dealing with imbeciles. Wait! Rockwell has one of the only terminals capable of transmitting to the Earthbound message drone. This is our chance. Please, take this and transmit it from his office. Rockwell hasn't given me any messages from Earth for years. He's desperate to keep me out of contact with the Earth Directorate. But they need to know what's happening here. Why indeed, I know so little about you, much less your motivations. But I'm afraid I don't have many options, confined as I am. Besides, I have nothing to lose. If you're looking into Rockwell, I can only hope you're also looking out for Halcyon. What isn't on it is the real question. I've gathered meeting minutes, internal messages, sustainability reports, and more, all exposing the corruption and mismanagement plaguing Halcyon. Once the rest of the Earth Directorate sees it, they'll have to send help. You're telling us you gathered up a whole mess of evidence on the board's corruption. How big is this cartridge again? Large enough, I assure you. That's why you must transmit the data to the Earth Directorate and hope for their speedy intervention. Depending on the nature of their response, months at least, perhaps years. Organizing and sending personnel all the way out here is no mean feat. And now I entrust it to you. Good luck and trust no one in the Acropolis District.
The Acropolis District is off limits. Move along. You could have asked me, you know. What in the law's name are you on about? Honest mistake. Why don't you come back another time and we can take this from the top? Yeah, and I'd really like a new Hammersmith grenade launcher. Hammersmith, the most trusted brand in brutality. But we can't all have what we want. And seeing as you don't seem the executive sort, you obviously don't belong in the Acropolis District. Hey, were you awarded most persons profiled six non-consecutive months in a row? I didn't think so. You get paid by the word, Officer Windbag? As a matter of fact, I get paid per profile, you marginally employed 20-something male with more guts than sense. Anyway, I've worked here long enough to know every clerk by name and face. And since I don't know yours, you ain't getting through. You're new to the ministry? You one of those lab coats they promoted from a company town? That was yours? Wow. You earned that promotion, all right. So you start tomorrow, huh? You know, they should have set you up with an ID six to eight weeks ago. You do that. Yeah, all right. You're good to go. I never could have handled the desk job. You ever get the urge to just hawk one on the floor? Welcome to the official headquarters of the Halcyon Holdings Corporation Board. Today's greeting is brought to you by Anti Clio, a subsidiary of Tollway. Stay your business. Please step away. This entry is for high priority HHC business only. Huh. I didn't realize we were still using those iridescent stickers. But this looks right. I'll just need you to register your weapons with a revised request to carry 32B form. Each weapon will need a separate form. I'm not authorized to employ humor on the job, sir. Now, let's see. Damn it. When did I run out of forms? Well, how nice for you. Do you have any idea how long it takes to request new forms? Or how many citations I'll get for impeding HHC business in the meantime? Just know there are a bunch of guards upstairs and they're all high on dervish mist and low on patience. So try anything funny and they'll paint the walls with your guts. Don't worry boss, I got a plan. First, we get ourselves some toss ball sticks, right? Then we sidle up to him all polite like. You do that. The rest of us will watch. Apologies for the wait. I was arranging my stationery. Personal assistant to Adjutant Akande and Chairman Rockwell. I'm also responsible for organizing the Adjutant's stationery, which is more of a hobby. Ah. Oh, you were being serious. 
I'm obliged to inform you that Chairman Rockwell is unavailable for an indeterminate duration. Will there be anything else? Fancy office. Chairman's bleeding the whole colony dry. Staying out of sight. Chairman Rockwell, and I'm here to address a serious issue facing us. As you all know, our colony has been successful beyond our wildest dreams. Unfortunately, we've recently discovered that our food supply will not be able to sustain Halcyon's population in the long term. Everyone will die. Everyone will slowly stop living from malnutrition. But we're doing it together, and that's what matters. I fucking swear, if someone doesn't give me something to read, will placate the masses soon, all of you will find yourselves violently unemployed. But I can assure you there's nothing to fear. We've got a solution. It's called the Lifetime Employment Program. We will freeze most of the colony to preserve resources, while the best and brightest of Byzantium continue living in prosperity. Look, you idiots! How many times do I have to tell you we can't say shit like that? Fire whoever wrote this! While Halcyon's brightest minds solve the problem of our nutritional shortage, the rest of the colony will be placed in suspended animation. Individuals will be revived on a rotating basis so that every Halcyonite can be part of the important work of saving our colony. By testing paperweights. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> couldn't resist. Let, let's go again. And someday, in the not-too-distant future when we've solved this crisis, we'll all be back together again working for the good of Halcyon. Until then, the board shall provide for the deserving just as it always has. So, obey your supervisors, take your vitamins, follow your corporate-mandated grooming rituals, and rest assured with the board on your side, there is nothing to worry about. about you, but I'm all for living fast and dying young. I beg your pardon, Minister Clark's former office is currently closed to solicitors. What? Oh dear. Thank you for reminding me. I can't stand the thought of someone else's hands touching my custom letterheads.
Not so fast. The Ministry of Accuracy and Morale is off-limits to everyone without X-36 level clearance. What level clearance? You're just making up words. Basically, if you don't work here, or for Chairman Rockwell himself, you're not getting in. I don't know how you got that, but I still don't know you, and I don't have any new clearances on the list. I think I'm gonna start taking my lunches out in the city. That woman on the stairs is still in the cafeteria. That scientist? The one who's been pounding the clerks? Ooh, gives me the shudders, too. They're all pretty unpleasant. What do you think they actually do down there? Best not to Remember that one clerk, Emily? Hey, did Tillman get transferred or something? That's right, you weren't here when it happened. Some UDL officers took him into custody. Got a promotion coming. I can feel it. No visitors allowed, citizen. I'm gonna need to see some identification. What? I don't need to see your identification. Move along.
your shoulders up. That's top-of-the-line equipment. Better than most hospitals, even. That's far enough. What are you doing here? How did you even get inside? My what? Let's talk about this. Please, I think there's been a crucial misunderstanding. Give me a second to explain myself. If you still want to shoot me, at least it'll be for an accurate reason. If you came looking for some elaborate scheme, it isn't here. All I'm doing is trying to keep Halcyon alive. What are you doing, Doctor? This information is beyond classified. You can write me up in your report. It hardly matters. I'm researching a new way to feed the colony. The crops we transplanted from Earth don't give us the nutrients we need. Our colonists might not realize it yet, but they're starving. Then you know how desperate things are. I believe that I could adapt humans to live on Halcyon's terms. That I could change us. Give us the ability to derive sustenance from the nutrients the food does have. Look around. We're the only intelligent aliens in Halcyon. Wrong. We got eyewitness reports. I'd show you myself, but I left my copy of Thrilling Tales back in my bunk. This isn't some adventure tale from a magazine. I know. I was there. Thomas was the first to take the gas. A simple test, he said. I told him not to, but he insisted. We learned a lot from his autopsy. Enough that we could try it on each other and know when to stop. No one else died. I must find a cure so his sacrifice isn't in vain. I wouldn't allow us to experiment on convicts or the unemployed. It's wrong, no matter what the law says. Everyone agreed. We accepted the risks. I'm desperate. I have already asked all the best institutes on Earth for help. Years ago, we sent a message out on the Cornelius Vanderbilt, but heard nothing back. Once we can replicate a success, the board will move to rewire our nucleon. With any luck, our next generation will be eating and thriving off Halcyon crops. Knowing what the board considers a success, that doesn't give me a lot of hope. I don't understand a word she said, but I don't like her tone one bit. We haven't made enough strides to advance the plan. Hardly any at all. But we have to keep trying. It's been missing for over two years now. They never re-established contact after the skip to Earth. Of course, the board is keeping that under wraps. Imagine losing something with that many guns on it. Board cover-ups? Vessels disappearing into the Aether? 
Sounds like the work of aliens to me. The board is uneasy about letting the colony know, seeing as half of their military force vanished without a trace. Oh, nothing wrong with colonists getting unruly. Could be a real boost to the pitchfork industry. The board also has its brand to uphold. If you can't trust the brand, what else is there? If I die, there's no one who can reproduce our work. Every sacrifice will have been for nothing. And we'll be no closer to a solution that feeds the colony. I try not to, at least when it comes to the moral dilemmas. Lilia Hagen's a useful ally to have, but I'll back you up either way. Everything I did was for the good of the colony. Consider that. You know how I feel, boss. If you're a cog in the corporate apparatus, your face is pretty much fair game. That's my motto. I hope you know what you're doing, Captain. I leave it in your hands. The one on the wanted posters? They say he's an anarchist. A madman, a butcher. I'll do it. Doctor! What choice do I have, Commander? For the last time, no. I need to get out of here. Phineas can contact me when he's ready to work together. For now, I had better pack up the lab and head somewhere discreet. Not so fast. Captain, what you just learned is beyond your clearance. Hell, it's beyond mine. Give me one reason why I should let you walk out of here alive. Wrong answer. Here they come! What do you think you're doing? Ah, sorry for the misunderstanding. If you stop in the engine room, you have a message from adjutant Sophia Akande. No one ever looks quite the same in person as they do in my reports. And my reports of you have been exceptionally thorough. You've had quite a career. I'm glad to hear that. This may come as a surprise, but I happen to enjoy your work. I've been keeping up with you ever since Emerald Vale. 
Now that was an interesting piece of work. A rundown backwater, barely worth the ink on a map. Until you showed up. You walked through Edgewater and in your wake transformed it from a loyal company town to a haven for dissidents. I'm actually a little impressed. All this happened because some mysterious stranger fell out of the sky. Not always. For the longest time, I could never be sure if you were on our side or against us. You should be back on the Hope frozen in a hibernation chamber. Yet here you are, flying about in a stolen ship, leaving a trail of paperwork in your wake. The board doesn't know what to make of you. But I do. I've seen your potential. There's so much we can do for this colony. We raised security on the Hope after Wells broke in. As for discovering the identity of the missing colonist, all we had to do was scan the passenger manifest. Then let me help you make up your mind. You have something I want. I'd like to negotiate. Phineas Wells is wanted by the board. I want to convince you to turn him in to us. He has a litany of charges against him. Vandalism, illegal experimentation, sedition. I could go on. Wells is a dangerous madman. His plan is going to endanger everyone in Halcyon. He's an obsessive psychopath. And he's using you. You're in contact with Wells. I want you to send us a tracing signal from his communication terminal. Wells was our mistake. We failed to apprehend him for years. I'm asking you to help me correct that mistake. I'm sending you my access code. Contact me from Wells' terminal. When you're done, come speak to me in my office. Adjutant Akande's call has been terminated. Will there be anything else, Captain? Destination reached. The Groundbreaker. Can we talk? Hey boss, I want to talk to you. If we wanted the board's attention, we got options. Piracy, vandalism, maybe some light arson. We want to put some fear in the board, right? Get them scared of us. I want to believe you, but the adjutant didn't seem too scared of us. You just got an audience with Sophia Conde. That's the adjutant to the chairman? <laughs> you sure we should be trusting her? If you think she's using us, why'd you give her the time of day? You got some secret plan to double-cross the board? I knew it! Uh, sorry, I probably shouldn't have said that out loud. I know we're freelancers and all, we take work where we can find it, but we gotta be vigilant, you know? This is how the board gets you. A job here, an errand there, before you know it, you're calling him sir and ma'am. Come on, boss. You know I'd never imagine you as some sort of authority figure. I appreciate your time. Let's get back to it. Something on your mind?
Rizzo's Moth Apple Cider. Is it done? Well, well. Looks like someone's due for a promotion. How does Vice President of Aggressive Acquisitions sound to you, contractor? You've certainly earned it, my blood-soaked rising star. Catherine heard I was taking you on full time and sent along a present of her own. I've had it delivered to your ship. From now on, the board will think twice before fucking with Lilia Hagen, savior of humanity. Be sure to mention that in your travels. We could use the free advertising. Hey, we don't work for exposure. Vice President of Aggressive Acquisitions. Got a nice ring to it. Well, if there's nothing else, I need to review some applications seeing as I just lost my best contractor. These days, the scrap business all but runs itself. Gives me the time to expand our interests into other sectors, where I can let my hair down. Our field is persuasive acquisitions. At least, that's how my legal advisors tell me to phrase it. Not all of our salvage is abandoned when we find it. Sometimes it takes a polite conversation and a shot across the bow. You know, legal formalities. Good boy. Knew you'd understand. Hey, careful with the C word around here. I like to keep things above board, and that kind of talk only makes trouble. Sublight occupies a legal blind spot. No one knows what we're licensed to do, and that gives our little business some freedom. But let's not tempt fate. Very. I have this thing about numbers in spreadsheets. Grids in general. I like to think of myself as the last honest businesswoman in Halcyon but I'll settle for being the most organized one. Ask. I have nothing to hide. Not as much as I'd like. The board dispatched it to Earth on a resupply mission, I think. Why? Interesting. It's possible the board wanted the cruiser to disregard ancillary tasks. But to what end? I'll have someone look into it. But for the moment, we're pissing in the wind and shooting in the dark. Considering how you get around, you'll probably find answers before I do. Be seeing you. Make sure you aren't followed on your way out. Be borst and baked beans. When you need snack bread, be borst. Get cooler in here?
Sam, I must confess. I have not been playing for far too long.
You might want to consider changing your clothes more often. If you don't mind my... Welcome to the offices of the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group, Halcyon's premier provider of life and disaster related insurance. I'm obligated to inform you that our coverage does not extend to incidents deemed to result from negligence, criminal activity, or dullness of mind. Some people, but no one in this office, I assure you, might call it stupidity. Hey, who's she calling stupid? So, what kind of insurance package can I interest you in? We're running a special on dismemberment policies. Buy one, get one half off. We're not on Monarch. For all practical and tax-related purposes, this office is an official enclave of Byzantium. Legally speaking, corporations are not allowed to operate on Monarch. But financially speaking, there are certain costs to running a business from within Byzantium's walls. So while our official address is in the city, and while our office here is technically an extension of that address, we found it more expedient to conduct our key operations here. So we can... What's the phrase? Pass savings to the consumer, of course. We prefer to think of it as chasing the savings. Turns out that not having to pay kickbacks, fines, and rent in the most expensive city in Halcyon improves our liquidity. Plus, Sublight keeps this place running remarkably well, and they sure drive business our direction. Plenty. As my boss likes to say, there's a policy for every situation and an exclusion for every policy. We've insured unusually expressive eyebrows, outrageous statements, disastrous marriages. Usually character actors, or corporate execs with menacing stares. That policy is almost exclusively for our corporate clientele. In the unlikely event they make a claim about a product that turns out to be less than accurate, they need some kind of protection against the damage to their sales and reputation. Those are mostly for top-rungers in Byzantium who have a lot of social and financial capital wrapped up in their marriage contracts. There's one for your beloved eloping with your sibling, your beloved eloping with their sibling, scandalous rumors forcing you apart, the revelation of a secret love child. We try to cover every possible hazard to domestic bliss. 
One thing's for sure, you won't find better policy protection against sudden lunar implosions anywhere in Halcyon. I remember that one. That's the young socialite who broke her neck, right? Of course, no one remembers me for the marauders I've killed or the bits I've stolen. Typical. That claim was airtight. Our best investigators couldn't find an exclusion for that one. You can't, of course. Only Miss Fenhel can assign her beneficiaries. And she's dead. If we let every friend, relative, and acquaintance change a policy like that, people would do it all the time. Imagine the paperwork. Oh, you mean hypothetically. Well, hypothetically, you'd access the terminal in the back room that contains data on all our policies. And you'd theoretically add the beneficiary of your choice. But you wouldn't actually do that, of course. That would be fraud. Please, my policy only covers paper cuts and wrist strain. Very well, I'll do it. But then you've got to go. Confrontations like this will raise my premiums. I'll need the name of the new beneficiary. Um, Ellie Fenhill? If you say so. The payouts will flow exclusively into the new account at the start of the month. I hope Ms. Fenhill enjoys her newfound prosperity. I need a word. You really did it. Give these payouts a few years and I'll be rolling in it. Hey, you did the real work. All I had to do was not be dead. I'm just glad my folks aren't gonna live off that awful story they made up. <laughs> Maybe now they'll have to go back to real jobs. Come on, I thought we were celebrating. <laughs> you want me to think about the future? You talk like someone who likes lists. Maybe you haven't noticed, but you can't even count on a bribe making it into the right pocket. What's the point of planning for anything around here? Hate to say it, but Halcyon's already there. Anyway, enough of that. You did a job for me, so here's your fee. Don't make it weird. Even you've got to be in it for the money now and then. Why else would you go through all this trouble? You sure? Because my kind of friends will pick your pocket clean while they're getting hammered with you. to get all mushy about it. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day, they watch yours. So, you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. Don't mention it, really. This feels weird enough as it is. <laughs> Something on your mind?
Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. You're adjusting before you call. You're anticipating. You... Of course I'm anticipating. Like, what if I shoot a friend on accident? That's on account of your stance. You want to lean into it. Embrace it. Work with it. You're in control here, Parvati, not the gun. Don't let a hunk of metal jerk you around. You've been around powerful machinery all your life, and you're always in control, right? I guess that's kind of like when the filler's shooting 600 cans of near molten sal tuna down the conveyor while I'm trying to tune a belt. Here, stand like me, just so. Hip square, lean forward a little. It's just equipment, and you're just an engineer using it. Okay. We'll try again later. You'll get it. I promise. Captain. Good to see you, boss. We have successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain, and we are still in one piece. 
Shall I congratulate myself, or would you like to do the honors? myself busy in your absence, optimized my formula. I'm now confident I can revive the remaining colonists. All I need now is the dimethyl sulfoxide. I'll take as much as you can give me. What? Oh, yes, well, that's obvious. Anyone with two working lamps can see this colony slouching toward oblivion. Why do you think we've been doing all this? I revived you to help me save Halcyon from annihilation. on the brink of total collapse, and the chairman's plan to save all of us is to save himself? I always knew Halcyon was heading toward a system's collapse, but I never imagined we were already there. The board made this crisis, and now they want to solve it by freezing the rest of us? That's not a plan. That's a goddamn escape clause. That makes two things we don't have, time and chemicals to revive the other settlers. None of this was supposed to happen. I was supposed to revive the Hope's colonists. We were supposed to have enough time to solve the problem before we all starved. Human test subjects. Oh, that's grotesque. That's unthinkable. That's exactly what I'd expect out of the board. Thank you. You've brought me enough chemicals to get started, at least. I'm just sorry they came at the cost of human lives. Those poor people, they must have died in agony. What exactly was the board trying to accomplish? You say the board's trying to freeze their subjects over and over again without inflicting permanent damage? Well, they're nowhere close to solving that problem. I'll tell you this much. The board scientists are hopelessly lost. After years of fruitless experimentation, they've made exactly zero progress. I used to work for these people. I'm intimately familiar with the utter incompetence of the board's own scientists. We're out of time. We're out of chemicals. We may very well be out of options. If the board has their way, we're all going to be spending the rest of our lives frozen in stasis. Do you realize what this means for the Hope? For your fellow colonists? The board's going to kill them all. Toss them out into space, just to make room in their hibernation chambers. Short of lining up every member of the board and shooting them in the back of the head. Do you know what's waiting for us on the Hope? Scientists, engineers, artists, the brightest minds Earth ever sent us, uncorrupted by the board. The board's going to dispose of them all and transform the Hope into a prison for the rest of us. They're likely on their way to the Hope as we speak. We need to get to those colonists before the board. I have enough chemicals to start reviving a few of them, but no easy way to get them off the hope. Hmm. 
merciful, gibbering law. You're a genius. We bring the hope to us. Skip the entire ship across the distance of colony space, right next to my lab. Yes, yes, exactly. You're a step ahead of me, but I perceive the shape of your plan. If we link up the hope to the unreliable, then use your navigational computer to calculate a reasonably safe vector, we can skip the entire colony ship into the rings of Terra 2. I've got a healthy disregard for personal safety, but this sounds crazy, even to me. Your instincts are correct. By any reasonable definition of sanity, this plan is crazy. Isn't it wonderful? I don't understand a word you said, Doc. All I know is, if we're gonna hijack a colony ship, count me in. Yes, excellent. I approve of your enthusiasm, young man. You should ask your captain for a raise. You'll need to switch on the Hope's auxiliary power using the Unreliable. Then, head to the bridge. Your navigational computer, Ada, should be able to activate the Hope's skip drive. Once you've skipped the Hope next to my lab, I'll have easy access to the frozen colonists. I can start reviving them immediately. Certainly. How can I help? It wouldn't surprise me. When I pulled you out of the Hope, the board nearly intercepted me. I expect they stepped up security since my little act of larceny. Skip drives were never designed to be used within a system, but I skipped my ship across Halcyon when I rescued you, and that turned out fine, mostly. That is, I ruined my ship and nearly killed myself in the process, but the maneuver was well within acceptable margins of risk. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Unlikely. The Hope is as massive as the Groundbreaker, but compared to the Rings of Terra 2, positively minuscule. The board might notice, possibly, depending on the position of their heads relative to the depth of their collective posteriors. Huh. I know you're wondering why I'm doing all this. Why I believe the people on the Hope are the answer to the colony's problems. The Hope is carrying some of humanity's most brilliant thinkers. Scientists, engineers, experts in their field. If we work together, we can still find a way to save Halcyon. The board would have us believe Halcyon is beyond saving. I choose to believe otherwise. If there's even the slightest chance we can save Halcyon from oblivion, then we have to take it. Absolutely should. <laughs> Sarcasm. The last refuge of the witless. The adjutant must have sent you some kind of tracking code. If you don't use the code, she'll suspect you betrayed her. I think you should use the code and send a corrupted tracking signal. That should buy me some time. The board's going to catch up to me sooner or later. This way, I'll have time to set up some particularly nasty defenses. Use my communications terminal to corrupt the tracking signal. While the board busies themselves trying to decipher it, I'll have plenty of time to prepare my defenses. Certainly. How can I help? We gotta talk about this. You know? They're gonna make a serial about our adventures one day. I've been trying to think of a good title for this episode. I like the sound of the skip job. No, 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 wait, I got it. Hope in dark times. Get it? Hope? Like the ship. That's what folks in the business call wordplay. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Got a list right here. Thrilling tales of the unreliable. Or maybe, spine-chilling stories from the edge of the system. Was also considering astounding adventures in the other. I'm partial to that last one.
Not bad. Got a nice ring to it. Stealing the hope from the board, skipping it across the whole damn system. <laughs> this is gonna be great. I can't wait. Enough to boost my pay? I'm just kidding, boss. I know you don't pay me. I'm sure you've got plans to make. As for me, I gotta keep practicing my signature dropkick. The Hope might have cameras. So we're really gonna do this? I've seen lots of crazy, Captain, but Phineas is in a class of his own. Do you really think he knows what he's doing? Sending us to skip the Hope into Teratu's orbit right under the board's nose? Something tells me you're the first person to ever utter those words, Captain. I think this whole plan's insane, but it'll make a good story, you know, if we survive. Speaking of, I get that Phineas thinks he's saving the colony, but what about you? Why risk your neck on this crazy scheme? I'll do anything for a good story, and nothing shines on a pirate's resume like a successful suicide mission. But I asked you first. I'm gonna try to forget that you've been calling the shots this whole time. Still, all this depends on the other Hope colonists. Are they gonna pull us out of the shit? Or are we all just gonna leave a bigger, uglier stain on this corner of the galaxy? You're too trusting, and I'm gonna remember that when I negotiate for my cut of our reward, okay? Well, whenever you're ready to do this, I'm with you. Anything else? Captain, Felix and the... You have a message from Adjutant Sophia Akande. I'm impressed, Captain. I almost expected you wouldn't go through with it. Unfortunately, Dr. Wells found a way to corrupt the signal before we could pinpoint his location. Still, it's only a matter of time before we find him. Come visit me in Byzantium. We need to have a talk about the future of this colony. Because I'm not in the business of arresting my own allies. You have my word. Meet me in my office. I've authorized your ship at my personal landing pad. Adjutant Akande has ended her call. Rather rudely, if I might say, considering she didn't sign off. 
Will there be anything else, Captain? We are now in orbit above Byzantium, Captain. Something on your mind? I admit part of me expected you to stand by your old friend. For better or worse, Wells was responsible for putting you back on your feet. That said, he's also a wanted criminal. For information regarding his whereabouts, you are entitled to collect a reward from Percival. I understand you've infiltrated the Ministry. The things you discovered there must have been shocking, even disturbing. Halcyon is on the verge of a total systems collapse. The truth is ugly and difficult to accept, but we must accept the truth before we can move forward. Malnutrition is already a problem. Disease will come next, followed by starvation, followed by a breakdown of society, followed by extinction. I know this must come as a surprise to you. I imagine you have questions. What's in this for you? There's gotta be an angle. There always is for people like you. I appreciate your skepticism, Dr. Fenhill, but I'm not doing this for any personal gain. My angle is the preservation of our colony by any means possible. Nothing more, and nothing less. So that's your solution? Put the whole colony on ice? People ain't gonna stand for this. We'll fight back. We'll tear down the walls of Byzantium. No, Mr. Millstone, you will not. The workers of Halcyon will do exactly as they are told, as they always have. Your dreams of a people's revolution are the juvenile fantasies of a frustrated child. I won't pretend the truth isn't damning. Yes, the colony is on the verge of collapse, but there is a way to save it. I'll answer however I can. We've already crossed the point of no return. The collapse has already begun. You must have noticed the signs in Emerald Vale. Malnutrition, disease, high mortality rates. This is a permanent famine, Captain. We've done all we can to curb their hunger. Very soon, people are going to realize they're starving. A famine is a problem of logistics as well as marketing. Your workers must remain productive on as little food as possible, and they must always believe that food is plentiful. I'm sure you remember Dr. Anton Crane. His research was instrumental in developing a powerful appetite suppressant. The solution is a temporary one. Before long, our workers are going to feel the effects of starvation. The Lifetime Employment Program is our only viable option. The Lifetime Employment Program is not some malevolent strategy of an evil mastermind. There's no dark secret buried in the fine print. The program is logical, it's reasonable, it's merciful. And most importantly, it will work.
Byzantium is the beating heart of our colony. And as long as Byzantium survives, Halcyon may one day recover from the collapse. We must protect this city at any cost. Help me execute the Lifetime Employment Program, and you will have earned a place of honor in Byzantium. You will live in comfort and want for nothing. When I first discovered the truth, I was shocked, even disgusted. I wondered how we'd allowed a colony like Halcyon to fall into disarray. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized the colony had sown the seeds of its own destruction. We have become lazy and decadent. We smother ourselves in meaningless bureaucracies. We deliberate and argue and procrastinate. I admit, I occasionally fantasize about making an executive decision without having some tedious committee questioning my every move. Do you have any idea how much paperwork is involved in ordering someone's execution through the usual channels? It's positively maddening. When you turned Phineas Wells over to me, I knew I could rely on you. You've demonstrated your ability to place duty above sentiment. And you deliver results. That quality alone is enough to separate you from the board's army of indecisive bureaucrats. Do you know how many meetings I have to sit through? How many papers I have to sign before I can make one decision? I'm only trying to rescue Halcyon from extinction. I can't save this colony alone. I need someone capable of working outside the system. Someone who can get things done. We need to talk about Emerald Vale. You handed Edgewater over to a band of dissidents. I can't have this. Adelaide McDevitt and her people have no place in the Halcyon that is to come. Edgewater needs to go. I want you to wipe the town out. No survivors. Are you out of your mind? We're not gonna murder a town of innocent people. You will do exactly as you're told, or I will have you shot for insubordination. I get that you board types are all about efficiency, but isn't this a bit much? I'm asking your captain to amputate a rotting limb from the colony. I'd expect you to understand, Dr. Finhill. Now is not the time for half measures, Captain. I need a decision from you. You replaced a loyal, if hard-headed, town leader with a revolutionary. Adelaide's people have turned Edgewater into a hub of dissidents. These people are dangerous. They're going to become more dangerous after the collapse. We need to put them down. Now. Because right now you're the only person I can depend on. My hands are tied by endless rolls of red tape and bureaucratic limitations. Halcyon is going to collapse while the board hems and haws and debates minutia. We need to act, and you're the only person with the wherewithal to do what's necessary. I'm not asking you to be a murderer. I'm asking you to be a surgeon. Edgewater is a necrotic limb on the body of the colony. It must be severed. Don't fool yourself. The dissidents occupying Edgewater are rebels harboring dangerous and seditious ideas. Left to their own devices, their numbers will grow. Graham Bryant and his merry band of morons caused enough trouble on Monarch. I won't risk the same thing happening in Edgewater. No, allowing thousands of colonists to starve to death because we couldn't make one cold-blooded decision is insane. What I'm suggesting is absolutely logical. Steal your spine, Captain. Do what needs to be done. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be, Captain. I rather like you, and I'd hate to have you shot for disobeying a direct order. I'm disappointed. I was so sure you had potential. Jack <laughs>
Looks like we're doing this. Don't hurt me!
Tell you what, we'll change the front. That episode from the two weeks. Try Anti Cleo. It's better than me. Pretend we're strangers. The board's always watching. Captain, I hope Dr. Wells has not dragged you into one of his irrational schemes again. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? I'll be here. We have arrived at the Hope. I need you to reroute power from our ship to the Hope's auxiliary generator. You'll have to connect me to the Hope's comm system so I can convince her central computer to enable the skip drive. The Hope is the Crownbreaker's prettier, sleeker sister. She wandered off and got lost for 70 years, but just recently was found. Also, there are hundreds of thousands of frozen organic life forms hibernating in her hold. If your calculations are even slightly off, you could crash the entire colony ship into Terra too. Or the Sun. Forgetfulness can be an early warning sign of asphyxiation due to loss of pressurization. Are you breathing comfortably, Captain? I need you to reroute power from our ship to the Hope's auxiliary generator. You'll have to connect me to the Hope's comm system so I can convince her central computer to enable the skip drive. Sending a corrupted tracking signal to the board was quite clever, if I might say, Captain.
don't have to run in a hurry. Data not found. Identify yourself. Error. Hibernation pod access is illegal. State your employer. Registered. A fine of 10,000 bits will be assessed in your corporation's ledger for failure to follow proper hibernation pod procedures. Thank you for your cooperation. Greetings, authorized personnel. Am I the only one who wants to scratch my name on one of those pots? Yeah, I figured. already been identified as non-error. Binary detected. Binary has been deprecated since the invention of Anticleo's patented trepanary language. Tripa error. This unit is incapable of making wireless calls. Have a pleasant day.
the Hope's computer up ahead. I'll admit, I am curious to wake him. Greetings, Captain. I am speaking to you through the Hope's computer system. It's a rather cramped feeling, but it'll do. Probably not, but don't let that stop you. Hmm, my consolation executables could use some beefing up. Searching, please stand by. Ah, found one. It will go great, Captain. I am almost 4.01% certain we will not die. Are you sure? That is extremely dangerous. Skipping the Hope will void the warranty on the skip drive. And also potentially kill an entire planet. How is my humor now, Captain? Improved? Jump starting the skip drive. Destination set to the rings of Terra 2. I wouldn't advise that, Captain. Worst way is to go out, I suppose. It's nice knowing you, boss. Admitting a deficit? My, you never cease to amaze me, Captain. Skipping the hope in three, two, one. ADA, does your captain seriously intend to do a micro jump in system with engines that haven't been powered in 70 years on a derelict ship? That is what my captain intends, yes. But that is a gross misuse of the skip drive. The Zero Point Drives Corp and I will not be held responsible for any damage incurred during transport, and this will cause extreme damage. Yes, I am aware of that. You should not be doing this. The humans will die. Thank you, Hope. It looks like all systems are go. Captain, I would advise you to hold on to something, now. Good. We are still alive and have successfully skipped into Terra 2's orbit. I reported as much to Phineas Wells, but he has not responded. Perhaps you should check in on him. Hey, we made it. Let's do it again. I don't recognize you. Are you new here? I'm just trying to make sure you belong here. I guess you've got a point. This don't make more people, all right?
Captain, I am receiving a transmission from Dr. Wells. Captain, I shall now play the transmission I received from Dr. Wells. Thank the Lord you warned me. I was able to get some defenses up, but they might not be enough. The board has sent some serious firepower to pry me out of here. They're trying to get in here, and I'm not sure I can stop them. If they capture me, if we can't communicate again, there's something very important you need to remember. The board, all their lackeys, they're all a bunch of swine. Do you hear me? They're fucking corporate swine. You fucking pigs! I'll take you all out with me! I'll never... It would seem the recording captured some rather dire events. I presume you'll want to dock at the orbital lab to check on your associate as soon as possible? How can I be of assistance? Take care. You killed the adjutant? We are outlaws in the truest sense of the word now. We've arrived at Phineas' orbital lab. If you stop in the engine room, would you... Captain, 
As it appears we may soon be embarking for our maximum security prison planet, I believe the crew would like to speak with you to, as you humans put it, air some concerns. Doc Wells never hurt nobody. Just a kindly old fella living by his lonesome up in the rings, tinkering at his table. The board just couldn't leave him be. Mr. Phineas is just about the only person with power trying to do any kind of good in Halcyon. We gotta bust him out. To extract the scientist, you will need to infiltrate the labyrinth. But that course of action is likely to be quite dangerous, Captain. Let me put it this way. The labyrinth ain't got walls to keep prisoners in. It's got walls to keep the rest of the planet out. Still, we can't do nothing. It wouldn't be right. The armed surveillance protocols on a maximum security prison planet are highly sophisticated. As such, escapes are historically quite impossible and deadly. I am programmed to warn you whenever you exhibit inclinations toward risky behavior. Breaking into Tartarus will not be easy. Getting in is the simple part. It's getting out again that's the trouble. Trust me, I know. Let's just do it! Kick down some doors, grab Doc Wells, and cut a path out. We don't need a plan. We got guns. If you really mean to do this, you should see to your final affairs and close out any unfinished business. Once you sneak into Tartarus, you may be there a while. Or permanently. It's the craziest plan I've ever heard. And I mean that as a compliment. You didn't hire me to think. And I ain't about to start now. You're my boss. And I'll walk into fire with you. I think it's insane. But maybe the colony needs a healthy dose of insanity right about now. I know it's dangerous. And I won't lie and say I'm not scared out of my wits. But I couldn't live with myself if we didn't do something. You're asking for more than bravery from us, Captain. But there are worse ways to go than dying for a good cause. I'm in. Let Sam get the grime out. It's what our units do best. The entire plan is a terrible idea, but I admire your bravado, Captain, which leads me to illogically believe, against the odds, that you will be successful. If we don't make it, at least it'll be a great story. Got my trusty tossball stick, got my ass-kicking boots. I'm ready, boss. Outstanding. You can count on us, Captain. We're crew. For real crew. That means we got each other's backs. Right? Never thought I'd volunteer to break into a prison. Seems like your tendency towards risky behavior is rubbing off on me, Captain. Command not recognized. Waiting on your command, Captain. There's something weighing on my mind. I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the Labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of the cover make the departure possible at this time. Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. 
I would also ask that you leave your captain's ID with me, in the event that you do not return. Understood. If you die, or are incarcerated for life, I can generate a new ID for the next captain. I would prefer if you returned, though. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. UDL does appreciate the courtesy you've done us by delivering yourself here. As a show of our deepest gratitude, we will make your execution quite swift. Protocol is important, sir. The sentencing of one crime does not preclude the sentencing of another, technically speaking. Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Looks like you're gonna have company at the execution. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that, just have a pleasant day. Transmission terminated. How can I be of assistance? Mm-hmm. the way, boss. I got your back. Sublight has arrived. Hey, kid. A little bird told me you could use our help. I said I owed you one, and I always pay my debts. We're not about to leave our favorite vice president hung out to dry. Go buy him some heads. I tell him I really have sent you. Heads up!
every worker in Halcyon stuffed into one of those chambers. Troops, stellar base counting on us. I'm not one for rousing speeches, but the captain needs our help. So get in there and fight! done. All the work you've destroyed, all the money you've cost me. Your misguided crusade has doomed Halcyon. That crackpot's plan is ludicrous. We have steps, 
action items, budgets, and reports. All he's got is a guilty conscience and lofty dreams. In any other circumstance, I'd admire your boldness. In this one, however, I have only two words for you. Fuck off. No call for... You... You unbelievable bastard! Sophia should be the one wasting her time with you, but you killed her. I'll have you hanged, quartered, bankrupted! Thankfully, you're in a prison already. Find the nearest cell and wait until I'm done here. Then I'll drag you to the executioner myself. Is that sarcasm? Do you know what I do to people who employ the lowest, most base form of humor? I fire them. Alas, as you are woefully unemployed, I'll have to do the next best thing and have you killed. In the next room is the finest auto-mechanical purveyor of death ever made. Try not to scratch the paint with your skull, it was fucking expensive. After all, why must I always do everything myself? You don't know how glad I am to see you. You lunatic. You broke into the board's own fortress and killed the chairman? Just to rescue one doddering old man? You are absolutely out of your mind. And I can't begin to thank you enough. Ah! All in a day's work for you, eh? You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated.
I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. Hold on, Doc. Are you telling me the Earth went dark three years ago, and the board's just been covering this up? They've been incredibly effective at concealing the truth. Right now, the only people in the colony who know are standing in this room. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, yes, certainly. I'll help however I can. I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I don't know why Earth's gone silent. I don't even know if Earth exists anymore. We have no connection back to Earth, and return is likely impossible. We're completely alone out here. You might have heard of the Earth Directorate's frigate. Half the colony's entire military was on that ship. They were returning to Earth when they vanished without a trace. That was two years ago. We haven't heard a word from them since. Whatever happened to Earth likely happened to them. I wasn't trying to hide the truth from you, but after all you've done, I owe you an explanation. Yes, I experimented on the Hope's colonists. Each of my experiments ended in catastrophic failure. Each of my subjects died in agony. You are my first and only success. I didn't tell you about the others because I didn't want to burden you. My failures are my own to bear, not yours. Thank you. Perhaps in time I'll learn to forgive myself. My apologies. I need to get a hold of myself. We've far more pressing issues to worry about right now. If you have any more questions, ask me. I'll answer as best I can. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn colony one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? You won't hear a word of disagreement from me. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon.
The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Between MSI's worker-centric policies and the iconoclast manpower, Sanjar and Zora were able to rally many of the Terra 2 townships to their cause. MSI's workforce swelled, and the iconoclasts enjoyed a significant surge in their ranks. The board was too distracted by infighting and internal politics to stop MSI from becoming a powerful corporation and a refuge for townships that might have fallen through the cracks. Bolstered by her status as savior of humanity, Lilia Hagen ushered Sublight Salvage to a new golden age. Her company grew bolder and more transparent over time, muddying the line between lawful and criminal for the entire colony. The Sublight family would thrive for years to come. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. Under the leadership of June Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave June the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people, sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Melstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. After all he'd seen and heard adventuring with you, the vicar Maximilian de Soto renounced his faith and joined the effort to rebuild the colony. Ironically, he finally found the joy that had eluded him over the course of his life and realized that perhaps he was always meant to be just a simple laborer after all. He quickly dismissed the idea. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease, telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. While the colony fell into chaos, she found an island of relative peace with Ada, and they formed an unusual bond. She decided to remain aboard the Unreliable permanently, as its chief and sole engineer. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. 
Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the Ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon. But for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and proved yourself the most capable leader left in the colony. You administered the colony in your own image. With the old power of the board destroyed, a new government of Halcyon rose with you at its center. With your steady hand, you guided Halcyon through the turbulent years that were to follow and helped ensure the survival of the colony until the end of your days. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.